everyone. Welcome to my new setup. I have been spending a lot of time getting this ready, but I hope it is the best for um, our lessons so that you can learn more easily. And yeah, I hope you enjoy today's lesson. If you haven't yet, and you would like to know when I go live, when I post new lessons, please don't forget to hit that red subscribe button and that way you'll be notified um, when I go live and post lessons. Okay, so we're going to be having a, an advanced vocabulary test. Okay, so um, I'm not going to tell you um, the meanings of the words first. I want you to be able to um, answer the questions with your own knowledge, okay? And then at the end of the test, we are going to look at the explanation. And um, if you don't know the words yet, you'll find out what the words mean. Okay, are you ready? So don't forget to post your answers in the comments. I'll be checking your answers as we go. So don't forget to post your answers. All right, so let's get into the test. I'm going to do it with you, so don't worry. We can do it together. Okay, so advanced vocabulary test. Are you ready? So question number one. Even though it was his first day on the job, he confidence. Hmm. Even though it was his first day on the job, he confidence. So we have four answers at the bottom. A divulged, B exuded, C averted, or D ostracized. Okay, so uh, these vocabulary words we are going to be looking at today. So divulged, exuded, averted, ostracized. Uh, have any of you heard any of these words before? Um, they're kind of um, a little bit, I would say, advanced for English learners. Um, they have some uh, rare letters in them, don't they? Uh, v in divulged, X, exude, V again, avert, and Z in ostracized. Okay, write down your answer, A, B, C, or D, and then we're going to look at the answer. Okay, so the answer to question number one is exuded exuded. Even though it was his first day on the job, he exuded confidence. How many of you got that one right? Let me know in the comments, okay? Let's try question number two. Remember, we're going to go over the answers at the end of the lesson, okay? So stick around for the end. Question number two. Every time the teacher asked the class a question, she would suddenly her gaze. Every time the teacher asked the class a question, she would her gaze. Okay, so here we have the same four words. Um, they are not in the past tense this time. So we have a divulge. B, exude, C, avert, D, ostracize, okay? Every time the teacher asked the class a question, she would suddenly her gaze. All right, the answer to number two is avert, avert. Every time the teacher asked the class a question, she would suddenly avert her gaze. Did you get this one right? Let me know, okay? Very good, so we've had two questions so far. Next is question number three. Question number three, okay. He was 
from the community after making several insensitive remarks. He was from the community after making several insensitive remarks. Okay, again, the four answers are at the bottom. This time they're in the past tense again. Divulged, exuded, averted, ostracized. A, B, C, or D. Write your answers in the comments. He was from the community after making several insensitive remarks. Okay, the answer to question number three is ostracized, ostracized. Did you get this one correct? He was ostracized from the community after making several insensitive remarks. Okay, let's go to number four. This is the last question, okay? She is a woman of her word and would never our secrets. She is a woman of her word and would never our secrets. Okay, last question. Divulge, exude, avert, ostracize. Okay, give you a few seconds. Are you ready to see the answer? The answer is divulge, divulge. She is a woman of her word and would never divulge our secrets. Okay, how many of you got four correct out of four? Uh, these are a little bit difficult, so don't worry if you got um, one or two wrong, that's no problem. Um, if you got all of them wrong, also not a problem because we're going to go over the answers. This is why you're here, right? To learn new words. Okay, answers explained. Let's go over the answers. In question number one, um, we used the word exuded. Even though it was his first day on the job, so he's going to um, his new job, it's his first day, usually people are kind of nervous on their first days, right? Their first day of work, they're kind of nervous. However, this person exuded confidence. So when we exude something, usually we're talking about an emotion, a feeling. So exude, having a lot of an emotion. So sometimes we can say exude love, exude pain, exude confidence. So we're showing it and we have a lot of that emotion. So if someone is exuding confidence, that means they have a lot of confidence and um, it's just kind of coming off of them. Um, in this case, I think it is, a, it is quite positive, right? They're not scared, they're not nervous, they're exuding confidence. Okay, let's check question number two. Question number two, we use the word avert, avert. Every time the teacher asked the class a question, she would suddenly avert her gaze. So first, maybe we need to know what gaze means. Gaze is um, where your eyes are looking, your eyesight, your eye line. Okay, oops, your eye line. So if somebody averts their gaze, it means um, they turn away they look somewhere else, um, they turn aside, okay? So we often say avert one's eyes or avert one's gaze, okay? So that just means to look away, look away, okay? Avert your gaze. So in question number two, maybe this um, person didn't know the answer, the teacher is asking a question, 
I don't want the teacher to call on me. I don't want to have to answer. So I'm going to pretend I'm looking somewhere else. Avert your gaze. Okay, excellent. So question number three. Question number three we used ostracized, ostracized. He was ostracized from the community after making several insensitive remarks. Hmm, okay. So um, ostracized means exclude from a society or a group or a community, okay? So um, we don't want you in our group anymore. We don't want you in our community anymore. Um, in this sentence, he was ostracized, so kind of um, kicked out, removed um, from the community after making several insensitive remarks. So a remark means um, something that you say, usually a statement, something you say. Um, insensitive remark means maybe you said something that most people find offensive. Something is insensitive means um, maybe other people don't like what you said. And the community could be um, a, an actual community in a neighborhood or uh, more recently it could be a community online or a community at your school, something like that. A group of people who have common interests or um, have a reason to gather. And ostracize means remove someone from that group. Okay? Then we have the last question, question number four, we used the word divulge, divulge, okay? She is a woman of her word. Hmm, do you know what that means? She is a woman of her word. So we, we often say woman of her word, man of his word. Um, this means that the person who we're talking about keeps their promises. They are very trustworthy. So in this sentence, she is a woman of her word means she is a woman who will um, uh, keep her promises. She is trustworthy. So she is a woman of her word and would never divulge our secrets. So what does divulge mean? It means to make something secret known. So to reveal, that is a synonym, uh, a word that has a similar meaning. Expose, disclose something. So we have the three words at the bottom, reveal, expose, disclose. These are very similar words to divulge. So divulge is usually something that um, somebody wants to keep it a secret, but if someone divulges that, it means they make the secret known to other people. Okay, very good. How many did you get right? Did you get four right? Three, two, one, zero. Let me know in the comments. And yes, um, Try, if you can, to make some example sentences. I would love to see your example sentences. Um, and yes, let me know what you think of my new setup here. I have a new camera. I have a new background. I bought a chair. <laughs> okay, this is, my, this is my office. So I might do an office tour or a desk tour on my vlog channel, um, Tokyo Bree Bree, that is always linked in the description. Um, let me know if you'd like to see that too. Okay, so um, that's going to be it for today's lesson. Uh, let me know if you have any suggestions for more lessons, and I will see you guys very, very soon, probably tomorrow. All right, bye everyone. Hi everyone, how are you guys today? 
Thank you so much for joining today's lesson. Um, if you can, and uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. We are growing our community of English learners, and I love to see you guys helping each other out. It's really awesome. So I'm going to leave uh, the link <clears throat> here for you if you haven't subscribed yet. Well, hello, everyone. <clears throat> I'm still, my voice is always <laughs> so raspy. Hello, hello, how are you? I'm doing well. Hello from Tibet. Hello from Hun Hun Hunza, Hunza, wow. Hi everyone. Argentina, nice, hello, hello December. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so we are going to be learning three idioms today, three idioms. So these idioms I think are useful for everyday life. So they are very important for you to know. So we're gonna be going over those. Hello, nice to see you. Hello from Peru. How is everybody? Hello Jalil, nice to see you today. Hello from El Salvador. Hello from Turkey. De Silvia, hello. Okay, so our idioms that we're gonna be learning today are cut corners, cut ties, and cut out for something or cut out to be something. We'll get into that in a second. Okay, so we have these three, these three. Do you know any of these three? to cut corners, to cut ties, and to cut out, to be cut out for something or to be cut out to be something, okay? Hello from El Salvador, hello, hello, welcome. Okay, good afternoon from Tokyo, hello. Okay, so when we talk about Cutting corners, cutting corners. Um, cutting corners means that you have to do something, but you take the cheapest, easiest, fastest way possible. So usually cutting corners is usually a bad thing, okay? So you're supposed to do something, you're supposed to put effort into it or money or time, you're supposed to do something very well, but if you cut corners, you don't use enough time or money or energy. So you make something <clears throat> or do something very quickly, cheaply, not so good, not as good as it could be, okay? Very good. <clears throat> hello from Ethiopia, hello. Hello from Sri Lanka. Okay, we also have cut ties, cut ties. So <clears throat> cut ties means you end communication or a relationship with someone. So she cut ties with her parents. So that means she does no, no longer talks to her parents. She doesn't meet her parents anymore. Uh oh, so if you can think of your relationships as like thread, oops, I bumped my mic. If you think of your relationships as thread and okay, I don't like this person anymore, I'm gonna cut the tie. So we are no longer connected, okay? Hello from Uganda, hello, hello, okay? Then we have cut out, cut out. So, um, oh, very good, very good. Mario, uh, cut ties is like, I think there's a spelling mistake, but burning the bridge. Yeah, we say burn bridges or cut ties. Very good. To cut ties or to burn bridges means to cut off communication or relationships. Very good. Okay, hello from Cambodia. Hello from Afghanistan. So uh, cut out, cut out. Cut out has a variety of meanings but we're going to be looking at uh, to be cut out for something or to be cut out to be something. 
Okay. And that means that you are a natural, a natural at something. Okay. Hello from Thailand. Hello. Hello. Okay. So let me look at the, the big board so you can see more clearly. Ooh, the lighting is changing. Okay. Here you are. Okay. So to cut corners means to do something in the easiest, cheapest, or fastest way. So usually cutting corners is a negative thing. Usually you want to do your best, right? Cut ties means to end communication or a relationship. Another way to say this is to burn bridges, yes. And then cut out, <clears throat> to be cut out for something to be cut out, to be something. So naturally able or suited to do or be something. So <clears throat> if somebody is a very, very good singer, we could say they are cut out to be a singer. They are cut out to be a singer, okay? Is that understandable for everyone? Should we get into the exercises? All right. Okay, so number one, number one, you are for this job. Hmm, what is the correct answer for number one? You are for this job. Oh, very good, Mario. Okay, awesome, yes, good job. Okay, I see some correct answers, very good. So I'm gonna write down the answer. You are cut out for this job. You are cut out for this job. Very good. Yes, everybody, good job, awesome. So that means you are a natural. You are naturally suited for this job. It matches you very well, okay? Number two. The bridge collapsed because the builders, something, something. The bridge collapsed because the builders, oh, very good, everyone, awesome. The bridge collapsed because the builders, oh no, they cut corners, uh-oh. So maybe they didn't spend enough time building the bridge or, they didn't use enough equipment. They didn't use enough cement. They did it too fast, too cheap, okay? Very good. Number three, she with her ex-boyfriend. Ooh, she with her ex-boyfriend. Oh, very good, Baudry. Excellent, excellent. Oh, very good leap. Mario, awesome. Okay. She cut, oops, cut ties with her ex-boyfriend. Very good. So if you'll notice, we have cut corners, cut ties. So these are always with an S. So we never say they cut a corner or she cut a tie. It's always cut corners, cut ties, okay? She cut ties with her ex-boyfriend. So that means she no longer speaks to him, she no longer meets him, she cut off communication, okay? Number four, even though we are short on time, short on time, that means we don't have enough time. Even though we are short on time, let's not something, something. Oh, Flavia, good job. Oh, Tetetwin, hello, welcome, welcome. Okay, even though we are short on time, so that means you don't have enough time, let's not, oh, I see a bunch of correct answers. Let's not cut corners okay so even though we don't have a lot of time 
let's do our best to make something the best that it can be, okay? Ah, this is a good question. Cut ties and breakup, are they the same? So usually breakup is for relationships, like boyfriend, girlfriend, um, but cut ties could be for any situation, like parents and children, friends, relationships, boyfriend, girlfriends, uh, husband, wife, any kind of relationship, you can cut ties, okay? Okay, can, you, can everyone see? So number five, he is to be an actor. He is to be an actor. Flavia, good job. Oh, very good. Mahmoud, good job. Okay, very nice. He is cut out to be. He is cut out to be an actor. Here we have, he's cut out for this job. So we have two patterns, to be cut out for something or to cut out, or to be cut out to be something, okay? Very good, excellent. So that means he is a natural. So being an actor is um, very natural for him. He's very good at it. Okay, number six, it's okay to with toxic people. Ooh, do you know what toxic people are? It's okay to with toxic people. Oh, Flavia, good job. Okay, so toxic people, if someone is toxic, that means they are not good uh, for you. So maybe they are not nice people, they are not understanding people, maybe toxic people, maybe like to start fights, they like to argue, they are not kind. Toxic people are bad people to, uh, to know or to be in relationship with. So it's okay to cut ties with toxic people, very good, very good. So we'll go over it one more time. Yes, okay, so to cut corners means to do something in the easiest, cheapest, or fastest way. This is usually a negative thing. So if people cut corners, that means they're kind of lazy and they didn't do a good job. To cut ties with someone means to end communication or a relationship. We can use cut ties um, for any kind of relationship. So uh, if, you're, if your friend is uh, being very mean, you could cut ties with them. You could cut ties with family members, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a husband, a wife, anybody, <laughs> okay? But you stop talking to them, you stop meeting them. Then to be cut out for something or to be cut out to be something, two patterns. That means naturally able or suited to do or be something, okay? So you are naturally good at something, okay? So I'm gonna read the examples one more time and then you guys can give me examples of your own, okay? So number one, you are cut out for this job. You are cut out for this job. That means you're very good at this job. Number two, the bridge collapsed because the builders cut corners. So they didn't do a good job and the bridge collapsed. Number three, she cut ties with her ex-boyfriend. She doesn't talk to her ex-boyfriend anymore. Even though we are short on time, let's not cut corners. So even though we don't have a lot of time, let's not do it in a bad way. Let's do our best, okay? Uh, number five, he is cut out to be an actor. So that means he is, he is a natural actor. He's very good at acting. Number six, it's okay to cut ties with toxic people. It's okay to cut ties with bad people. 
Okay, very good. So um, if you guys can give me some sentences or if you have questions, I can take them now. So cut corners, cut ties, cut out, cut out for something. So I saw um, one, uh, one question. Uh, does cut out use for negative? So when we say you are cut out for this job, that means you are very good. But if we say not before cut out, you are not cut out to be a singer. That means you are not good at singing. It's not natural for you. Okay, so if you put not in front of it, you can make it negative. All right, good job. Yes, very good. We need to cut ties with selfish people. Yes, very good. We need to cut ties with selfish people. Uh, let's see. Ah, uh, okay, okay. I think I saw. Cannot we use cutting in number one and number five? Let's see. Ah, so in this case, uh, you are cut out for something. This is an idiom, so we don't change it. So we wouldn't say you are cutting out for this job. So you are cut out for, he is cut out for. Um, same with number five, he is cut out to be an actor. We would never say he is cutting out to be an actor. He is cut out to be an actor. Okay, I hope that answers your question. Um, I can take a few more. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Democrats cut ties, cut ties with Republicans. Yes, <laughs> Democrats cut ties with Republicans. Okay, very good. Uh, let's see. Uh, no is possible it used in past tense. So I'm not sure which number you're talking about, but uh, for all of these, the past tense of cut is cut. So cut, cut, cut. Cut is the present tense, the past tense, and past participle. But remember, these are idioms, so we don't need to change them. She cut ties with someone. Uh, she, he is cut out to be something. Okay? Very good. Uh, let's see. Hello from Sudan. Teacher Brie is cut out to handle a big group of English language learners. Oh, thank you, Mario. <laughs> thank you very much. That is a compliment. Good job. She must cut ties with her ex-boyfriend. Very good. So she must stop communication, stop meeting this person. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, if you're late, no problem. You can always go back and review this lesson. But thank you for joining us. Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, she cut tied with him since he fought in robbery case yesterday. Oh, interesting. So uh, we would say she cut ties with an S. She cut ties with him since he, I don't know what you mean by fought in a robbery case, but maybe you could say since he was involved in a robbery case yesterday. So he maybe he got into some trouble. So she cut ties with him. Very good. Okay. Uh, let's see. <laughs> oh, this is a good one. I cut ties with cut ties with a person who is cynical because she is annoying. Okay, very good. I cut ties with a person who is cynical because she is annoying. Very good, very good. Okay, uh, let's see. I cut out for learning language, learning English language with your videos. Oh, very good. So we would say, I 
I am, I'm, I am cut out for learning English language with your videos. Very good. So that means you're very good at it. You're a natural. Okay. Stop cutting corners for this project. Let's call it a day. Oh, very good. Very good, Tet Tet Win. Awesome. Good job. So if you remember, we had a lesson a while back. A, a while back. Let's call it a day means let's finish. Let's stop for today. Let's call it a day. Excellent. Okay. Hello from Bangladesh. After knowing her bad behavior, he cut ties with her. Oh, very good. Very good example. Awesome. Yes, cut out means be good at something. So cut out has a, a lot of meanings, but uh, to be cut out for or to be cut out to be something is to be good at something. Very good. Uh, oh, yeah, he is cut out to learn English. Is it correct? Yes, he's cut out to learn English. Yeah, that means he's very good at learning English. Yes. Okay. Uh, oh, this is a good one. I know tons of English, but I think I'm not cut out for teaching it. Excellent sentence. Excellent. Very good. Maybe you are cut out for teaching it because your sentence is perfect. Okay. Uh, let's see. Number one are cutting out or cut out. So remember that these are idioms. So we would not change it to cutting out. It's going to stay the same. So you are cut out for this job. We would never say you are cutting out for this job. Okay. So it is... Uh, an idiom, so it's going to stay like this, okay? So very easy, right? You don't have to change them at all, okay? Ah, okay. Excuse me, teacher. I don't understand about cut corners. So when you cut corners, it is a negative thing. Um, it means you do something in the easiest, cheapest, or fastest way. So if we think about it, like uh, the example about building a bridge. So maybe the bridge builders uh, don't have enough time to do a good job. So they cut corners. Maybe they uh, don't have enough builders, enough people. They don't use enough cement. They don't uh, double check everything. So they do too quickly, too cheaply, uh, and it is not a good result. So cutting corners, especially when building something, is not a good thing. It means you, um, uh, instead of doing a good, proper job, you do a very poor job, okay? I hope that's helpful. Uh, let's see. I'm not cut out for doing sports. I see. Very good. You like to stay indoors more? Ah, this is an interesting one. You are cut out for teaching English, but don't cut corners for easy presentations. If you do this, I can cut ties with you. Oh, very good. So you are cut out for teaching English, but don't cut corners um, for easy for easy presentations, maybe. If you do this, I can or I will cut ties with you. Excellent. Okay. I'll take one or two more. Uh, oh, yes. Very good. Lousy job. Yes, 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 yes. So a uh, lousy job is a, another way you could say that somebody cut corners. They did a bad job. They did a lousy job. Very good. Okay. Very good. Uh, da, 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 da. 
Yes, cut corners means you don't do things properly. Very good. Okay, well, um, I'm going to uh, end the lesson here today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. If you can like this video, share it with somebody who's learning English, that helps me out a lot. Um, you can always go and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, I'm posting new lessons every single day, so I hope you enjoy those. All right, okay, I will see you guys tomorrow uh, for the next lesson. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Hi, everyone. I hope you're all having a great day. Um, I'm gonna put the link again. Oops, I put the wrong thing. We're gonna learn um, passive voice to describe processes today. And let me just share the link. Um, I just had another video go live on the YouTube channel. So if you haven't seen the newest video, please go check that out. Um, uh, right now we are almost at, I think uh, 7,000 students on the YouTube channel. So um, if you haven't yet, please go subscribe and also like the Facebook page. Um, I think we have over 30,000 uh, on the Facebook page, which is amazing. Oh my gosh, you guys are so awesome. Hello everyone, hello from the Philippines. Hello, I am feeling much better today. I was a little bit sick um, the last few days. I was. I still had a fever yesterday, but I'm feeling good today. I hope you guys are all feeling well. I hope everyone is ha uh, happy and healthy and having a great day. Yes, so if you haven't yet, go check out the um, newest video on the YouTube channel. Okay, hello from Cambodia, hi. Hello from Turkey, very nice. Australia, wow. You guys must have warm weather in Australia. Okay, so we're gonna jump into it. So I know a lot of students were asking me to do um, more lessons on the passive voice and they want more grammar lessons. So that's what we're gonna do today. Oh, wow, hello from Nepal, Myanmar, Sudan, Mexico. Hello, hello. Madagascar, awesome. Okay, very good. So um, we're going to jump into today's lesson. Uh, again, uh, please uh, like this video, share it with your friends um, who are also learning English, and let's grow our community. Okay, so we're going to learn today the passive voice uh, to describe processes. Okay, we're learning um, how to use the passive voice to describe processes. So I know we looked at the difference between passive voice and active voice um, a few months ago. So if you haven't seen that lesson, I suggest you go back and uh, watch it. But we're going to um, focus on passive voice for describing processes, okay? Awesome. All right. Hello from Thailand, Afghanistan. Hello from Mexico. Okay. So we're going to look at passive voice again today. Ooh, I know um, passive voice is very, very um, tricky, right? It's kind of hard to understand, especially um, if in your native language, you don't have a passive voice. So um, yes. Uh, yes, um, this this lesson is live right now, but um, after it is live, you will be able to watch it again, okay? Oh, good question, Aliyawan. What kind of processes? All right, I will show you. So basically, uh, any process, right? Any process. So uh, we have uh, grammar rules to follow for this also. Okay, so the main point is that uh, the action, when, when do we use the passive voice for processes? It is when the action is more important than the person performing it, okay? The action is going to be the main thing. It is the main topic. So usually we don't even need to include, um, if you notice uh, in my examples here, I don't think, 
I included um, any person who is doing the action, right? So we're gonna use the passive voice and we're going to describe these processes. So uh, it could be anything. So for example, um, the process of, uh, for example, learning a foreign language or the process of uh, submitting a form into uh, your company, okay? So whenever there is a process and the person is not that important, just the process is important, um, then we can use the passive voice, okay? Oh, hello Camp from Cambodia, Myanmar, Sudan, Pakistan, hello, hello, okay. So let's look here. We have two different ways that we can use the passive voice for um, describing processes. All right, we have is or are plus the past participle, okay? So first of all, we need to have that foundation, right? You need to know the past participles of, um, you know, the basic verbs that you're going to use, okay? And then over here, we have modal plus be plus past participle, okay? So what are modals? Um, if you don't know, they're like have or uh, must, may, could, all of those good ones, all right? I think we've studied modal verbs before, so you guys should be uh, all right with those, okay? Awesome. So. We're gonna look, I have two examples. So the blue one, um, we're using this, uh, this way. So number one, only the best photos, only the best photos are chosen for the exhibit, okay? So we don't have any person who's doing the choosing, right? So the person is not important. The act of choosing the photos is the most important, okay? So let's look at this one again. Only the best photos, and then here we're using is or are. So photos are, and then we're gonna use the past participle for choose. So it's going to be chosen, chosen, all right? Only the best photos are chosen for the exhibit. Okay, very, very good. Now, number two, reports must be sent to the team leader. Okay, so maybe the person who sends the report is not important, right? The process of sending the report is the most important, all right? So reports, we're gonna use the modal must plus be, be, and then the past participle of to send is going to be sent. Reports must be sent to the team leader. Okay, very good. So we have these three questions down here. Um, so I'm describing a process, for example, an award ceremony. So first something needs to happen, then another thing needs to happen, and then finally this happens, okay? So this is a good example of uh, a process that might be described or that you might have to describe. So um, you might need to use this grammar structure a lot if you are in business and you need to describe your company's uh, processes or something that uh, you need to describe to a client, okay? So this is the usual flow of things, all right? Hello from the Philippines, hello, hello. Okay, so let's try this together. And there are a few different answers, so uh, don't worry if I don't pick your answer, It's it could still be correct. So number three, let's try this one. First, nominees, and then we have the verb to choose, choose, okay? So we need to either use this way or this way. And um, either one could be correct, all right? 
Oh, very good. So I see Ali Awan has his answer. Uh, Dalaya Chan, very good. Okay, Shui, very good. Or Shui, I should say, maybe. Very good, very good. Okay, so very good. We can say for the first one, first nominees, and then we can do it, um, we can do it this way. Are chosen. Very good. First nominees are chosen. We could also say first nominees were chosen if we're talking in the past. Or first nominees, we could use a modal, must be chosen. That is also correct, okay? So it just depends on how you want to say things, all right? Okay, number four. Next, votes count. Hmm. We have next votes count. We have the verb to count. How would you change this to uh, the passive? Hmm. Oh, very good. Okay, I'll, I think the chat is a little bit behind. Oh, yes, very good, Sh Shadid Ula. Very nice. Moni, good job. Ali Awan, very good. Oh, awesome. I see a lot of good ones. So I see some people saying next, next votes are counted. Next votes were counted. Um, we could also say next votes uh, must be. We could use a modal must be counted. Let's just go with a modal for this one but all of those answers were correct. Very good. Okay, very nice. Okay, and the last one, the last one, let's do this one together. Finally, prizes, we have the verb award, to award, to the winners. Finally, prizes, to the winners. Very good. Yes, I see a lot of good answers so far. Awesome. Very good, Amar. Oh, hello from Libya. Okay, so we have first nominees are chosen. Next, votes must be counted. Finally, prizes mm -hmm, to the winners. Oh, very good. Yes, very good, very good. Okay, so we're gonna go back to, let's use uh, this, this style again. Finally, prizes are awarded to the winners. Okay, finally, prizes are awarded to the winners. Um, we could also change this. I saw some uh, answers in the chat that we could use a modal. For example, um, finally, prizes um, can be awarded to the winners. <laughs> I forgot the rest of my sentence. Finally, prizes can be awarded to the winners. Uh, finally, prizes must be awarded to the winners. Um, you can change it depending on how you want to say it but very good. So let's look at this again. Remember that we use the passive to describe these processes when the action, the action is more important than the person performing it. So the person who's awarding the prize or the person who is voting doesn't really matter. It's the action that is most important, okay? So we can have is or are plus past participle or modal plus B plus past participle. So I'll read these one more time for you. Please listen. And um, if you can try to repeat out loud, that is always beneficial. Okay, number one, only the best photos are chosen for the exhibit. Only the best photos are chosen for the exhibit. Number two, reports must be sent to the team leader. Reports must be sent to the team leader. Okay, number three, first, nominees are chosen. First, nominees are chosen. 
Next, votes must be counted. Next, votes must be counted. Finally, prizes are awarded to the winners. Finally, prizes are awarded to the winners. Okay, very, very good. I hope this was understandable for you. Um, if you have a question or you want to try and make a sentence, um, I have a few minutes so we can answer those. Okay, uh, I know the passive voice is quite difficult. Um, let's see. Uh, passive, passive voice is a little bit difficult. Yes, I think so. Um, I notice a lot of students have difficulty with the passive voice. Um, I think uh, uh, what's important is to uh, make sure you know when we use the passive voice. So this is very uh, like a good example of that. So when we describe processes, when we describe processes, this is a good time to use your passive voice. Okay. Okay, good job. Hi, teacher. I am observed your lesson to studying English. Excellent. Oh, okay. Thank you. So thank you. I think you observed today's lesson. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy you are here today. Thank you. Okay. Windows are broken. Yes, windows are broken. That is a, an example of the passive. Very good. Ooh, okay. Uh, oh, this is a good one. Warm clothes are bought in the winter. Yes. So the past participle of buy, buy, bought, bought. Very good. So are bought. Warm clothes are bought in the winter. Very good. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, hello from Bangladesh. Hello, hello. Okay. Oh, let me see. I think I saw, I think I saw a question. Let me just see. Okay. Uh, can you tell us the time of your lectures every day uh, to be able to attend at the same time? Uh, yes. So I don't have a um, schedule for the Facebook lessons yet because it, it depends on my schedule every day. But um, the YouTube lessons are out on the same time every day. So that is 12 p.m., 12 in the afternoon, Japan Standard Time. So I am in Japan. So... Uh, the YouTube lessons are out at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, Japan Standard Time. So if you can find out when that is, it was about two hours ago from right now. Okay. And then uh, usually the Facebook Live lessons are um, after, after the YouTube lesson. Okay. So just so you know, um, here you go. Uh, there was a new face, uh, sorry, there was a new YouTube lesson uh, today. So if you haven't watched that yet, go please watch it. All right, um, let me see. Uh, the dog is bitten. The dog is bitten. Yes. So uh, if you say the dog is bitten, that means um, some somebody else or another dog bit this dog. So the dog is bitten. Okay, that is passive. Very good. But maybe you could say, um, he was bitten by the dog is maybe the sentence that you want to make. He was bitten by the dog. I was bitten by the dog. Okay. Very good. Oh, hello from Saddam. Okay, um, let me see if I can find another question. Oh, okay, this is an example. Hello, I have an example, very good, awesome. Uh, first, you must do your homework and later you can play video games. Uh, yes, 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 so um, you must do your homework 
and later you can play video games. So here, um, you must do uh, is a little bit different than what we're talking about here, passive voice to describe processes. So if I change your sentence to be the passive voice for processes, I would say first homework must be done. First homework must be done, okay? So remember that when we describe a process, the person who is doing the action, so you or me or he or she, they are not important, not important. The action, the process is the most important, okay? So homework must be done by six o'clock, right? So uh, what else is a good example? Uh, for example, if you're, if you're filming a movie, if you're filming a movie, um, uh, movie scenes have to be shot during the day. Movie scenes have to be shot during the day. So we don't talk about the person who is filming the movie or the actors or anybody like that. Um, the main thing is that the movies are shot during the day. Okay, I know it's a little bit confusing, especially if you don't have the passive voice in your own language, okay? Very good. Oh, hello from Nepal. Hello, hello. Could you speak Japanese too, teacher? Oh, yes. Nihongo mo wakarimasu. Nihongo demo daijoubu desu. Does anyone speak Japanese here? <laughs> okay. So I see a lot of uh, similar uh, questions. I think I answered. Uh, let's see, <laughs> sayonara. <laughs> okay, all right. So um, remember that we're talking about the passive voice for processes, okay? So uh, you can also, there, there are other ways that we can use the passive voice. Um, if you haven't seen those uh, lessons, please go back and check them. Maybe rewatch it for a, a refresh. Okay, very, very good. All right, so remember, this lesson is just about describing processes. It is not the entire uh, passive voice, okay? All right, so thank you everybody for watching today. Uh, if I didn't get your question, I'll try and go back through the comments really quick and answer them. Um, but yeah, uh, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, like this video, share it with your friends, and uh, please like the Facebook page, yes, all right. So I will see you very, very soon. Um, I will see you tomorrow. We will have a new lesson on the YouTube channel tomorrow at 12 o'clock Japan Standard Time. All right, thank you so much. See you guys next time, bye. Hi everyone, welcome back to my English learning channel. Today we're gonna talk about three expressions to help you with your conversation. And don't forget, at the very end of this video, there will be a short quiz. So please answer that question in the comments down below. Let's jump into it. Let's imagine you're having a conversation with your friend. You are in the middle of talking when the waiter comes and asks your order. You finish talking to the waiter and you want to continue the conversation you are having with your friend. The conversation stopped when the waiter arrived and you want to continue what you were saying. What is a good expression to continue what you were saying? We have a very good and useful expression for this situation. You can say, as I was saying, as I was saying, this expression takes the conversation back to the point you were before you were interrupted. For example, we were talking about what I did on the weekend. I told you I went to my friend's house. The conversation stopped. I want to continue talking about my weekend. I can say, as I was saying, 
I went to my friend's house this weekend. We had a barbecue and it was really fun. So please remember this expression if you get interrupted. As I was saying, as I was saying. The second expression I'm going to teach you today is speaking of, speaking of. Let's imagine I told you about my weekend. I went to a friend's house and had a barbecue. You want to start a new topic, but it relates to the topic we already talked about. I went to my friend's house and had a barbecue. Maybe you are planning a barbecue in a couple of weeks. You can say, speaking of barbecues, would you like to come to mine? I'm planning one in a few weeks. So speaking of is very, very useful when you want to change the topic, but it is a little similar or connected somehow to the previous conversation. So speaking of. The third expression I want to teach you today is if you ask me, if you ask me. So we use this expression when we want to give our opinion, but maybe nobody asked my opinion, but I want to give it. So I can say, if you ask me, I think it's a bad idea. Here's an example. Tomorrow is my mother's birthday. My brother thinks we should take our mother out for dinner. But I think I have a better idea. So I can say, if you ask me, I think we should buy her flowers. If you ask me, I think we should buy her flowers. My brother did not ask my opinion, but I want to give my opinion. If you ask me. Okay, I'm going to give you a little quiz. So I'm going to give an example. So please think which expression you would use. I'm talking to my friend about hiking. She is going hiking this weekend. I want to talk about my experience hiking a month ago. What expression should I use? Should I use, as I was saying, speaking of, or if you ask me? I'll give you a few seconds. The correct expression to use here is speaking of. Speaking of hiking, I went hiking a month ago. It was really fun. Question number two. I'm talking to my student about studying English. My student says English is the hardest language to learn. I don't think so. I think Japanese is a hard language to learn. Which expression should I use? As I was saying, speaking of, or if you ask me. The correct expression is, if you ask me. My student says, English is the hardest language to learn. I don't think so. So I say, if you ask me, I think Japanese is harder. English is easy. Okay, the last one. I am talking to my friend about my new English YouTube channel. My phone rings and I answer it. Hello? Okay, I'll call you back. Bye. Sorry about that. After the phone call, I want to continue my conversation. Which expression should I use? If you said, as I was saying, 
You are correct. Sorry, I'll call you back. I'm so sorry. As I was saying, I started this YouTube channel and you should subscribe to it. <laughs> Shameless self-promotion, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so that was today's lesson. I hope it was very, very useful for you guys. There will be a question at the end of this video, so write your answers in the comment below, and I will see you at the next lesson. Bye! Oh, hi everyone. Hello. Hello. Welcome. We are just about to start the lesson. Um, if you haven't yet, please go and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, I'm putting it in the chat. Okay. So uh, please go subscribe to the YouTube channel. I post lessons every single day. So if you want to see the newest lessons, go subscribe. Okay. And um, if you could like this uh, video, share it with your friends. I would really appreciate it. Hello. Hello, Yagana. How are you? Hello, Shireen. Jahangir. Oh, Gahada. Hello, hello. Very nice. Hello, everyone. I hope you're having a great day. Um, so, what we're going to do today is we're going to learn, um, hopefully, some new vocabulary. I have three words for you, and they all have um, silent letters. They all have silent letters. Oh, I like this comment. Uh, oops. Hello. Hi. This one. I'm on cloud nine with this time. So I'm on cloud nine, uh, hopefully, for this lesson. I'm on, I'm on cloud nine is a, a very good way to express that you're very happy. So awesome. Okay, hello from Indonesia, Uzbekistan. Hello from Colombia. Wow, I have a friend from Colombia actually. Hello from uh, Bangladesh refugee camp, wow. I hope you're all doing well. Hello from India. Hello from Mexico. Uh, Herberto, hello, hello. Okay, so today we're going to learn three uh, new vocabulary words. Hello from Pakistan. Okay, so these are going to be the three words. Uh, I think they're a little bit advanced, um, so let's go over them. All right, so these are our three new words for today. They have one thing in common, and that is that they all have a silent letter. They all have a silent letter. So if you try and pronounce this word out loud, try to pronounce this word aloud, how would you pronounce this word? Give it a try. Okay, so this word is pronounced succumb. There is no B sound. Succumb, succumb, succumb. The B is silent. The B is silent. Okay, we'll get into the meanings in just a little bit, but first we're going to go over the pronunciation. Okay, hello, Rusan. Okay. So the next one, what do you think? Hmm, how do you pronounce this word? Well, I'll give you a hint. The same letter is silent in this word too. Oh, very good, Sija, very nice. Silent B, Marcel, very good. The B is also silent, so we would pronounce this word limb. Limb, limb, okay? 
Then the last one, I think you've got it now. We also have a silent B. So we pronounce this word subtle, 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 subtle. Okay. So this one is a little bit tricky because um, we have this T sound, right? We have a, the letter T. So you could say subtle, subtle. Um, but in American English, I'm from America, in American English, this T becomes a flap T. So a flap T is when um, it comes, the T comes between a vowel sound and usually another vowel sound, or we have the, the dark L sound, subtle, subtle, subtle. Okay, so subtle, subtle. All right, so we have succumb, limb, subtle, subtle, okay? Very good. So let's get into what these words mean, all right? So we all have silent B, so hopefully the pronunciation is okay. So let's see. These words are uh, a little bit, well, I think one is pretty tricky. The other ones should be okay. So, uh, let's see, succumb, succumb. Remember the silent B, we don't pronounce it, succumb. Succumb is a verb, to succumb. It means to fail to resist a negative force. So, what is a negative force? Well, it could be anything that is bad. So, for example, temptation, temptation. Uh, temptation could be a negative force. So she su su succumbed to the temptation to cheat on her husband. <gasps> so she gave in to the bad thing. Another negative force could be, for example, injuries or illness. If somebody says, he succumbed to his injuries, he succumbed to his injuries, it means that he couldn't resist his injuries and he died. Okay. Oh, Tut Tut Win, hello, welcome. All right. So, succumb to fail to resist a negative force. This is a verb. Okay. The next one is limb, limb, silent B. A limb is very easy. It is a noun and it's an arm or leg of a person. So, a limb could be your arm, could be your leg. Your two limbs could be your arms, four limbs. Every Usually, uh, we're born with four limbs, usually. Okay, that's an easy one. Subtle. This one's a little bit difficult to explain. Subtle, subtle, silent B. So delicate or precise as to be difficult to describe. Okay, so, so delicate, so precise, it's so difficult to describe. Something is subtle, okay? The next meaning is making use of clever and indirect methods to achieve something. So this is an adjective, okay? So uh, to make use of clever and indirect methods to achieve something. So, um, if, for example, we went to a party, we went to a party, I wanted to go home early, but my friend didn't know that I wanted to go home. So I could subtly give some hints or signals that I wanted to go home. Not obvious. Maybe subtle is the opposite of obvious obvious okay not obvious so leaving some subtle uh, uh hints or um what do you call it uh well hints for example for um leaving the party so i might elbow I might elbow my friend hey i'm getting pretty tired or i might make eye contact with my friend maybe those are subtle ways to get his attention, get her, his or her attention, okay? So, oh my gosh, I only have a few minutes left, so we're gonna have to 
quickly go through these. Okay, so we have some questions. Number one, we've been driving for a while. Let's stop somewhere to stretch our something. Oh, very good, Tima. Excellent. Okay. We've been driving for a while. Let's stop somewhere to stretch our... Very good, Mario. Excellent. Okay, so the correct word would be limb. But because we're talking about multiple people's maybe stretching their legs, we can add an S. Okay, countable. So we've been driving for a while. Let's stop somewhere to stretch our limbs. So you can stretch your legs, you can stretch your arms. Oh, okay. Very good. Number two, she left her parents hints about what she wanted for her birthday. She left her parents hmm, hints about what she wanted for her birthday. So instead of maybe saying, mom, dad, I want this dollhouse. Instead of saying it directly, maybe she would draw a picture of it or she would leave a magazine open to the page of the thing that she likes. Okay, oh, very good, everybody. The correct answer is subtle, subtle. Subtle hints. She left subtle hints. Very good. Okay, and number three, the last one. You must not to peer pressure. You must not to peer pressure. Oh, very good. Okay, excellent for number two. You must not succumb to peer pressure. You must not succumb to peer pressure. So uh, peer pressure is when people um, your same age, we call them your peers, um, ask you to do something that maybe you don't want to do. So for example, smoking or drinking alcohol. Um, sometimes when you're a teenager or you're younger, hey, everybody's doing it, so you should do it too. That is peer pressure. So your peer, your peers, are people your same age or same level. So the from the people around you putting pressure on you, peer pressure. Okay, so you must not succumb, you must not give in to peer pressure. Okay, very good, excellent. So um, I, oh my gosh, I only have one minute left. So um, I don't know if I can take so many questions, but maybe if you have an example, I can quickly put it up on the screen. Ah, I don't even know if I have time. So uh, if you guys can, please put your examples in the comments and I will try and check them a little bit later because I have an, another lesson coming up right after this. Okay, so, oh, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Hi, I'm new here and I learned your videos are amazing. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so glad you uh, joined us today. Awesome. By the way, um, if you're new, I have a YouTube channel. Um, I post lessons every single day there. Um, on Facebook, I go live Monday through Friday, okay? So thank you guys so much for watching today. I'll check your examples in the comments, okay? Thank you so much. See you guys later, later, tomorrow. <laughs> okay, and I'll post another lesson on YouTube later today. Okay, thank you so much. Bye everyone. Hello everyone. I hope you're ready for today's lesson. So in today's lesson, we're going to learn about using the passive voice with get, with get, okay? So, um, so far we have been learning that the passive voice is um, the to be verb plus the past participle, right? So we're going to learn 
how we can use get, okay? So we often use get when we're using the passive in English, at least in American English, okay? Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining. Hello from Myanmar. Hello, keep you. Hi, how are you guys? What time is it for you right now? For me, it's about um, 2, 2.40 in the afternoon. Hello, hello, welcome. Oh, I'm so tired today. Good morning. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Hello, Sandy. Hello, Lamia. Hello, Suhan. Hello, hello. Hello, Corey. You're too up. Oh, does it mean you're um, you're tired? You mean it's like very late for you? Oh, no. Okay, so what we're learning today, oh, hello from India. Okay, we're gonna learn how to use get with the passive voice, okay? So all this week, remember, we're doing um, the passive voice, right? So, oh, 12.05 in Myanmar right now. Is that in AM or PM? Hello from Bangladesh, thank you. Oh no, what's wrong, Corey? <laughs> you said that last time, but what's wrong? Oops, oh, I dropped my marker, okay. So, let's see. Oh, I gotta turn my marker the other way so it doesn't dry up or run out of ink. Okay, so we're gonna use um, get in the passive voice, like I've been saying. Oh, I, mean, I should move over here, okay? Very good. So we have get plus adjective. Let's look at this one first, okay? Good afternoon. Oh, 8.44 a.m. from Madagascar. Wow, you're up early. Okay, so get plus adjective. So um, I don't think we use these with every adjective. So you kind of have to learn when to use get, right? So the best way to do that is by listening to native speakers. And if a native speaker uses get, then I would copy that, okay? So from um, listening to others, try and study and then try to use it, okay? That is the best way to learn. Hello, hello. Hello from India, hi. Okay, so here are some examples, right? So get rich, get rich, he got rich, okay? Get hot, get cold, get hungry, okay? So get plus adjectives. These are really, really common ones, especially get hungry. I think it's really unusual to say um, become hungry, right? So we say get hungry, get rich, get hot, get cold, okay? So um, I would use these, these are very common. All right, now let's go to the other combination that we can do. Oh, hello from Lebanon, wow. Bangladesh, Sudan, hello, hello. Okay, so let's see. Um, get plus the past participle. So um, we can use this, this is very similar. So instead of using the to be, we get rid of that and just put get plus the past participle, okay? So do not use with stative verbs, okay? So we don't say get know or get understand, right? So, um, and we use them, we use get plus the past participle when something unexpected happens or something negative. So unexpected could be good or bad. Or when something is negative, that's when we use get plus past participle. So again, listen to um, what native speakers say and kind of copy that, follow them, okay? 
So um, because my whiteboard is very, very small and I have some information up here, we only have three. Oh, hello from Laos, hello from Sri Lanka. Oh, it's okay, uh, Mahmood, we just kind of started five minutes ago. So if you're just coming into the live stream now, we're learning uh, get in the passive, how to use get in the passive. So there's kind of two combinations we can use get plus adjectives, these are some really common ones, and get plus past participle, okay? But don't say get, no, get, understand, right? Okay, so, um, and we use it when it's unexpected or negative. So we have just three examples here. So I have uh, this sentence here that we're going to change, okay? Yes, um, I'm going to give you an example of get plus past participle. Okay, so, um, oh, so if a company has a computer system and someone, maybe a, let's say a hacker, a hacker hacked their computer system. If we wanna make that passive, we could say uh, the computer system was hacked, or you can use get, the computer system got hacked, got hacked, okay? So we're gonna change get to whatever um, the verb tense it's supposed to be, plus the past participle. The computer system got hacked. It was unexpected and negative, right? So we can use get plus past participle, okay? Very good. That was a good question, Daniel. Okay, so let's try it. Let's give it a try. We have just three questions here, okay? So number one, my coworker deleted my file. My coworker deleted my file. This is an active sentence. This, the, the, the subject is doing the action, right? But if we want to change it to passive, if we want to focus on this file, or um, if you don't know who deleted it, or you don't want to call out your coworker, you don't want to blame your coworker, um, we can make it a passive sentence. But we're going to use um, get plus the past participle for this one, okay? Oh, very good. Is your name pronounced Agam? Very good. So what we're going to do is take the object, which is my file, and we're going to make that the subject of our passive sentence. We've been doing that all week, so I think it's pretty easy. My file, and then uh, deleted, right? My coworker deleted my file. This is in the past tense. So we're going to take get, and we're going to say my file got and the past participle of delete is deleted, right? It's a regular verb, deleted. Okay, and then you have a very natural passive sentence with get. My file got deleted. Maybe I don't know um, who deleted the file or I don't want to say who deleted the file or maybe my file is the most important part, part of the subject, uh, of the sentence, sorry. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, you're so kind, Mahmood. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah, if you can share um, the videos with your friends who are learning English, um, that'll help them. And it also helps me uh, to know that you like these kind of videos. Thank you very much. Okay, so number two. Wow, this is very unexpected and very negative, right? Oh, no, a car hit him. Oh, Mukan, yes, very good. You could say up here, my file got deleted by my coworker, by a coworker. Um, you can put it uh, at the end or you can just omit that information because my file is the most important part, right? Very good. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, so number two, oh my gosh, this is very sudden, unexpected, and very, very negative, right? A car hit him. Oh no, so maybe somebody was crossing the street 
and a car didn't stop and a car hit him. So if you're talking with your friends and, oh, hey, what happened to him? Let's say, what happened to John? Oh my gosh, you'll never believe it. And if you wanna use um, him as the subject, we're going to change it to he, right? He. Oh no, my marker died again. This red marker dies out so quickly. All right, I'm gonna use blue. Okay, does anyone know how to change number two? Okay, a car hit him. So him, we're gonna make it our subject. He, and then you could say, he was hit by a car. He was hit by a car. Um, but a more natural way, I think, is by using get. Very good, Emmanuel, very nice. Okay, awesome. Yes, 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 I see a lot of correct answers. Daniel and Mukan, very good. He got hit by a car, very good. And maybe in this sentence, I would include this part. He got hit by a car because if you just say he got hit, Mm, it's kind of hard to tell by what, right? He got hit by a with a baseball. He got hit by a train. Oh no. So he got hit by a car, right? But he, we're talking about him, so he's the most important point of this sentence, right? He got hit by a car. Wow, that's shocking. That's negative, right? Okay, uh, let me give you, I don't have it written here, but let me give you a positive example with get plus past participle. So um, for example, if somebody is trying to um, get a promotion, get a promotion. So she got the promotion. She got promoted, right? We're gonna use the past participle. She got promoted by her company or by her boss. She got promoted. So it might have been unexpected, but it was a positive thing, right? It was a very good thing. Oh, we can say buy a car or just buy a car. So you need to have the a uh here. He got hit by a car, a car. Okay, car is a noun and it is countable, so we need to put that a uh, here. Okay, very good. Let's try number three. Oh, hello from the Congo, wow. Democratic Republic of Congo, amazing. I hope you're doing well. Okay, so let's try the last one. Oh no, I deleted part of it with my finger. Not deleted, I erased. Okay, so uh, this is supposed to say the. The cool temperature is making the food cold. So this is an active sentence, but it's very, very unnatural. We usually don't talk about it like that, right? The cool temperature is making the food cold. Um, so if you if you cook, and you have a hot dish of food and you put it on the table and you're trying to gather the family to come and eat the food, you might say, you wouldn't say this, the cool temperature is making the food cold, hurry up and eat it. How can we change this? So remember, we have cold here, right? So we're gonna use this pattern, get plus adjective. So we have get cold, right? But if we look here, making, making, okay? How can we change this? So our object is the food, right? So we're gonna make it our subject. The food, this is kind of tricky because we haven't done one like this yet. The food, okay? I would say the food is getting cold, okay? The food 
is getting cold. Oh, very good, Agam. Yes, 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 yes. You could put like the, the cold temperature, the cool temperature here. But I think in real life, in a real life situation, we would use this shorter way. Oh, very good, very good. The food is getting cold. The food is getting cold. Hurry up and eat it, right? The food is getting cold. Maybe it's obvious that the temperature is making it cold, right? So we don't need to include it if it's that obvious. Very good. The food is getting cold. That is this pattern. Get plus adjective, okay? You could say the food got cold. The food is getting cold, okay? Very good. So here, my file got deleted. Ah, that's a negative thing, right? He got hit by a car, unexpected and negative. She got promoted, that is a positive thing. And here, maybe this uh, get plus adjective, the food is getting cold, the food got cold, okay? Very good. So I hope this was understandable for you guys. Very good. If you need to see this one more time, here you are. Okay, and remember, we cannot say get, no, get, understand, okay? Remember this part. We cannot use this. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I am about to, um, I'm going to edit a video for the YouTube channel today. So hopefully that will be up today, I think. So if you're not already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and that way you can see when the new lessons are uploaded right away. And those are um, exclusive videos for YouTube. They're, they're not available on Facebook. Okay, thank you very, very much. So um, tomorrow is going to be uh, the review lesson for the passive voice. So study up. Um, you can review all the other lessons. They're um, on the Facebook page and I'll, I'll probably upload them to YouTube later also. Okay, very good. So, uh, yes, so um, uh, Danushka, can't we use be verbs instead of get? Yes, so you can say, for example, um, my file got deleted. You could say my file was deleted. That is okay, but a lot of speakers, um, native speakers, tend to use get when something was unexpected or negative, okay? So um, you can remember that. And um, I would just mimic what you hear native speakers say because you can't use get all the time, okay? Oh, uh, the YouTube channel name is Breeze Practical English. It is the same as the Facebook page. Thank you. So tomorrow, um, I think tomorrow's lesson is going to be, I'll tell you the time. Yes, tomorrow, tomorrow will be um, maybe about the same time as today or an hour earlier. I'll let you know, I'll post, um, I'll post an update for you guys. Okay, so either around this time or a little bit earlier, okay, for tomorrow. Very good. Okay, so um, I'll leave this lesson up so you can review it. Please review the other lessons and get ready for tomorrow's review lesson. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much, okay? So if you have any questions, um, you can write them in the comments and I'll try and look at them. And um, if I think I should make a video about it, I'll, I'll try to do that, okay? If you have any suggestions for next week's lessons, you can also let me know too. Okay, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in uh, tomorrow's review lesson. And um, I will upload a new lesson on YouTube. Okay, see you soon, bye. Hello everyone, welcome back to another English learning video. Um, I'm in a very plain background today because 
Um, I just have a very short time to film today, so um, I couldn't set up my usual spot. So today, sorry, it's a plain white wall. <laughs> okay, so in today's lesson, I want to go over five get phrasal verbs. So five phrasal verbs using get. Okay, but first, if you haven't already and you would like to, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So it will let you know when new lessons are uploaded. So if you don't know what a phrasal verb is, um, it's usually a combination of two words that if you hear them, you probably know the meaning of the individual words, but when they're combined together, sometimes the meaning is not clear. And these are very important for learning English. A lot, a lot, a lot of Americans use phrasal verbs all the time. So the first phrasal verb with get we're gonna look at is get lost, get lost. So you probably know to get lost means that you can't find your way. For example, if you're going somewhere new, and you take the wrong road, you get lost. I got lost on the way to your house. But what I'm gonna teach you today is a another way to use get lost. Get lost can also mean go away. Go away, get lost. So it's not the nicest word, but it's an important one for you to know. So we use get lost to mean go away when we are angry or impatient. So an example could be, why don't you leave me alone? Get lost. Okay, so it is used when we are angry or when we have no more patience. Get lost, okay? Go away. So please use this sparingly. Don't use get lost all the time because it is a little bit of a mean thing to say. Okay, number two is get over it. Get over it. So to get over something means to feel happy or feel better again after something bad has happened. So we could say they got into an argument, but they'll get over it. So they will feel better later. We also say get over an illness. I was sick for a week, but I finally got over it. So I finally feel better again. Similarly, this can also mean to start to forget someone or something and start feeling better. So if there's a couple, let's say John and Sue. John breaks up with Sue. He ends their relationship. That means Sue might have to try and get over John. She'll have to forget about him and move on, start to feel better without him. She'll have to forget him. She'll have to get over him. We can also use this for people who think highly of themselves. For example, he thought he could do no wrong. He should get over himself. He, maybe he loves himself too much, so he should start to forget himself. So if someone is very full of themselves or they think highly of themselves, we could say, you should get over yourself. So stop thinking so highly of yourself. Why do you put yourself above others? Forget about yourself. You should get over yourself. Number three is get out, get out. Get out can be similar to get lost. So if we say it when we are angry, get out. That means leave. It's not a very nice way to tell someone to leave, but if you're angry, it's very effective. We can also get out of things. For example, get out of a car. And it can also mean leaving your house. So I've been stuck at home so long, I needed to get out. I needed to go and meet my friends. 
get out. Recently, I don't get out much. This means I don't leave my house much. We can also use get out for the spreading of information. A rumor got out that he's moving soon. A rumor got out that a celebrity is at our school. Okay, get out information, spreading information. Okay, number four. Number four is get by. Get by. Get by means to manage or to survive or succeed barely. We often use get by with the word manage. I managed to get by with my low salary for years. So somehow I was able to survive with my low salary for years. We can also use this for languages. I can get by with conversational English. So if your English is not that great, but somehow you are okay with conversational English, you can say, I can get by with conversational English. Or my English is not that good, but I can get by. Okay, and the last one, number five, is get rid of get rid of. Get rid of means to do away with or throw away something. I bought a new computer, so I got rid of my old one. I threw it away. Another example, what is a good way to get rid of stress? What is a good way to get rid of stress? Okay, this is a very good one to know. It's very simple. Get rid of just means throw away or do away with. Get rid of something. Okay, how was it? Was it easy? I'll give you a short quiz right now and then I will give you homework at the end of this lesson. So please remember to stick around until the very end. Okay, are you ready for your quiz? Let's go. My refrigerator is small but I managed to, my refrigerator is small, but I managed to, okay, the correct answer is I managed to get by. My refrigerator is small, but I managed to get by. I can't wait to that old couch. I can't wait to that old couch. The correct answer is get rid of. I can't wait to get rid of that old couch. She's only just the death of her husband. She's only just the death of her husband. The correct answer is get over. She's only just getting over the death of her husband. Having a new baby, I don't as much as I used to. Having a new baby, I don't as much as I used to. The correct answer is get out. Having a new baby, I don't get out as much as I used to. Last question. I'm so fed up with you. Why don't you? I'm so fed up with you. Why don't you? The correct answer is get lost. I'm so fed up with you. Why don't you get lost? If you don't remember fed up, I have a lesson on getting angry. Um, I'll leave a card for you, so go check that out. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching this lesson. I hope you learned something new, and please don't forget to do your homework at the end of this video. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye!
Hello everyone. This is going to be a very, very quick lesson because I only have a few minutes today. I was really, really busy. I'm so sorry about that. It's going to be a quick lesson. And this one was requested by um, Wonderlust on uh, YouTube. So thank you so much for requesting this lesson. I hope you're watching today. Um, we're going to learn how to use end up in English, end up. So what does end up mean? Well, end up means that you reach a place or a condition or a situation that was unexpected or unplanned. Good morning. Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. So we're going to learn how to use end up today. And it's going to be a very, very quick lesson. So if you know how to use end up, please feel free to make some example sentences. Hello, Karen. Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. Okay, so going to be a quick lesson, end up. So we have uh, the definition here. Okay, end up. End up means to reach a place, condition, or situation that was not planned or unexpected. So you end up somewhere and it is unexpected or unplanned, okay? So I have four really simple examples and then we can look at your examples too, okay? So I think this is a, this is a very easy lesson, so don't worry. Okay, number one, the woman ended up getting fired. Oh no, the woman ended up getting fired. So in the end, after some events, unexpectedly and unplanned, she got fired. The woman ended up getting fired. So she didn't plan to get fired and she probably didn't expect to get fired. But after some events, uh-oh, she ended up getting fired. Okay, very good. So number two, she doesn't want to end up like her mother. She doesn't want to end up like her mother. So maybe in the future, she doesn't want to unexpectedly become like her mother. So she doesn't want to end up like her mother. She doesn't want to become like her mother. So maybe her mother is uh, maybe uh, not good at talking in front of people, for example. She doesn't want to end up like her mother. So some series of events would make her become like her mother. So she's trying to avoid that. She doesn't want to end up like her mother. Hello, 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 welcome everyone who's joining. Okay, number three, he ended up getting married to his high school sweetheart. He ended up getting married to his high school sweetheart. So if you don't know what a high school sweetheart is, um, a high school sweetheart is someone who you are dating um, in high school. So usually uh, people don't marry their high school sweethearts. Usually your high school sweetheart is your first love and it's when you're very young, um, but you don't tend to see people marrying their high school sweethearts. So it's kind of unexpected. Wow, he ended up marrying his high school sweetheart. Wow, okay, very good. And number four, the last one, it ended up being a great decision. So it was unplanned, but it was a great decision. It ended up being a great decision. So end up, remember, is to reach a, oops, to reach a place, condition, or situation that was not planned or expected, okay? So the woman ended up getting fired. Ooh, so that is a situation that was unexpected, unplanned. She doesn't want to end up like her mother. End up like her mother, that would be a situation or maybe condition. 
he ended up getting married. Wow, to his high school sweetheart. That is a unexpected but good maybe situation. It ended up being a great decision. It ended up being a great decision. Okay. Ah, that's a good question. So Ali, uh, let's see if I can put it on the screen. Which one is correct? Get married to or get married with? So we say get married to someone. Get married to someone. We wouldn't say get married with someone. Okay, we date someone. We marry someone. We get married to someone. Okay, very good. So if you guys can make some example sentences with end up, I can put them up. I only have a few more minutes left. So it's a very, very short lesson today. Okay. Ah, very good. So it ended up fluent at English. So usually we wouldn't say it, maybe a person. So I or he, she. So you could say, I ended up being fluent in English. Fluent in English. Very good. Okay. What is the exact meaning of end up? So end up, usually there are some, uh, for, uh, sorry, there are some situations or events that happen first and those result in an unexpected or unplanned result. So she ended up getting fired. That means she did something or something happened and the unexpected result was getting fired. He dated his high school sweetheart and the maybe for other people, the unexpected result was they got married. Wow, okay. Oh, this is a good one. I end up improving my English. Very good. So I end up maybe in the future, or you could say I ended up improving my English. Very good. Ah, I ended up my overthinking. So for this one, you could say I ended up overthinking. I ended up overthinking. So I was thinking too much. Okay. So, oh my gosh, I, I almost have to go I'll do one more. Oh, this is a good one. It ended up getting warmer today. So kind of unexpectedly, right? It ended up getting warmer today. We thought it would be cold all day, but it ended up getting warmer. Okay, so that's all the time I have today. I have another lesson. I was really busy today, so I'm so sorry. Um, I will post a lesson later today on YouTube, so I hope you watch it. And thank you guys so much for joining. I will see you in a few hours over on YouTube. Thank you, bye. Hi students, I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Today, I thought it might be a good idea to go over some words that a lot of students have difficulty pronouncing, okay? So before we get into the lesson, if you haven't already and you'd like to know when new lessons are uploaded, please go and hit the subscribe button and that way you'll know every time a new lesson is uploaded. All right, let's get into the lesson. So I have five words that I think are used quite regularly on a daily basis, especially if you're speaking English and especially if you're learning English, you're probably using a lot of these words all the time and they might be difficult to pronounce. So we're going to go through them and I'm going to help you and try to give you some tricks on how to easily pronounce them. Okay. Number one. Hmm. Can you pronounce this word? This is very useful if you are studying English and if you are watching this video, you've probably said this word before. Okay. This is pronunciation, pronunciation. And this is how we say our words, right? Pronunciation. So pronounce is the verb, pronunciation is the noun. 
So I live in Japan and a lot of Japanese people have difficulty saying words that end in T-I-O-N, right? So a lot of students say shon, shon. They make that O sound. But for pronunciation and any word almost that ends in T-I-O-N, we actually pronounce it as shin, shin. So you can see my mouth is not opening like an O sound. Pronunciation, pronunciation. Okay, that goes for station, visitation, cooperation. All of these words end in shin, shin. You don't have to make it harder than it already is. Okay, and then let's look at the first part of this word the P-R-O part of the word. It looks like you could pronounce it pro, pronunciation, pronunciation. But actually, if you've been studying American English for a while, you'll know that our vowels don't always sound like what they are. So even though we have an O, P-R-O, it's actually kind of pronounced like a U, like an uh, uh sound. Pr, pr, and it's very short. Pronunciation, pronunciation, pr, pr, okay? You don't need to open your mouth very wide with an O. Pronunciation. No, 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 no. Pronunciation, okay? Try it. Let's say it together. Pronunciation. 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 Got it? Okay, number two is... Da, 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 da. Can you say this word? Hmm, this is a tricky one. So a lot of students have difficulty with the TH sound. Th, th, month, month. However, this one also has an S at the end. That's really difficult to pronounce, right? We can pronounce this word as months, months, if you want to say the TH sound clearly plus the S. And that is really difficult for some English learners. But I will give you a tip, okay? I'm a native speaker, I'm from America, and I do not say months. Never. I never say that. What I do say is months months six months months so it looks like this it looks like there's just a ts at the end i don't pronounce the h months months make sure you don't pronounce the o in a month like an o okay so as you know from the last word we don't pronounce all of the vowels as they should be right so here the o sounds like a uh, a uh. And if we add an M before that, m, m, and then just finish it off with an NTS, months, months, months. Pretty simple, right? I think it's easier to say than months, months. You have to stick your tongue out for the TH and then you have to bring it back in really quick for the S. That's too difficult. Just say months, months. Number three, can you pronounce this word? Hmm, this is a really important word in daily life and especially if you travel. And unfortunately, it's kind of difficult to pronounce. So let's go over this one. We pronounce this world, world. Okay, let's go step by step because I know this one isn't the easiest. So. If you know how to make a W sound, w, w, by putting your lips closer together and kind of puckering them, w, w. again, we have an O here, but we don't say world, and we don't say world. We kind of skip over the W and go straight to R. W, w. So when I make this W with my lips, W, w. 
At the same time, my mouth is ready for the R sound. So when I'm making this face, my tongue is already in position for the R. Okay, so it happens almost immediately, right? W plus R. Then we go from an R to an L, which I know is difficult for a lot of you. I can feel my tongue sliding from the back to the front. So from R to L, whirl, 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 whirl. And then just adding a D at the end, world, 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 world. So I'm going to give you a tip for the R and L because I know that's where a lot of people struggle. When I say world as a native speaker, um, I don't think about it and it just comes naturally, world, world. But if you're learning English and the R and L transition is a little bit difficult and you're having trouble moving your tongue back and forth, um, what you could do is break down the word and say were first and then to get the L sound were old. Maybe you can add an almost like an A sound, like saying the word all, all, were old, world, world, and try to get it faster and faster. And that way it's going to sound more and more native and you'll get better at transitioning from R to L. Okay, world, 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 world. So this is just for practice and it's not the correct way to pronounce it, but um, it's really hard to notice if you say it quickly that you're adding in an, an uh sound in there. So if you say world, 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 it's okay. We can understand what you're saying. I think this will be less frustrating for you and you can work on making your mouth get smaller and smaller. So instead of saying world, 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 world. So that is a good practice technique. All right, the fourth word, are you ready? Here it is. Do you know how to pronounce this word? because it's a little bit tricky. There are some extra letters in there that we don't really pronounce. And we switch around some of the letters and we take out some letters. It's very strange. So this word is pronounced comfortable, comfortable, comfortable. Now, a lot of my students like to say comfortable, comfortable. And that sounds a little bit clunky and not really correct. So even though it looks like calm for table, we don't say that O-R sound, comfortable. We don't say that. We say comfortable, comfortable. So it sounds like it goes from F to T, okay? Comfortable, comfortable, comfortable. So we are switching around some letter sounds. So taking out the O-R, saying comfter, we don't say able, we say herbal. Okay, comfortable, 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 comfortable. Are you comfortable speaking English? Are you comfortable right now? Comfortable. This is a good one to master the pronunciation of because it could be useful in your daily life or even if you're doing business in English, you might want to ask the other person, are you comfortable? And if you can say it smoothly, that's great. Comfortable, comfortable. All right, number five and the last word that we have today is, ta -da! This word, I'm sure you use this almost every day. How do we pronounce this word? Well, we pronounce it refrigerator, refrigerator, refrigerator. I know a lot of my students hate this word and they often shorten it to fridge. And fridge is the short form of it. I say fridge. So it's okay to say fridge, 
But sometimes you might want to say refrigerator, refrigerator. This is a difficult one. Let's break it down first and look at why we call it a refrigerator. So you might know that the prefix re, re, that means to do something again, to do again, redo, rewrite, rewatch. All of these things mean again. And if we look at the second part of the word, fridge, fridge, this word relates to the word frigid and frigid means very cold temperature. So cold again. And then at the end of the word, we have ater, ater. This is used for a lot of things. So it could be a person or a machine that does something like a creator, a commentator, the terminator, a refrigerator. Okay. So if we break down the word, it just means a machine that re cool something. Okay. I know when my students hear this word for the first time, um, it sounds like a really crazy, difficult word to pronounce, but I don't think it is. Listen to how I pronounce it. Refrigerator, refrigerator, refrigerator. Now the ater, the T at the end of this word, it becomes a flap T in American English. That means it kind of sounds like a soft D sound refrigerator, refrigerator, refrigerator. It's the same as water, water. We rarely say water in America and we don't often say refrigerator in America. We say refrigerator, refrigerator, refrigerator. Thanks for watching this really quick pronunciation video. I hope you guys can master these five words and be a little bit more confident when you speak. I know it takes practice, so don't give up. Watch this video a few times and repeat after me, okay? You'll get better and improve before you know it. Thank you for studying with me and I'll see you in our next lesson. Bye. Hello everyone. Hi out there. I think we are live right now. Hello, hello. Let me just check my phone, make sure we are actually live. Uh, how are you guys today? Uh, before we get into today's lesson, if you haven't yet and you would like to know when I go live, when I post new lessons and things like that, um, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can turn on the notifications and you should get um, some notification that I go live. Um, you can also like me on Facebook and uh, follow me there, turn on notifications there because I go live on Facebook also. And uh, yeah, follow me on TikTok. Everything should be linked in the description. So I hope you uh, can uh, follow all me, follow me in all the different places. Okay, so um, we're going to start the lesson. All right. Um, by the way, don't forget to tell me what country you're watching from. Um, I love to see all the different countries uh, that we're gathering. Okay, so we're going to start. Are you ready? Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the chat also. <laughs> so we are going to be looking at the difference between guarantee and warranty. Okay, guarantee versus warranty. Um, this is a vocabulary lesson. Um, and this, uh, these two words, um, some students have asked me the difference between them before. So I thought I would go in depth today and uh, try and answer it as best as I can. Okay, so guarantee versus warranty. They're very similar, aren't they? Um, they? They kind of sound the same from the middle. Guarantee, warranty. Um, and their meanings are very similar as well. Okay, so we're going to get into the lesson. Are you ready? 
Okay, so I have uh, a little bit of the history of these words, okay? So why are these words so similar? Okay, why are they so similar? Well, guarantee and warranty are very similar words. Why is that? Well, the root of both words comes from the old French word, guarantee. I might be pronouncing that wrong. It's old French. I don't speak old French. But you can see this is kind of the, the root of the word, right? So this word, which comes from the verb guarantee, meaning to protect, to warrant, or to guarantee, okay? Most words in French come directly from Latin. However, this word has roots in the Germanic language that was spoken by the Franks called Old Low Franconian. In French, this language is called Francique. Again, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing this one. Uh, basically, the language of the Franks. The Old Low Franconian, Old Dutch word, was warjan, meaning to guarantee as true. Okay, so you can see here, this is the, the first similar looking word, warjan, looking like warranty. Hello, K. Smith. Hello, Ta Tahidul Mandul. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so, and this word here, warjan, meaning to guarantee as true, okay? Germanic words from this period that began with a W sound, so here the word begins with the W, evolved, it changed, and they started being written with a GW, a GW. Hello, Shakit, welcome. So, and subsequently lost the W in some areas. So, when this word was evolving, in some areas it lost uh, the W. So, it just had a G. Um, however, in the northernmost dialects of Old French, this change never happened. So, it was only the W was left behind. Therefore, by the time these words came to the English language some 200 to 300 years later, there were two separate words, warranty and guarantee. Okay, so that's very difficult, but basically these words used to be the same word. However, as they grew and in different areas, a G was used and then taken away. Um, so, uh, they were the same words, but eventually they became two different words. So that is why they are so similar. Hello, everybody in the chat. Welcome. Okay, so let's look at the meaning of each and look at some examples. So warranty as a noun. Well, warranty is a noun, okay? So the meaning is a written promise from a company to repair or replace a product that develops a fault, some problem, within a particular period of time. So what I want you to know is that warranty is a noun, and it is usually um, a piece of paper, something that is written down, um, and it is a legal document. That is a warranty. So if you have a warranty, for, for example, for a refrigerator, if something happens to your refrigerator within a specified amount of time, uh, then you can take it to the place that you bought it and they will either repair it or replace it. Okay, very easy, right? So example, this camera comes with a one year warranty. So if the camera breaks or if something happens where the camera is not working anymore, um, within the first year, so this is a one-year warranty, if something happens to it within a year of purchasing the camera, 
you can have it replaced or repaired. Okay, is everybody following me so far? Very good. Feel free to ask questions in the chat. I will, I will keep an eye out for your questions. Okay, guarantee as a noun. Very, very similar. Let's take a look. A promise that something will be done or will happen, especially by a company. This can be oral, so somebody can make the promise orally, or they can write it down, it can be written. Okay, to repair slash change a product that develops a fault within a particular period of time. So the definition looks very similar to warranty, right? Um, the company is promising to repair or replace something that is broken. Uh, the difference is, is that a warranty is most likely definitely written down. A guarantee could be written down or it could be an oral promise. Like you're just saying, I promise something. Okay. So in this example, this TV comes with a two year guarantee. So it is the same. If something happens to your TV within the first two years, you can bring it back to the place you bought it and they should repair it or replace it. Okay. Ah, I find you so fascinating. Oh, thank you very much. I just wish that I wanted to learn like this 25 plus years ago. Yes, but it's never too late to learn something new or to just be refreshed on a forgotten grammar. Very good. I know. I wish we could all go back in time um, with our passion that we have as adults. <laughs> I wish I could go back in time and relearn some things also. Okay, so this is guarantee as a noun, but we have to be careful because guarantee can also be a verb, okay? Guarantee can also be a verb. Very good. So uh, let's look here. The company promises to repair or change a product if a fault develops within a particular period of time. So we can say a guarantee as a noun, or we can guarantee something. A company can guarantee something. Okay. Ah, I think I have made a mistake. This TV, forget this guarantee, sorry. This TV is guaranteed for two years. I made a mistake, I'm so sorry. This TV, cross off this word, is guaranteed for two years. Very good. So it is promised to be repaired if something happens to it within two years. Very similar, but we can use it as a verb. Okay. Then here, another meaning to guarantee, to promise that something will happen or exist. So this could be, um, in a business setting, or it could be in your everyday life, okay? So this just means that you are promising that something will happen or something will exist, okay? Very good, hello, Ahmed, welcome. Okay, no problem, Smith, K. Smith, you're, you're, you can go take your dog out. <laughs> okay, so. This hotel guarantees the best rates. This hotel guarantees the best rates. So what that means is that the hotel is promising they will give you the best price, okay? This hotel guarantees the best rates. It is promising the best price, okay? So it should be cheaper than other hotels. Okay, very good. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so uh, let's go to more examples, all right? So if you want to exchange the defective product, you will need your receipt and warranty. Very good. 
if you want to exchange the defective product, so defective means something is not working right, something is broken or not working. If you want to exchange for a new one, the defective product, you will need your receipt, so proof that you bought it at our store, and warranty. So warranty is something that is written down, okay? It's a promise that they will repair it or replace it. Very good. Number two, I guarantee that you'll have a great time. This means I promise, I promise you will have a great time, okay? I promise. Very good, okay? Number three, so number two, you can see this is a more casual way that we can use guarantee. It is an oral promise that something will happen, okay? Number three, a home warranty is a contract covering repairs and replacements on systems and appliances in your home, usually for a period of one year, okay? So, a home warranty, a home warranty. So this is, a, again, is a legal piece of paper that says um, for one year, one year, if a system in your house or an appliance in your house stops working, for example, if your water heater stops working, uh, the warranty, the home warranty, um, that is a promise that someone will repair it, okay? And uh, it will cover the cost of repairs. Very good. So this is a more, you can see the difference between two and three. Number two is very casual. Number three is very official, okay? Then number four, this store has a price match guarantee. Have you heard of that before? Those are quite popular in the US, a uh, price match guarantee. That means that the store promises that if you can find a better price at a different store, they will match that price. So um, I've used this before. So if the store has a price match guarantee and I want to buy, for example, I want to buy a new camera, I looked on another store's website and I found that they have it for $10 cheaper than this store. But this store has a price, price match guarantee. So I'm at this store and I show them this store's price, it's cheaper. So this store will say, okay, we have a price match guarantee so we promise you can buy it for the lowest price, okay? Does that make sense? Is everybody understanding that so far? Very good. Oh, Paulino, thank you. Thank you very much. Please send me your YouTube link. I think you're on my YouTube page right now, right? If you're watching this. So, yes, um, there should be a, uh, if you're not subscribed, there should be something in the corner um, that you can click and then you'll be able to subscribe. Okay, so I hope this lesson was interesting, um, and I hope that now you know the difference between guarantee and warranty. We, uh, For those of you just coming in, um, if you want to watch this lesson again, uh, at the beginning we introduced why they're so similar. They have the same um, roots, and uh, they come from, uh, the French word. So it's quite interesting. All right. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, please subscribe so you know that uh, the next time I'll go live. Um, and uh, yeah, you can also follow me on Facebook, Facebook and TikTok. Okay. Oh, okay. Please may you explain for me the meaning of harm with examples. So the word harm means to hurt someone, so cause someone pain. Um, so for example, um, uh, if you don't want to hurt someone, you can say, um, I don't want to harm you, okay? So harm means like hurt, very good. 
I have been waiting for this class. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. <laughs> okay, so um, I think I'm going to call it a night. It is quite late here. So um, thank you again for watching. Uh, please subscribe. And if you have any um, lesson requests, you can always leave them in the comments. I will check them. Okay, thank you guys so much. And I will see you very, very soon. Bye everyone. Hello everyone. Welcome back to another English lesson. If you guys haven't yet and you would like to know when I go live, when I post new lessons, and when I have quizzes and tests for you, you can hit that red subscribe button and you can also turn on your notifications. That way you'll know when I go live. All right. So we're going to get into today's lesson. Today's lesson was requested again by Ali Awan. Thank you so much for requesting such interesting lessons. If any of you have any lesson requests, feel free to put them in the comments. Okay, so today we're going to go and look at the difference between no and not. Okay, no and not. So first of all, I think everyone here knows that no and not are negatives. So when we want to make a sentence negative, we're going to use either no or not. But there are some grammar points that we need to keep in mind when using no and not, okay? So generally, we can't use no and not in the same sentence. If we use them in the same sentence, it is called a double negative, okay? So that is not um, correct or uh, traditionally correct English, all right? So um, uh, we can use no and not sometimes in the same sentence. I'll give you a quick example. Um, are you hungry? No, comma, I'm not. No, comma, I'm not. But we need to separate the no and the not with a comma, okay? So keeping those things in mind, let's take a look at the grammar differences between no and not. All right, we're gonna hop into the lesson. I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, so I hope you can see it. All right, we have no and not, right? Okay, so the first one we're gonna look at is no, okay? So we use no before a noun without an article, without an article. What is an article? Well, an article is a, an, or the, okay? A, an, or the. So when we use no before a noun, um, there is no article, okay? So when we say this, when we use no here, it means that there is none of something, none of something, okay? The example written here is, there is no food in the refrigerator. There is no food in the refrigerator, okay? So that means there is nothing there, no food, okay? I think you understand it so far, pretty easy, right? Let me know if you have any questions as we go. All right, the next one, still focusing on no. So we use no before nouns that are modified by adjectives, again, without an article. So what does this mean? Um, if we have a noun, and the noun is preceded by an adjective. Okay, for example, heavy table. Heavy is an adjective, table is the noun. We're not going to use an article, but we can use no, okay? So let's take a look at my example here. There are no good players on their team. So no, and then we have the adjective, good, and we're talking about players. Here is our noun, okay? There are no good players on their team. All right, very good. Let's go to the next one. 
Here we use no to answer yes or no questions. Okay, yes or no questions. So uh, example, have you eaten dinner yet? No. You could simply say no, or you could say no, I haven't. No, I have not. But you can tell we're gonna have no comma, I have not. No, I haven't, okay? If no and not are in the same sentence, which they can be sometimes, um, you need to separate them with a comma, okay? Very good. Um, we can also use no before gerunds. So gerunds are verbs that end in ing and uh, they act as nouns. They act as nouns. So we can put no in front of a gerund because it acts like a noun. And again, there is no article, no a, uh, no an, no the, okay? So here's the example. There is no smoking allowed in this building. There is no smoking allowed in this building, okay? Um, sometimes um, it'll just be no plus the gerund. For example, no running. A lot of the times my teachers when I was in elementary school, they would always tell the children, no running, no running. So it's kind of like a command, right? No running. Okay, there is no smoking allowed in this building. Very good, next one, not. So now we are on to not. We use not to make verbs negative, okay? So easy, right? I do not want to watch TV. I do not want to watch TV. Okay, to want is a verb. I do not want to watch TV. Um, we can also uh, conjugate this to I don't want to watch TV. Um, usually native speakers will make it don't. Whenever there's a not, have not, do not, um, a lot of the times, most of the time, we're going to make it, um, the, sorry, the contraction, contraction. Um, so I don't want, I haven't watched something. Okay, next one. Not is used with adjectives without nouns. Okay, not can also be used with adverbs. So um, adjectives without nouns nouns, okay? Example, he is not angry. So here angry, there is no noun following it. So we can use not here, okay? Um, not can also be used with adverbs. So not surprisingly, surprisingly is an adverb. Uh, many people disagreed with him. Not surprisingly, many people disagreed with him. Okay, are you following so far? I know there is a lot of information. We're going to have a quiz at the end, so please stick around for that, okay? Use not with nouns with articles. So remember, we used no for nouns that are not using articles. Here with not, we need to use articles if we have a noun. So there is not a car outside. So this sentence sounds a little strange to me because I would prefer to say there isn't a car outside. There is, isn't a car outside. Usually when the words is and not are not contracted, um, you're kind of emphasizing the not part. There is not a car outside. There isn't a car outside, okay? But notice that we have a uh here, a. Uh. If we didn't have a, uh, we could say there is no car outside. There is no car outside. What are you talking about? There isn't a car outside. Here we need a, uh. okay? Next one on not. Not is used with any, enough, much, and many. So these are keywords that you have to keep in mind. So if you want to use not, you can use them with any, enough, much, and many, okay? 
So I have one example here. There is not much left. There is not much left. We could also say there is not any left. There is not enough left. There aren't many left. Okay, so any, enough, much, many. Use not. Okay, um, not is also used before nouns or pronouns with short replies. So when we're having a natural conversation, usually we don't talk in long, complete sentences. Sometimes we just give short replies, okay? Uh, for example, who is upset? Who is upset? You reply, not me, not him, not her, not Sally, not Lucy, okay? So we can use not before pronouns and nouns in short replies. All right, so here is our first question. I hope you are following along. I hope it was pretty easy to understand. Um, let's see, we're going to either use no or not. So which one do you think is correct here? There is any chocolate left. There is any chocolate left. Please write your answer in the comments. Let's see if you can get it right. I hope you can. Ready, set, answer. There is not any chocolate left. There is not any chocolate left. So usually if you say it like this, is not, um, a lot of the times you're emphasizing the not. There is not any chocolate left. This is the more conversational way we would say it. There isn't any chocolate left. Uh, a native speaker would probably say it this way. There isn't any chocolate left. Okay, it's just easier to say. It sounds, uh, it's just more natural. Okay, let's try question number two. I have money. So remember we're using either no or not. No or not. You have two choices. Okay. I have money. Okay. Write your answer in the chat, in the comments, and let's see if you could get it right. The answer is, I have no money. I have no money. So money is a noun. Money is a noun. Notice that we don't have an article a, uh, an, the, okay? So here we would say, I have no money. So if you wanted to use not in this sentence, how would you change the sentence? Hmm, okay. I would change it to, I don't have any money. I do not have any money, okay? So if you wanted to use not, I do not have any money, okay? Or I do not have money, either is okay. Question number three. Hmm, I do think she is very happy. I do think she is very happy. We're going to either use no or not. Write your answers in the comments and let's see the answer. Ready? I do not think she is very happy. I do not think she is very happy. Okay? We can also say, I don't think she is very happy. I don't think she's very happy. Remember, the contraction is very common in conversation. Okay? Question number four. There is enough room. Hmm. There is enough room. No or not. Hmm. Okay. Write your answers down in the comments. Very, very good. 
All right, the answer here is not. There is not enough room. So remember with words like enough, any, much, many, we're going to use not. Okay, there is not enough room. We could also say there isn't enough room. Okay, very good. Question number five. Ooh, who broke this window? Who broke this window? You're asking everybody, was it you? Was it you? Was it you? Who broke this window? Okay, write your answers in the comments. Mm, me. Mm, me. No or not? Hmm. The answer is not me. Not me. So remember before nouns, pronouns, uh, especially in short replies, we often use not. Not me. Not him. Not you. Not Kevin. Okay, very good. And number six, this is our last question, so I hope you get it right. There were hmm, satisfied customers. There were satisfied customers. No or not. Hmm. Let's see if you can get this last question right. Okay. So the answer to number six is no. There were no satisfied customers. There were no satisfied customers. Okay, we use no here because we have a noun, which is customers, and this is an adjective, satisfied. So satisfied customers. And there is no article, we have no a, uh, no an, no the. No satisfied customers. Okay? Very good, everybody. All right. So, uh, let me just bring back my window. Okay. Very good. How well did you do? Did you get six out of six? Did you get 100% or were there some tricky ones in there? If there was one that you got wrong, please let me know which one it was. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Okay, I hope this was a helpful and useful lesson for you. Again, if you have any lesson suggestions, feel free to put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to give you those lessons as soon as I can. All right, thank you everyone for watching and I will see you guys in my next lesson. Bye everyone! Hello students, welcome to today's lesson. I hope you are ready to get started today. Um, before we jump into today's lesson, if you haven't yet and you want to know when I go live, um, when I post new lessons, um, you can subscribe to me on YouTube. You can also like and follow me on Facebook and remember to turn on the notifications on both of those so you'll know um, oops, when I go live. And um, you can also follow me on TikTok now. Yes, hello everyone, welcome. I see some people coming in, hello, hello. Okay, so today is going to be a um, reading comprehension lesson. Hello, Nyana, hello, hello. Okay, so um, we're going to do a reading comprehension lesson. I would say that this lesson is um, kind of upper intermediate level, okay? So um, if you feel that it's a little difficult, don't worry, we're going to go over some key vocabulary. We will read the article two times, okay? So we'll read it first and we'll see how much you understand. Then we're going to go through each vocabulary word um, and then we'll read it one more time and see if you have a better understanding. Okay, hello everyone. Yes, don't forget to tell me um, which country you're watching from. I see we have some people from Malaysia, Algeria, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Cambodia, 
Nigeria. Hello, everyone. Okay, so um, we are going to, let's see, let me share my screen. Okay, everyone can see the lesson, I hope so. Okay, so we're doing a reading comprehension lesson. So what that means is we're going to see how much you can understand from reading an article. Okay, so the article is called Famed Singaporean Eatery, Hawker Chan Loses Its Michelin Star. Okay, so before we get into the lesson, I'll explain. Um, we're going to be talking about um, a Singaporean uh, restaurant. So a restaurant in Singapore. Has anyone ever been to Singapore? Are there any students from Singapore in the chat? Um, and we're going to be talking about uh, the Michelin, uh, Michelin stars. If you guys know what a Michelin star restaurant is. So um, Michelin is a company and um, it chooses um, very good restaurants and it will give them like one star, two stars, five stars, and then people will, will buy the book and they will find like the best restaurants in the area, okay? So um, this famed, so famous Singaporean eatery, um, maybe restaurant, Hawker Chan, this is the name of the restaurant, loses its Michelin star. So it had a good rating from this very famous company, Michelin, but it lost it, okay? So we're gonna see what that means, okay? So I'm going to read it through one time, and then we'll look at the highlighted vocabulary, okay? A Singaporean hawker stall known for offering the world's least expensive Michelin-starred meal has just lost its designation. Hawker Chan, founded by Chan Hong Meng, became famous for its simple yet delicious $2.50 soy sauce chicken noodle dish. When it was included in Michelin's first ever guide to Singapore in 2016, earning one star. But when the Food Bible unveiled its latest Singapore edition on September 1st, Hawker Chan previously known as Liao Fan Hong Kong Soya Sauce Chicken Rice and Noodles, was nowhere to be found. After his Michelin triumph, Meng's career took off. His brand has grown from one humble stall in a Chinatown hawker center to a franchise restaurant with locations in Thailand, the Philippines, and more. He changed the name of the restaurant to Hawker Chan and began branching out to other dishes. While some have applauded the Malaysia-born chef for capitalizing on his hard work, others felt the quality of the food slipped following the opening of his new establishments. Okay, so that is the first reading. We just read it straight through. Um, maybe you can self-assess so you can see for yourself how much of this article could you understand. Could you understand 100%? That's great. Then you, are, uh, you have no problem with this article. If you understood 75%, 50%, 40%, Stick around, we're going to go over it um, and we'll read it one more time, okay? So let me know in the chat about how much could you understand, okay? So first I'm going to explain um, what a hawker center is. So um, for those of us who are not in Singapore, um, a hawker center. So hawker centers are open air complexes that house many stalls selling a wide variety of affordably priced food, okay? Uh, they are a unique aspect of Singapore culture and lifestyle. 
So I think this is um, a unique word for uh, Singapore. Um, they have these in other countries too, but I think the term hawker center maybe uh, is specifically for uh, this kind of uh, uh, situation, okay? Oh, 70%, pretty good. Ah, oh, 50%, no problem. Stick around, we'll go over everything. So this is what we're talking about. So this place is called a hawker center. And then these, these are stalls. So each stall um, sells uh, inexpensive food. So cheap food, but maybe it's delicious, but for a low price. And then people can sit and eat together. Okay, so that is what we're talking about. Let's go over some vocabulary. Okay, we saw the word designation, designation. So the meaning is nomination or selection. And in the text, it said, the Michelin starred meal has just lost its designation. So remember that Michelin, uh, Michelin is a company um, that gives stars to very good restaurants. So I think there's a sushi restaurant in Tokyo that is a Michelin star restaurant. So um, it's very uh, highly rated and many people want to go there. It's very difficult to go. You need a reservation uh, months in advance. Um, so for a restaurant, a Michelin star is a very good thing. So Michelin said in uh, 2016, this restaurant is very good. We will give you one star, okay? But the Michelin starred meal, so this one specific meal, uh, it's like a noodle, noodle meal, has just lost its designation. It lost its nomination. It was unselected for the Michelin star. So Michelin decided, mm, we're gonna take our star back, okay? Very good. Oh, have you ever been to Singapore? No, I haven't. I really want to go. Um, one of my uh, students moved to Singapore and I'm so jealous. <laughs> I want to visit, okay? So designation, designation means nomination. Okay, let's go on to the next word. Um, next word we have is food Bible. So um, in many religions, um, there are like sacred books, okay? Oh, Tadewin, hello, welcome. Okay, so in many religions, there are these uh, sacred books of authority for people's lives or for the religion. I think in the Christian Catholic religion, it's called the Bible. Um, in, other, um, in, in other religions, you have a different book. Um, but here in English, um, when we say the something Bible, that means um, it's a book that is an authority on something, in this case, food. So the food Bible could be the Michelin star book. Um, a travel Bible could be a travel guide. So when we say something Bible, it's not a religious text, but it means it's an authority on that subject, okay? So in the text, it says, the food Bible unveiled its latest edition. So um, the Food Bible is the Michelin star book and unveil, unveil. Unveil is to like reveal. So it came out with its latest edition of the book, okay? Unveil. So uh, I will give you an example. Can you see me? So I have a tissue here. So if I unveiled my microphone, so something's hiding it and then whoosh, unveiled. So like release something, okay? Uh, back to this lesson, okay? Next one, take off. So this is um, a phrasal verb that has several meanings. In this text, it means to suddenly become successful. 
Okay, so in the text, it said, Meng's career took off. So um, as you might know, when, we, when we're in an airplane and the airplane lifts up like this, we say the airplane takes off. So the same with a career, maybe your career is staying the same, staying the same, and then something good happens and your career becomes very successful. So his restaurant was cheap, but very good, very delicious. So Michelin gave Meng a star. Your restaurant is very good. So it recommended many customers to come to his uh, restaurant, okay? So from there, his career took off, okay? Very good. Hello from Ethiopia. Yes, unveiled means uncovered, very good, okay? Excellent. Uh, the next one is humble. Humble means not proud or arrogant. So. Um, if somebody is humble, um, they think their accomplishments are not a big deal. What I did or what I'm doing is not important. I'm humble. Um, the opposite would be, um, you know, bragging. I'm the best. I'm number one. Humble is the opposite. Not proud, not arrogant. I'm not important. Okay. So in the text, it says, his brand has grown from one humble stall. So we saw at the beginning, the stall is like the food stall. So he just had one simple food stall, okay? It was nothing special. It was not important. Um, it was just a small food stall. But from there, it has grown. It has taken off. Okay, so he started very humble and he became very successful. Okay. Yes, humble means not to brag. Um, humble could be similar to honest. Um, but in this case, maybe like honest hard work. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, not proud or arrogant. Very good. Okay, the next one, franchise. Now, this is a business English term. So some of you who have studied business English might know this word. Um, a franchise uh, means a right to sell a company's products in a particular area using the company's name. So if you read that, it might sound a little bit confusing, but it's it's very simple, right? Uh, you have a, for example, you have a restaurant and uh, you are the owner of the restaurant, but suddenly your restaurant becomes very popular. Everyone wants to go to your restaurant. So, wow, I should open up more restaurants but I'm only one person. So I will sell the right, um, sell the right uh, to sell my products to other areas. So um, a good example of a franchise would be McDonald's. McDonald's is a very big franchise, right? So um, we have McDonald's in Japan, we have it in the US, there's McDonald's in lots of countries, right? So that is a franchise. Yes, yes, exactly. KFC has many franchises. Yes, KFC is a franchise. Uh, like McDonald's, Wendy's, etc. Very good. Yes, yes. So uh, in the text here, it says it, meaning his restaurant, has grown to a franchise restaurant with locations in Thailand, the Philippines, and more. So originally, it was one place uh, in Singapore, but it got very popular. So 
okay, we can open up one in Thailand. We'll open up another in the Philippines. We'll open up another one in Malaysia. So in many different countries, they're opening up the same restaurant. Okay. Yeah. Everybody's thinking McDonald's. Yeah. When you think franchise, you think McDonald's. <laughs> okay. Next one, branch out, branch out. So um, this is a phrasal verb. And it means to extend or expand one's activities or interests in a new direction. So the word branch, um, it comes from like trees. So uh, the branch of a tree. So if you branch out, if a tree branches out, it expands, right? It becomes bigger and bigger and bigger in different directions. So to branch out means you are extending or expanding your interests or activities. And in the text, it says, he began branching out to other dishes. So he started with one dish. It was like a soy sauce noodle dish that became very popular. He made a franchise. And then he started making other dishes. He branched out. He's spreading himself out to new locations, new dishes. Okay. Very good. Okay. Next. Capitalize on. I think this might be the last one and then we'll go back and read the whole article. So to capitalize on means to get an advantage from something such as an event or situation. So uh, you can capitalize on an event. You can capitalize on uh, something or a situation. Uh, yeah, fr franchise restaurants are placed all around the country. Yes, very good. Okay, so uh, in the text, it says, the chef capitalized on his hard work. So what that means is he had been working hard for a long time. And then finally, his hard work was recognized. A very um, famous food Bible, Michelin, said, your restaurant is really good. We are going to recommend your restaurant. So, of course, the chef capitalized on that. So, um, he, could have, he could have done nothing, right? Oh, many customers are coming. I won't open new restaurants. I won't try new dishes. I will keep everything the same. But a smart business person might capitalize on that, take advantage of the situation. So I'm going to make my restaurant a franchise. I'm going to open up many locations. Oops. I'm going to open up many locations. I'm going to do different dishes. I'm going to expand my company. Okay. Ah, I capitalized on teaching on both Facebook and YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I can reach more students. That's right. Okay. So you're taking advantage of something. Very good. Okay. So, oh, we have one more. This is the last one, I think. The word slip was used in the article. Um, slip usually means like if you're walking and the floor is wet, you might slip. But in this case, it means to decline gradually from a standard level. So for example, the quality was here. This is a, a good quality. But if the quality started slipping, it means it's getting a little worse, a little worse, a little worse, getting bad, bad, bad. <laughs> okay. So um, in the text, it said, others felt the quality of the food slipped. So uh, the chef, his restaurant became famous. He decided to capitalize on that and make many restaurants, many different dishes. So he, business-wise, he was doing very well. 
But some people felt because he branched out, the quality of the food went down. The quality of the food slipped. Okay. So getting worse and worse and shoo, not good at all. Okay. Ah, fizzle out and slip. Are they the same? So quite a while ago, we learned the term fizzle out. So fizzle out, uh, yeah, it's gradually something becomes uh, less and less until it's gone. Um, they, they have very similar meaning, but I think for quality, we wouldn't use fizzle out exactly. I think for quality, we tend to use slipped, but very good, yes. Um, or yeah, you could use decline, yeah. Slipped means decline. You could use the word decline. Others felt the quality of the food declined, okay? Excellent. Okay, so now that we've gone over the vocabulary, Let's look at the article one more time, okay? So I'll go paragraph by paragraph so we really understand, okay? A Singaporean hawker stall known for offering the world's least expensive Michelin-starred meal has just lost its designation, okay? So we learned what a hawker stall is. Um, it's like a food stall in an open area. So um, I think these are popular in Singapore. Um, so a specific hawker stall known for offering the world's least expensive Michelin starred meal. So usually Michelin restaurants are usually very, very expensive. Okay, Michelin starred restaurants are usually expensive. Um, I know that uh, like President Obama came to the Michelin starred sushi restaurant in Tokyo before. The prime ministers are always going to the Michelin starred restaurants. Um, but here in Singapore, uh, this hawker stall was the world's least expensive Michelin starred meal. So it had the least expensive on the Michelin star list. Okay but it has just lost its designation. So it was designated a star, but now Michelin took back the star for some reason, okay? So they lost their nomination or selection, okay? Hawker Chan, so this is the name of the restaurant, Hawker Chan, founded by Chan Hong Ming, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing it right. So this is the person who created the restaurant. Um, became famous for its simple yet delicious $2.50 soy sauce chicken noodle dish when it was included in Michelin's first ever guide to Singapore in 2016, earning one star. So... Um, it says it became famous for its simple yet delicious, simple yet delicious dish. So this just means that it's not very extravagant. There aren't many ingredients. It's very simple, but very delicious. Okay. Uh, then it was the first ever guide to Singapore. So it was the first time that Michelin um, made a guide to Singapore. That was in 2016, okay? And Hawker Chan got one star. So some, sometimes there's one star, two star, three stars, I think up to five or six stars, okay? But when the food Bible, so this means Michelin, Michelin, it's the authority on food, unveiled, its latest Singapore edition on September 1st. So Michelin uh, released its newest edition. So new restaurants are included. Hawker Chan, previously known as Liao, sorry if I pronounce it wrong, Liao Fan Hong Kong Soya Sauce Chicken Rice and Noodles was nowhere to be found. 
So Hawker Chan um, is a new name. It was previously, before, previously known as Liao Fan Hong Kong Soya Sauce Chicken Rice and Noodles. Very long name, hard for me to pronounce. Um, so in the newest edition, this restaurant was nowhere to be found. So it is not listed in the book anymore, okay? After his Michelin triumph, so triumph means win. So after he won a Michelin star, uh, Meng's career took off. It became very successful. His brand has grown from one humble stall in a Chinatown hawker center. So it was one not important, not fancy, small food stall. So it's grown from one humble stall in a Chinatown hawker center to a franchise restaurant. So with many, many locations, um, with locations in Thailand, the Philippines and more, okay? He changed the name of the restaurant to Hawker Chan and began branching out to other dishes. So after um, becoming a Michelin starred restaurant, he changed the name and started branching out to new dishes, trying new things. While some have applauded, so you go, good job. While some have applauded the Malaysia born chef for capitalizing on his hard work, so taking advantage of his hard work, Others felt the quality of the food slipped. So others felt the quality of the food had declined following the opening of his new establishments. So establishments here means restaurants. So after opening many restaurants, some people felt the quality slipped, declined. Okay. So how much could you understand the second time around? Could everyone understand 100% of the article now? Uh, let me know in the comments. And if you have any questions, you can also let me know. I can try to answer them really quick. Ah, I know Michelin starred by watching Master Chef 2021 USA. Ah, yes, yes, yes. So, um, uh, I think Master Chef is a, a TV program. Yes. Applauded meaning. So um, the literal meaning of applaud is this. So after somebody gives a performance, we applaud. Um, but in this sentence, I can bring it up one more time. It says, while some have applauded, the chef. Um, others didn't like the quality anymore. So it means uh, here, while some have uh, congratulated, here applauded means congratulate or support. Um, they, they say, go, go, good job. Okay. Good questions. Very good. You guys have such good questions. Oh, hello from Pakistan. Oh, okay. Hello from Pakistan. Let's see. 90%. So Abu Hussein Dali got 90%. Uh, Very good. You can understand 90% of the text. Well done. Yeah, applaud could equal appreciate, or um, I think maybe the the best synonym I could give is um, like support, support, congratulate, also appreciate, yes. Establish means build. Yes, yeah, so establish means um, build or create. Um, 
in the text, uh, I think it says opening his new establishments. So uh, to establish is a verb. So build or create and an establishment, a noun means like a place. So in this case, it would be a restaurant. Very good. Oh, very nice. Hello from Egypt, Thailand. Oh, 100%. Awesome. Very good. 70%. You're getting there. Nice job. 100%. Okay. I'm glad to see your, your numbers have gone up. Very nice. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Okay. So um, I think we will end the lesson here today. Uh, you can watch it back anytime that you need uh, help or you want to refresh your memory. Um, but thank you guys so much for joining me today. I will uh, have another live lesson as soon as I can. In the meantime, you can watch other videos on my YouTube channel. Um, you can also follow me on Facebook and TikTok. Okay. Thank you, everyone, and have a great day. See you next time. Bye. Hello, students. Are we live? I think we are. OK. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's English lesson. We're going to be learning about where to place adverbs in a sentence. So we're actually going to be looking at adverbs of frequency and where to put them in a sentence, okay? So um, before we get into the lesson, uh, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to me on YouTube. You can follow me on Facebook. And if you turn on notifications, uh, you should be getting notifications when I go live, okay? And you can also follow me on TikTok. Hello, welcome. Hello from Yemen, wow. Okay, yeah, and don't forget to tell me where you're watching from. I think the number of countries is increasing actually. Hello from Lebanon, Chad, hello, welcome. It's nice to see you guys. Are you having a wonderful day today? Okay. So um, we're going to be looking at adverbs of frequency, okay, and where we put them in a sentence. So I'm going to share my screen with you. Oh, hello from Mexico and Peru, Morocco. Welcome, everyone. Okay, so where to place adverbs. We're going to be doing an English grammar lesson today, okay? Very good, I hope you're excited. So we're going to go through the lesson and at the end there will be, I think, five questions. So stick around until the end and we'll see if you understand everything, okay? Oh, thank you, I'm glad you're liking the lessons. Hello from Myanmar, Pakistan, Algeria, Bangladesh. Oh my gosh, Kashmir, hello, Thailand, Algeria. Okay, so where to place adverbs. So we're not going to go over all of the rules today. So we're going to go over um, three, three rules that will help you sound fluent when you're speaking English and when you're using adverbs of frequency. So we'll go over the three rules um, of where you can place them. And then, uh, um, I think if you remember just these rules, you'll be able to um, speak with confidence, okay? So let's try. Let's look at the first one. Okay, adverbs of frequency. So we have examples of adverbs of frequency. We have always, usually, sometimes, rarely, and never, okay? So there are others, but these ones are used quite often. So um, we've had other lessons um, going over adverbs of frequency. So um, just a reminder that these are some of the common ones, okay? So let's go over the first rule, the first tip, okay? 
Adverbs of frequency. Place adverbs of frequency after to be. So after the to be verb, we are going to put the adverb of frequency, not before, okay? So uh, this is just a tip to make you sound more fluent. Of course, there are other rules on where to put adverbs, but just if you know these, you'll be perfect every time, okay? Oh, hello from Guatemala, welcome. Okay, so here are some examples. I am usually on time, okay? We have the be verb, am, I am. Then we can put the adverb, usually, on time. She is, here is the to be verb, always happy, okay? He was, this is our be verb, rarely sick. Okay, so far, is it understandable? And feel free to write in the comments if you want to try and make a sentence using um, this way, if you place the adverb after the to be verb, okay? So moving on, place adverbs of frequency before other verbs. So if you have other verbs, for example, we have eat, bikes, stays, we're going to put the adverb before the verb, okay? So here are some examples. I usually eat breakfast. So here we don't have the be verb. We have the verb to eat. I usually eat breakfast, okay? She always bikes to school. She always bikes to school. So um, the verb bike, uh, be careful because bike is also a noun. It's the thing that you ride on. And then in American English, when we talk about riding a bike, we can also say the verb to bike. She always bikes to school. Okay, very good. Oh, I'm glad you're understanding the lesson. Very nice. Okay. Then he rarely stays home. Here that we have the verb to stay, to stay. He rarely stays home. Okay. Very good. Understandable so far. Awesome. Okay. So, ah, I am always listening to your lecture. Very good. I'm always listening to your lecture. So you're actually um, very good. So you put the always after the be verb and before the, the verb listen. Very good. Okay. Then we have another rule. If you remember these three, you will sound very, very fluent and you won't have any problems. You'll, you'll be right every time. Okay. The next one. Place adverbs of frequency between auxiliary helping verbs and modal verbs and main verbs. So if you have an auxiliary verb and you have a main verb, we're going to put the adverb of frequency in the middle between them, okay? Oh, very good. This is a good one. I always brush my teeth in the morning. Perfect. I always brush. Very good. Very good. Okay. Then, uh, okay, we'll look at these examples. I can usually run for one hour. How long can you usually run? I can usually run without getting tired for one hour. Okay. So we have can, I can. Then we have the adverb of frequency, and then we have our main verb, run, okay? So this is the pattern that we'll be using. I can usually run for one hour, okay? She would, we have would here. She would always visit me, okay? Would, would here. And then we're going to have the adverb of frequency and then visit. This is our main verb. Okay, very good. Then the last one, it 
should, here we have should, it should rarely take more than 10 minutes. It should rarely take more than 10 minutes. Okay, so we have our subject, auxiliary or modal verb, helping verb, then the adverb of frequency, and then we're going to have our main verb. So here it comes in the middle, between, okay? Very good. Let's see if you guys have some. I frequently watch your videos. Oh, thank you. I rarely go to the bazaar. Excellent. Uh, let's see. Oh, I'm glad you're liking the lessons. Thank you. Ah, very understandable. Thank you so much. I'm always late. Very good. But today I'm on time. Wonderful. I'm always late. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> I like this one. I can usually sleep for more than seven hours. Wonderful. I hope you're getting a good night's sleep every night. Okay. I'm always motivated. So here you can say, I'm always motivated when I watch your live stream. Thank you very much and great example. Okay. Very good. So um, let's review really quickly. So remember, if you remember these three tips, then you'll have no problem because adverbs technically can go at the beginning, middle, end of sentences, but it depends on some things. So today we're just focusing on these three um, tips. And if you use them, you'll have no problem. Okay. So place adverbs of frequency after to be, after the to be verb, then we can use an adverb of frequency. I am usually on time. Here am is the, the to be verb, okay? Place adverbs of frequency before other verbs, okay? So if we have the verb to bike, to bike, she always, bikes to school, okay? And then lastly, place adverbs of frequency between auxiliary slash modal verbs, helping verbs, and main verbs. She would always visit me, okay? So now that we have these three rules, let's try the questions, okay? Let's see how many questions you can get correct, all right? So you can answer, you can type the answer in the comments. So we have five questions. So number one, they go to Japan. And in parentheses, we have the word always. So where in this sentence are we going to put always? Okay, write your answer in the comments. Let's see if we can get it right. And then we'll check the answers, okay? Oh, hello from Pakistan. Welcome. Okay. Oh, Andy, welcome. If this is your first time, welcome, welcome. Okay, so they go to Japan. Where should we place always? Always, okay? Write your answer down. Very good. Delaware Amiri, very good, excellent. Javier, good job. Very good, this one's an easy one. Okay, number one, they always go to Japan. So if we have just um, the verb to go, we're going to place it before. They always go to Japan, okay? Excellent, number two, I drink beer. And in parentheses, we have sometimes. Where are we going to put the adverb of frequency? Okay. Where, if we, if we just follow the rules that we learned today, where would we put sometimes? Excellent, Martine. Very good. Yes, Nival, you're correct. Okay. 
So if we follow the rules that we learned today, I sometimes drink beer. Now, if you said sometimes I drink beer, you are also correct, but we're just going to look at these three specific rules today because um, depending on the adverb and depending on the sentence, the um, placement might change, okay? So if we're just following these rules, I sometimes drink beer. Very good. Number three, he is hungry. And in parentheses, we have always, always. Where should we put always if we're following our three rules? Oh, very good, Martine. He is always hungry. Nice job. He is always hungry. So if you see, here, they always go. He is always hungry. Very good. If you follow the rules, you'll be perfect, okay? Number four, she would drive to work. Now, we have in parentheses, never, never. Where can we put never, okay? So, Write your answer in the comments. Oh, very good. I see lots of correct answers. You guys are so good. You're on the ball. Okay. Very good. She would never drive to work. Oh, Devashka, hello, welcome. She would never. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so we would say, she would never drive to work. Very good. If you got that one correct, excellent, excellent. Okay. So I know some people put sometimes here in the front. Sometimes I drink beer. That is correct. But if we did the same thing with never, never she would drive to work. That would be incorrect. So if you follow the, the three tips that I gave you today, you won't have any mistakes, okay? Number five, we should speak politely. We should speak politely. So we have always, where would we put always? Excellent, very good. We should always speak politely. We should always speak politely should always speak politely. Very good, everybody. Nice job. Okay, so we have, we, we should always speak politely. Very good, excellent. Okay, I think somebody had a question about drive or drives. So I think you're talking about number four. So um, if we said she never drives, to work, that would be correct. But we have the word would here. She would never drive to work. Okay, then we don't place an S here, all right? Very good, okay, so yes, we should always speak politely, very good. So um, you guys did a wonderful job. Let me bring back, there we go, okay. So good job, everyone. Um, I think everybody did a very, very good job. Please let me know if you have some other questions. Oh, I'm so glad. This practice is really awesome. Very good, I'm glad to hear that. Okay, so um, if you want to make some example sentences, you can do so in the comments, or if you have some questions, um, of course, you can also leave those in the comments as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you would like, ooh, if you would like to know when I post new lessons and when I go live, you can um, subscribe to me on YouTube, um, follow me on Facebook. You can turn on notifications in both of those places and you should be able to get a notification once I go live, all right? Um, okay. Ah, please teach me punctuation. Good 
topic. Okay. So if you guys want some punctuation lessons, um, please comment that also. I'll try and uh, do those for you. Very good. Okay. Um, so thank you very much. And I will see you in my next lesson very, very soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care. Bye. Hello, everyone. Yes, we are live. Okay. So today is our review lesson. Yay. We are going to review everything that we learned this week. Are you excited? Okay. So we learned um, eight words and how to use them this week. And they're simple. And I think you've already known these words, but um, we're clearing up some mistakes that I noticed with a lot of the students. Okay. Hello. Hello, Erica. Thank you for joining us. We are going to do our review lesson. I hope you watched all of the other lessons. Hello, Mo Ma 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 Mahmoud. Is that how you say your name? To Anne, Asa, Cece, Junior, Suganya. Hello. Okay, very good. Thoazin, is that how you say your name? I'm so sorry, I always mispronounce everybody's names. I have to become more cultured so that I can tell, tell your names on, on camera. But okay, so we're going to go over everything that we learned this week. Oh, I'm very, I'm glad I pronounced it correctly. Hello from Nicar Nicaragua. Wow. Hello. Oh, I'm not going to undo my marker yet. This marker always um, runs out of ink really quick. So these are the words that we learned this week. But I know they're simple. They're very simple. But um, we're going to clear up and just review um, mistakes that I see a lot of students making. OK? Hello from Myanmar. Oh, thank you, Erica. Okay, so if we look at these, we're gonna go over them and I'm going to quickly uh, review uh, how we use them in the meaning, okay? So number one is annoyed, annoyed. This is the feeling that a person or an animal, a living creature can feel, right? This is a feeling. I feel annoyed or I am annoyed, okay, annoyed. So um, we, we don't say that, um, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you a, a hint between these two. So annoyed is the feeling and annoying, annoying is what causes this feeling. Does that make sense? Oh, hello from Myanmar, Philippines. Hello, hello, Lin Lin. Okay, so annoyed is the feeling that we get when we are oh, frustrated or feeling uncomfortable. Oh, I'm so annoyed. Annoying is what we describe the cause of being annoyed. So, oh, my boss, my boss gave me a lot of extra work. He is annoying. I am annoyed, okay? Very good. So now we'll do, we'll do in pairs, maybe that's easier. So number three and number four, we have scared. I'll put it a little bit closer. We have scared and we have scary. Very similar to annoyed and annoying, right? In how we use them. Oh, hello from Cambodia. I want to visit Cambodia. I have a best friend who is um, Cambodian. Okay, so three is scared. This is the feeling that we get, like annoyed. Annoyed is our feeling. Scared is also our feeling. Ooh, I'm afraid. I'm scared. The thing that causes me to feel scared, we would say it is scary. So the ghost is scary. Okay, we wouldn't say I'm scary. I know a lot of students say I'm scary. 
but that means you are causing fear in other people. You are kind of like a, a scary thing, right? So you don't want to say, I'm scary, unless that's what you mean. But you would say, I'm scared. I'm scared. The movie is scary. My boss is scary. The clown is scary. I feel scared. Oh, hello from Pakistan, Indonesia, India. Oh my gosh, hello. Okay, so let's go to five and six. Five is fun and six is funny. So these are often getting um, mistook for the wrong one, right? So something is fun. Something is fun. And we don't count fun. Fun is uncountable. So we don't say we had a fun, right? It was a fun. So we would say I had fun. It was fun. Oh, Brazil here. Hello. Okay. So fun. It was fun. It is fun. I had fun. We never say I had a fun, okay? So don't add, you don't need to add a, okay? Fun. And funny, funny has two meanings, remember? So funny is ha ha ha, that was so funny. So something that makes you laugh. That is so funny. That joke was funny. And Funny can also mean strange. So, ooh, you look a little bit funny. What happened? So you look a little bit strange or weird. Ooh, something smells funny, right? Something smells funny. So something smells strange, not right, okay? Then number seven, number eight. This is probably the hardest um, to remember about pronunciation. So number seven is advice, advice, advice. It has a C and it's pronounced like S, S sound, advice. And then number eight, we have advise, Z, advise, okay? So this is like more of a Z sound. Oh. Okay, Erica is going to go do her schoolwork and be right back. Take your time. Don't worry. This lesson will be up forever. Um, ooh, we have Afghanistan, Syria. Very good. Hello, Umida. Okay. So remember that advice is a noun and it is uncountable. So we don't say advices. We don't say an advice. So we would say some advice or a piece of advice. That is typically what we say. Can I give you some advice? Can I give you a piece of advice? Okay, this is a noun and it's uncountable, uncountable. Then advise is a verb, advise. So you're giving suggestions, recommendations. Okay, advise, to advise someone, okay? Do you have any questions? Are these all right? Hello, hello. Thank you for coming. Does anyone have any questions on anything we learned so far? If not, we're going to get into um, our exercises. OK, oh, hello from the UAE. Hello. Please come to Afghanistan. Oh, I'd like to. I love traveling. Maybe after the pandemic is over. <laughs> Explain annoyed. Okay. So annoyed is the feeling that we get when we are like frustrated or uncomfortable. So um, let's see. When I was younger, my sister would often um, take my clothes, right? She would take my clothes and she would wear them. So I was always annoyed. I thought she was annoying. She was annoying. I felt annoyed. Hey, stop stealing my clothes. Okay, so it's when you're kind of frustrated or, you know, uncomfortable. Okay, 
Oh, I'll remember forever. Fun is uncountable. Yes, you cannot count fun. It is uncountable. Very good. Okay. Oh, how to recognize uncountable nouns. That is something you might have to just memorize and learn through um, experience, I think. English makes it so complicated, right? Hello from Sudan. Okay, so is everyone okay? So annoyed is the feeling that someone gets. Annoying is describing the person or thing that is causing this feeling, okay? Very good. So we're gonna jump into the exercises, my favorite part, cause that's where I really get to interact with you guys. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm really worried about my marker. It always dies. So, okay. I hope I don't erase anything with my fingers. Okay, so as you can see here, I put the words up here. I hope you can see them. We have annoyed, annoying, scared, scary, fun, funny, advice, advise. Okay. Oh, the difference between advise and advice one more. So advice, advice is a noun and it is uncountable. Please do not say advices. Please do not say an advice. So we say some advice or a piece of advice, usually advice and advise is a verb. So to advise. So it means to suggest something or to recommend something. Okay. Oh, hello from Nicaragua. Wow. Okay. So let's try number one. Okay. We'll start off simple. Oh, Ornabukan is very, very fast. Okay. So number one, did you have at the party? Did you have at the party? Oh, very good, I see some answers. I'd love to go to Nicaragua. Okay, Hafez, Kemyat, Umida, very good. So the answer to number one, I'll write it for you. Okay, the answer to number one is, da -da -da -da. Fun. Notice that there is no uh in front of fun. Did you have fun at the party? Did you have fun at the party? And we link this. Did you have? Did you? Did you? Did you have fun at the party? Okay. Oh, very good, everybody. So number two, my boss keeps piling on work. I'm so... Ugh. So my boss keeps piling on work. So more work, more work, more work, more work. My boss keeps piling on work. I'm so, oh, oh, very good. Oh, I see a lot of correct answers. Yes, 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 yes. My boss keeps piling on work. I'm so, oh, see my pen is dying again, my marker. I'm so, Annoyed, annoyed, very good. Okay, I'm gonna switch markers <laughs> already. Okay, so number three, I'm having a problem. Could you give me some, could you give me some something? Oh, I see a correct answer already. Okay. Oh, I see some, some people going to number four already. Very good. So number three, I'm having a problem. Could you give me some? Very good, very good. Could you give me some advice? Could you give me some advice? Okay. Could you give me some advice? Can you see it with that window back there? Sorry about that. Okay, number four, my brother is so, he keeps teasing me. He keeps teasing me. So if you don't know what teasing means, teasing means kind of joking, like kids like to tease each other. 
So my brother is so, he keeps teasing me. Oh, very good, very good. So number four is my brother is so annoying. Oh, my brother is so annoying. He keeps teasing me. Did you think your brothers or sisters were annoying, annoying when you were little? I'm the oldest. I have a younger sister and a younger brother. And sometimes I thought they were annoying and sometimes I annoyed them. Okay, oops, here we go. Number five, she was of the clown. She was of the clown. So clown, clown is supposed to be a happy, cute thing, but some kids don't think so, right? Oh, very good. Oh, yes, very good. I see a lot of correct answers. She was of the clown. Very good. She was scared of the clown. So remember, that is her feeling. She feels scared. So she was scared of the clown. The clown is scary. Okay, it's a little bit tricky. Okay, number six, it wasn't a joke. It wasn't a joke. Oh, very good. Kemyet, very good. Hafez, very good. So it wasn't a funny joke. It wasn't a funny joke. So sometimes that happens, right? Somebody tells a joke, but oh, it wasn't funny. Very good. It wasn't a funny joke. Okay. Number seven. That monster movie was pretty. And remember, pretty. Pretty does not mean um, cute, right? Or beautiful. This pretty means very. Okay. Oh. I see some correct answers, very good. That monster movie was pretty scary. That's right. So that monster movie was pretty scary. I was scared of the monster movie, okay? Very good, and the last one. I, him, to go home before dark. Oh, very good. I, him, to go home before dark. What do you think the correct answer for number eight is? Very good. Very good. Okay, I, I would say I advised, I advised him to go home before dark. So before dark means before the sun sets, right? I advised him to go home before dark. Very good. So if you guys don't understand how to use advice, um, just think of when you say I recommended or I suggested, you can also say I advised. I advised him to go home before dark. Very good. Okay. Does anyone have any questions? Let me read them one more time. Please listen to pronunciation and just let it kind of sink in. You can also repeat it at home. Okay, so number one, did you have fun at the party? Did you have fun at the party? Number two, my boss keeps piling on work. I'm so annoyed. My boss keeps piling on work. I'm so annoyed. Oh, so Hafez says there was a question about the meaning of keeps piling. So to keep piling on something, especially like work, means you're putting more work, more work, more work. It's piling up, piling up, okay? My boss keeps piling on work. I'm so annoyed. Number three. I'm having a problem. Could you give me some advice? Could you give me some advice? Number four, my brother is so annoying. 
He keeps teasing me. My brother is so annoying. He keeps teasing me. Number five, she was scared of the clown. She was scared of the clown. Scared of the clown, scared of the clown. So a lot of times of becomes a uh, in American English. She was scared of, scared of. She was scared of the clown or she was scared of the clown. Oh, hello, Claudia. Okay, number six, it wasn't a funny joke. It wasn't a funny joke. It wasn't a, wasn't a, sometimes this T disappears. It wasn't a, it wasn't a funny joke. Oh, uh, Hafez asked if teasing and kidding have the same meaning. Yes, I would say teasing and kidding are, are pretty much the same. Okay. Number seven, that monster movie was pretty scary. That monster movie was pretty scary. So pretty means very, okay? And number eight, I advised him to go home before dark. I advised him to go home before dark. Okay, very nice. Okay, so uh, let's see. Anna said, if you have time, may you please explain the difference from practice and practice for next lesson? Um, I think, yeah, I, I will try to do that for the next lesson for you. That's a good idea. Okay, very good. Okay, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening and participating as always. I really appreciate it. Um, wow, we've already been going for 20 minutes. So sorry, um, I can't really answer your questions right now because I have to go soon. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, if you uh, haven't already, there is a new um, video on the YouTube channel. You can go check it out. Please do, please subscribe, please share this video. Thank you guys so much for um, watching. Thank you guys so much for participating and we will start a new lesson next week. Okay, thank you guys so much. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye. Hello everyone. Welcome back to another lesson. Today's lesson was actually requested by one of my students. So thank you very much. By the way, if you would like some extra homework for this lesson, I will leave a link in the description box. So make sure to go and check it out. All right, today we are going to talk about the differences between could, would, and should. They are all used to talk about possibilities, but they all mean something a little different. Let's look at could first. We use could when we want to say that an action or event is possible, that there is a possibility. Let's look at some examples. If someone asks you, when can you go to the store? You might say, mm, I could go tomorrow. There is a possibility that you can go tomorrow, but maybe there's another day that is convenient. Usually we give more information when we use could, would, and should. Here's another example with could. I could buy that for you if you really want it. Here's one more example. If I start walking now, I could make it on time. So I can possibly make it on time. It depends on how fast I walk. If I walk too slowly, I could be late. All right, let's look at would. 
Wood is used when we talk about something we imagine. Usually, the possibility is not going to happen. If the circumstances were right, we would do something. Here are some examples to help you better understand would. I would buy that for you, but I don't have enough money. This means I want to buy it for you, but I don't have enough money, so I can't. I would go to the park, but it's raining, so I'm not going to go. Okay, one more example. I would go to the party if I felt better, but I don't feel good, so I won't go. Do you think you got it? How about should? We use should when we think something is good to do or that someone must do something. It would be best if someone did something. I'll give you an example. I should study for my test. This means it is best that I study. I must study. You should get some rest is the same as it is best that you rest. Okay, here is one more example. I should throw these old shoes away, but they're my favorite. This means I know I need to throw these old shoes away. Maybe they have holes in them. The best thing is to throw them away, but they're my favorite, so I don't want to. Okay, now that you understand each of their meanings, Let's use them in the same sentence. Can you see how each word changes the meaning of the same sentence? Let's use eat dinner. So I could eat dinner, I would eat dinner, I should eat dinner. Okay? I could eat dinner, but I'm not that hungry. I would eat dinner, but I'm still full from lunch. I should eat dinner. It's getting late. Got it? All right. Let's move on to the trickier ones. Adding have done something. So could have done, would have done, should have done. These all mean that something was possible, but didn't happen in the past. I could have done my homework. Remember, could means a possibility. So there was a possibility to do my homework, but for some reason I didn't. For example, I could have done my homework, but I decided to watch TV instead. Okay? I would have done my homework. Remember, we use would when the possibility is not going to happen. If the circumstances were right, the possibility would happen. For example, I would have done my homework, but my computer was broken. Okay? I should have done my homework. Remember that should means this is the best thing to do. There is an obligation. Should have done is often used when you feel regret. For example, I should have done my homework, but I got distracted. All right, I'll give you another example for each. Ready? I could have woken up earlier, but 
I was still tired. So I didn't wake up earlier. There was a possibility to wake up earlier, but I decided to keep sleeping. I would have woken up earlier if my alarm clock weren't broken. So I didn't wake up earlier. My alarm clock was broken, so I didn't wake up. Okay, let's try should. I should have woken up earlier. Now I'll be late for class. Again, I didn't wake up earlier. Waking up earlier is the best thing to do. Now I regret my decision because I'll be late for class. Okay, do you think you understand how to use could, would, and should? Don't forget to answer the homework questions in the comments. I will also put a link to extra homework in the description box. So if you are interested, please check that out. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. That way you'll know when new lessons are uploaded. Thanks to the student who requested this video. I hope it was helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye! Today, we're going to learn the word mugshot, mugshot. Have you ever heard this word before? To understand the word mugshot, let's take a look at the word mug first. And no, I'm not talking about a mug of coffee. I'm talking about your face. So the word mug is a very informal way to say face, your face, or your mug. So if someone says to you, you've got a nice mug, that means you have a nice face. Now, I wouldn't say that this word is that common, but sometimes you might hear it. Then we can look at the word mug as a verb, to mug, to mug someone. What do you think that means? Now, to mug someone means to rob someone while threatening violence. If you are walking down the street and someone says, give me your money, they might be mugging you, robbing you and threatening violence. Now, what does your face have to do with robbing people? Using the word mug as a verb comes from an earlier definition. To mug used to mean to strike or hit someone in the face. Now it means robbing someone while threatening violence. Then we get to our word of the day, mugshot, mugshot. A mugshot is a picture that is taken of your face when you get arrested. We say shoot photos. So a mug shot 
is a picture of your face. However, mugshot is only used when someone gets arrested or is in trouble with the law. Then they get an official picture taken of their face. That is their mugshot. Some mugshots are very funny. Some mugshots are surprisingly good looking. What do you call a mugshot in your country? Do you have the same system of taking a picture of someone's face? Write it down in the comments below and I can't wait to hear all the different words you use for mugshot. I hope now you can remember the words mug and mugshot, but I hope you don't get your mugshot taken. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to see longer videos, head on over to my YouTube channel where I upload every week. I'll see you in our next lesson. Bye! Hi everyone! Welcome back to my English teaching channel. I'm so happy that you're here today. I am going to give you five tips and tricks to learn English more fluently. Usually when you start taking an English class, they give you a textbook and tell you to read. But learning a language is not just about reading and grammar. So I'm going to give you some advice that really helped me when I was learning a foreign language and I think it will help you too. So let's get into it. The first tip is watch English speaking TV or movies with no subtitles. Don't turn on the subtitles in your native language. That might help you to easily understand what's going on, but we want to focus on learning English. So forget your native language. Usually languages don't translate equally. So you need to train your mind to think in English. When we are babies, we don't have any native language. We hear what our family says, we hear what's on TV, and that's how we learn our native language. So in the same way, like a baby, we need to start from scratch. So what is really good for listening practice and for understanding intonation and pronunciation, we need to focus on what language we're learning. In this case, we are learning English, so I want you to find a TV show, a, it could be a cooking show, a TV drama, or a movie, and really listen to what they say and how they say it. Another way you could use this method is listen to the movie or TV show and whenever you don't know a word, rewind it and try to listen again and see what they're saying. Then you can use your dictionary or Google to try and type in the word the best you think it's spelled and see what pops up and see if you can figure out what the word is. When I was learning Japanese, I bought a DVD of a drama that I knew I would like. Because I purchased the DVD in Japan, it didn't have any English subtitles. So I was forced to watch it in Japanese with no subtitles. I probably couldn't understand even 50% of what they were saying, but I listened and when I heard a word I didn't know and I couldn't understand from the context of the TV show, I would use my electronic dictionary and I would try to type in the word and I would think, oh, it's, they said it like this, so maybe it's spelled like this. And I would find the word. Because it took a lot of effort, I remembered that word more. So it was really helpful for me. So tip number two is to watch movies and TV shows with subtitles. So not like what I just told you, but with subtitles. However, I don't want you to watch your movie or TV show 
with subtitles in your native language. No, 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 no. Watch it with subtitles in English. English subtitles. That will help you listen to what they're saying and also help you read the words at the bottom. So you're getting the dialogue in two ways. You're hearing it and you're seeing it. This really helped me when I was learning Japanese because a lot of Japanese TV shows have Japanese subtitles popping up on the screen. So I could hear what they said and read what they said at the same time. And it actually really helped me. I could understand the words that they were saying and it helped me with pronunciation. So it was very, very helpful and I really recommend this method. Tip number three, sing. So singing is so, so helpful. You don't have to get up on stage. You don't have to sing in front of other people, but find a song that you like and learn the words. It's okay if you can't understand the nuance of the song completely or the meaning completely. Just listen to the song, learn the words, and whenever you're home alone, try singing because that will help you with pronunciation and intonation. A lot of my English students who are singers actually have really good English pronunciation and that's because they sing in English and they copy the sound that the singer makes. And it's a really fun way to get to know the language and pronunciation. It's also helpful if you can do karaoke. So if you're seeing the words on the screen and singing at the same time, you're also getting to know the words in two ways. So I think that's another really fun way to learn English. It's okay if you're not good at singing. I am horrible at singing. I cannot sing, but when I'm home alone or if I go to karaoke with my friends, I don't mind. I just like to sing and, and it's really useful. Don't worry if you can't sing. It's just a really fun way to learn English without sitting and studying from a textbook. Tip number four is make a friend who speaks English. The best way to learn a language is by talking to a native speaker of that language. So I know it might be difficult, depending on where you live, to make a native English speaking friend. There might not be anyone who speaks English natively in your school or in your town. But luckily we have the internet, which is such a good resource for learning English. There are many language exchange websites where you can find someone who wants to learn your native language and you can learn English from them. So you can find a friend on one of those websites and have a language exchange. You can teach them some words in your native language and they will help you learn native English. What's really useful about having a friend who speaks English is that you can learn more natural ways to say things. So instead of saying, hello, you can say, hey, or hi. They can help you learn more natural expressions and also some slang that's commonly used in conversation. So it's a really, really wonderful way to meet new people and improve your English at the same time. Last but not least, tip number five, and that is to watch native English speakers on YouTube. If you watch English TV or an English movie, they have a script with the correct words they want to say, and usually people don't talk over each other. One person talks at a time, and it's a little more clearer than in a regular situation. So I would recommend to watch American YouTubers who do vlogs. So when they're vlogging, they might talk to someone at a restaurant or they're talking to their friends, they're excited, so they talk a little bit more quickly 
they talk over each other and that is a real situation. Even though TVs and movies are useful, it's not a real situation. I remember my own experience when I came to Japan. I was used to classroom Japanese where my teacher spoke at a level I could understand. I watched some dramas and movies in Japanese, but when I came to Japan, I realized that in real life situations, Japanese isn't as clean as in movies or in the classroom. You know, people have different emotions when they speak, and that can be overwhelming if you're learning a language for the first time. So I think if you have access to the internet and you can use YouTube, it is a really great resource for learning situational English. So those are all my tips for today. Please leave a comment if you have any other tips or tricks that worked for you that I didn't mention in this video. Or if you have any recommendations for English speaking movies or TV shows, please comment them down below too. And thank you so much for watching today's video. I will see you in my next video. Bye! Hello students, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining today's lesson. Um, let's see, so I'm going to get right into it. So um, uh, if you are joining in the chat, you can, um, I'm going to have some exercises. So if you're joining in the chat, you can leave your answers in the chat. Um, or if you're watching this um, a little bit later, you can leave your comments or your answers in the comments, okay? So please do that, and we're gonna just get into it. So today we're going to learn the difference between these two expressions, and these are very, very tricky. So I noticed a lot of my students make a mistake um, regarding these two, okay? So, this is what we're going to learn today. We're going to learn on time, on time versus in time. Okay, on time versus in time. Aren't they the same? Don't they mean the same thing? Okay, well, I am going to help you better understand the difference. And it's very, um, very, very similar, right? There's only one letter different, right? So actually, we use on time, we use on time when we are um, at um, a certain designated time for an event. Um, if we arrive uh, right when the event is supposed to start, or just a little bit before. So we're not um, we're not too early for something and we're not late for something, okay? However, in a time, in time just means you have sufficient time. You have enough time to do something or to get somewhere, okay? So the tricky thing is, is that even if you are not on time, you can still be in time, right? So, um, but if you are, uh, if you are on time, you can be in time, but if you're not on time, you can still be in time. So there is a little bit of a difference there, okay? So um, let's look at my bigger whiteboard and then we can see a little bit more clearly, okay? So if you can master 
on time and in time, you're going to sound a lot more um, fluent when you speak. And I think it's going to help your confidence because we use these quite a lot, especially um, in business or in everyday life. You're going to hear people use these all the time. So, okay, I have it written out here. I'll move a little bit. Okay, so we have on time, on time. Not especially early and not late for a designated time, okay? Not especially early, so you're not super early. And you're also not late for a designated time, okay? So, in time, what does in time mean again? Early enough before a deadline or cut off. Okay, early enough, early enough. So even if you're in time, it doesn't mean you're on time, okay? Even if you're in time for something, that doesn't mean you are on time. So let's look at these um, uh, questions, exercises that I made and see if you can get them right. So please write your answers in the chat or in the comments, okay? So whichever one you prefer. So number one, I'll open my marker. Okay, the meeting is scheduled for 9 a.m. So please be on time or in time. The meeting is scheduled for 9 a.m. So please be Okay, let's see if you can get the correct answer. Please write it down. Okay, I'm going to write it. Ready? The meeting is scheduled for 9 a.m. So please be, what do you think the answer is? Please be on time. Please be on time. So, you don't need to be super early, but you cannot be late. You need to be on time for the meeting. We have a scheduled 9 a.m. meeting, right? So please be on time. In time would sound like you got there just early enough before the meeting starts. So it's a very, very small difference, but in time sounds like you luckily got there just in time, right? So be on time. This is more prepared, right? Okay, number two. I got to the concert just, ooh, just, mm, to hear my favorite song. I got to the concert just to hear my favorite song. So which one do you think is the best answer for this one? The best answer, on time or in time? Okay, please write your answers in the chat, in the comments. Very, very good. I got to the concert just in time to hear my favorite song. I got to the concert just in time to hear my favorite song. So just in time means that maybe you didn't get to the concert on time. The concert is supposed to start at um, 8 p.m., 8 p.m., but I arrived at 8.30. So I was late for the concert, but I was in time to hear my favorite song. So maybe I missed um, a little bit of introduction or the first 30 minutes of the concert while they were preparing, getting ready, but I made it just in time to hear my favorite song, okay? So there probably was not a specific um, time that they said they were gonna play their song, but I just so happened to arrive just in time to hear it, okay? So number three, I'm always, so this is regularly, I'm always 
Mm -hmm. For meetings. I'm always mm -hmm, for meetings. Which one do you think? I'm always on time for meetings or I'm always in time for meetings. On time or in time? Which one do you think is correct? I'll wait for some answers. Okay. Okay, I'm going to give you the answer. I'm always on time for meetings. I'm always on time for meetings. So I'm never late for meetings. I'm always on time for meetings. Very good. And number four, we have two answers here. So we're going to use both on time and in time, but we got to know which are we going to use. Okay, so I didn't get to school, mm -hmm, but I arrived mm -hmm, to turn in my report. So turn in means to give your report or your homework to your teacher, right? So your teacher says, okay, everyone, turn in your report tomorrow morning at 9.30, okay? so. I didn't get to school, mm -hmm. but I arrived mm -hmm, to turn in my report. Okay, is this a little bit tricky? Okay, I'm going to give you the answers. Are you ready? Okay, I'm gonna flip it around. I didn't get to school, mm hmm but I arrived hmm, hmm, to turn in my report. Okay, here are the answers. <gasps> okay, who got them right? I didn't get to school on time. I was a little bit late for school, but I arrived in time to turn in my report. And I got marker on myself now. <laughs> I didn't get to school on time, but I arrived in time to turn in my report. So this means that I didn't get to school on time. I was a little bit late. I was a little bit late. However, I arrived in time to turn in my report. So I was late, but my teacher still let me turn in my report, okay? so. You can see that is the difference. I was not, I was not early and I was late for school. But I arrived with just enough, just enough time before a deadline to turn in my report. Does that make sense? Is it understandable? So let's look at these again on time not especially early, so maybe just a few minutes early, and you're not late for a designated time. In time is early enough before a deadline or cut off, okay? So let's read them together one more time. The meeting is scheduled for 9 a.m., so please be on time. Don't be late. Number two, I got to the concert just in time to hear my favorite song. I was maybe a little bit late to the concert. So if you're a little bit late to something, you can't use on time, right? You're not on time. But I got there with just enough time to hear my favorite song. I got there in time to hear my favorite song. Number three. I'm always on time for meetings. This is a regular occurrence. I am never late. I am always on time. And number four, I didn't get to school on time, but I arrived in time to turn in my report. Okay, does everybody understand the difference now between on time and in time? Okay. I hope it was understandable. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments, okay? And I will be sure to check them. All right, 
So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, thank you for sharing this video with your friends. And thank you for uh, subscribing to the YouTube channel and liking our Facebook page. Thank you so much. And I will see you guys next time for our next lesson. Okay, thank you very much. Bye. Hello everyone. Welcome, welcome. We are going to have we are going to have a new lesson today. Um, but first, before we get into the lesson, if you can and uh, if you haven't yet already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. So I'm posting lessons quite often over there. So if you would like to know when I post new lessons. You can go ahead and subscribe and you will be able to see when I post new lessons. Oh, Tata Win, hello. Good good morning. I don't know if it's morning for you. Hello from India. Hello, hello. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today's lesson was requested by one of my students. Ali Awan always has very good questions. So uh, by the way, if you have questions please leave them in the comments. You can always request a lesson. Oh, it's okay if you missed yesterday's lesson. You can always go back and watch it, no problem. But you're here today, and that's what matters. Hello from Cambodia. All right, so uh, this is a live lesson. So welcome everyone who's in the chat. Hello from Nepal, Ecuador, hello. Yes, you're welcome, Ali. It was a good question. So. Today, we're going to look at the difference in how to use about to and going to. So like I said, this was requested by Ali Awan. So thank you so much for requesting this. Uh, this is a very uh, good question, I think. So we can use these somewhat similarly, but there is a difference, okay? There is a difference. So about to versus going to. So I'm going to briefly explain. When we use about to, I am about to graduate. For example, I'm about to graduate. This indicates uh, immediacy or urgency. So something is going to happen very, very soon very, very soon. So uh, if I said, I'm about to graduate, maybe I'm in the last weeks of my college semester. If I said, I'm going to graduate, this sounds like the time frame is not clear. I'm not telling you when. So it could be, I'm going to graduate next year. I'm going to graduate in four years. There is no sense of immediacy or urgency. So with about to, we get that um, sense of urgency or it's about to happen. It's just happening, okay? So I'll give you uh, the bigger whiteboard so you can see it a little bit more clearly, okay? So uh, let's see, let's see going to, going to. So when we use going to, this indicates someone's plans or intentions or certainty, something is certainly going to happen, okay? But it could be uh, tomorrow, it could be later today, it could be next year. The time frame is not indicated by using going to. When we use about to, we have a sense of immediacy. Something is going to happen soon, immediately, or urgency. Something has to be done or something is going to be done in a few minutes, okay? So we can look at these two examples. They're the same sentence except for one has going to and one has about to. So if I say it's going to rain, probably it means sometime today. It's going to rain this afternoon. 
It's going to rain uh, tonight. It's going to rain tomorrow even, okay? <clears throat> However, about to, it's about to rain. Maybe I'm looking outside at the clouds and the rain cloud is about to burst and rain will start falling. So this is a sense of urgency. Oh, I don't have an umbrella and it's about to rain. I should go find shelter or cover, okay? It's going to rain sounds like there you have you are certain it's going to rain. The rain will fall, but it might not be right now. It could be a little bit later. Okay? Very good. So, uh let's see. Let's try number 3. Number 3. I am <laughs> take out the garbage later. I am, take out the garbage later. Oh, very good, excellent. Okay, I see some correct answers. So I am, the correct answer, the best answer would be going to. I am going to take out the garbage later. So this is my plan, this is my intention. It's not right now, but in the near future. I am going to take out the garbage later. Okay, we wouldn't say I'm about to take out the garbage later. That sounds strange because about to means almost right now and later indicates a different time. So it's contradictory. So we wouldn't use about to with later. Okay, number four, listen up. So listen up means, hey, listen and pay attention. Listen up. Listen up. The winner is be announced. Listen up. The winner is be announced. Number three, what do you think? Oh, sorry, number four. <laughs> Not number three, number four. Oh, very good. Yes, perfect, everybody. Listen up. The winner is about to be announced. The winner is about to be announced. So in just a few seconds, so we should pay attention. We should listen. Okay, who's gonna win? All right, number five. Maybe this is a conversation. So person A, could you turn off the stove? Person B, I was just something. Number five, what do you think? Oh, everyone, very good. So could you turn off the stove? Oh, I was just, excellent, very good. I was just about to, this is very conversational English. I was just about to. So maybe I had it in my head, I'm going to turn off the stove. I started to get out of my chair. I was going to reach for it. Could you turn off the stove? Yeah, I'm, I'm just about to. I'm seconds away from turning off the stove. Very good, okay. So number six, last one. He is call at 5 p.m. He is call at 5 p.m. What do you think is the correct answer for number six? Oh, very good, Joshua, Bobby, nice. Carlo, Ricardo, very nice, okay. So he is, this should be easy, going to. He's going to call at 5 p.m. Very good, yes. So if you, if you notice, um, we use going to a lot when there is like a set time or an indicated time in the near future. I am going to take out the garbage later. It's going to rain sometime today. Uh, he's going to call at 5 p.m. So when we use about to, I don't think we would ever use it with a specified later time. So about to indicates that it is uh, seconds or moments away from happening. 
So we can't really use about to with a later time. Uh, he is about to call at 5 p.m. So that doesn't really make sense because it indicates a later time, okay? Is it understandable? I hope this makes sense. Oh, very good. If you can make uh, if you can make some sentences, I can put it up on the screen. Excellent, excellent. Oops. Okay. Oh, I see some great sentences. Okay, hold on. I am going to watch your new lesson. Excellent, Bobby. Very good. I am going to. So you have your intention set for the near future, but not right now. Very good. It's about to fall. Very good. So this one, um, this is a quite uh, everyday natural sentence. So if something, for example, my marker uh, is is on my shelf and I can see it's, uh, it's starting to slip, it's about to fall. It's moments or seconds away from falling. Very good. Okay. Oh, very good. She is going to buy some items from the market. Yes, excellent. So maybe later today or tomorrow, sometime in the near future. Excellent. Okay, so when can we use about to? Use about to when something is seconds or moments away. So something is just about to happen, okay? So for example, something falling. So you can see it slipping, slipping. It's about to fall. Mm -hmm. So very, very soon, okay? Uh, let's see. I'll do a few more. Oh, very good. I'm going to cook pasta tonight. I'm going to cook pasta tonight. So in this sentence, we wouldn't be able to use about to because I, I'm about to cook pasta tonight. So it doesn't really make sense. Tonight is a later time. About to means uh, almost immediately. Okay. Ah, I haven't subscribed to your YouTube channel yet, but later I'm going to do it. Very good. And thank you so much. It's a great sentence. <laughs> Okay. Ah. Uh, let's see, let's see. I think I saw, sorry, the chat went down. So I'm just scrolling back up a bit to see if I missed anything. Uh, oh, I'm going to have dinner at 7 p.m. with Zara. Very good, excellent. Okay, I'm going to. Oh, yes. It's going to be cold tomorrow. It's going to be cold tomorrow. Excellent. Okay. <clears throat> Oops, I think I missed some. Ah, oh, the chat is, there's so many uh, comments. Oh, I, I can't choose them all, but I'll try. Okay. Ah, uh, this is a good one. Oh, um, I am going to buy a house next month. Very good. I'm going to buy a house next month. Very good. If you said, <clears throat> I'm about to buy a house, I'm about to buy a house, maybe you have already started the process. Um, everything is almost complete. You just need one or two more things. You could say, I'm about to buy a house. I'm going to buy a house next month is a little bit farther away. Very good, okay. Let's see. Okay, you guys have so many good ones. Ah, okay, so it may rain today. Does this sentence reflect greater certainty than going to? So. If you say it may rain today, in this sentence, may means might. It might rain today. It may rain today. So it may rain today reflects less certainty than going to. So it's going to rain today. 
maybe you saw it on the weather, the clouds look gray, it's going to rain. You're, you're pretty certain it's going to rain. It may rain today. Uh, it looks like it, but I'm not sure. Maybe the clouds will go away. It may rain. So may is less certainty, okay? Hi, are you online or is this a recorded one? No, I am online right now. This is a live lesson. Okay, I'll do one or two more and then I have to get going. But let's see. Uh, oh, okay, I saw one. Oh, this is a little bit sad. She is going to die. She is going to die. So she is going to die means you're pretty certain she's going to die and it's going to be in the near future, maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, maybe in a month. If you say she is about to die, that means any minute now, any minute, any second, it's almost happening. She is about to die. Okay, very good. Uh, let's see, we'll do one more. Let's see. Ah, very good. We are, or we're, we are about to win the match. We are about to win the match. Very good. So that means you are maybe ahead of the other team. There's only seconds left on the clock. We are about to win the match. I'm so excited. Very good. Okay. Uh, let's see. Very good. Okay. So if you have more sentences, you can always write them in the comments. And if you uh, have any lesson requests, please write them in the comments as well. I'm always checking them. So uh, yes, I will uh, try and do uh, your lesson requests as soon as possible. Okay. So thank you everyone so much for watching. I will be back a little bit later with another, U uh, another lesson on YouTube. So please subscribe so you know when the new lesson will be posted. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you again in a little bit uh, on YouTube. All right, thank you. Bye everyone. Hello everyone. How are you today? Please shout out your country. Let us know what country you are watching from. We love to hear um, how international our students are, right? We have a really big international group. Okay, so. Oh my gosh, I think my keyboard is going to die. Oh no, I hope that's not the case. Uh, hello, hello, welcome. Yeah, I think my keyboard is going to die. <laughs> oh no, it's like a wireless keyboard and I just got a notification saying it's gonna die. Uh, let me see if I turn it off for a second. <laughs> Save the battery. <laughs> okay, hello everyone, hello, hello. So um, before we get into today's lesson, I just want to remind you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, you can also like me on Facebook and follow me on TikTok. So I know on YouTube and Facebook, people aren't getting all of the notifications. So um, if you want to know when I go live and when I'm posting a new lesson, please turn on the notifications. There should be a notification button um, on YouTube. It's like a bell. I'm not sure on Facebook what it looks like, but if you can turn on notifications, that way you'll be notified, um, hopefully, when I go live or something like that. Okay, so, oh my gosh. Okay, all right, so, before my devices die, let's just jump in to the lesson, okay? So um, we're going to be talking about um, five ways to express 
excitement, excitement in English. Okay, so we're going to be talking about exciting things. Oh, hello from Sri Lanka, India, Peru. Very nice. Tanzania. Hello, hello. Okay, welcome everyone. So uh, here is our lesson for today. Expressions for excitement. Excitement. So exciting. Okay, so Instead of saying the usual, I'm excited. Aren't you excited? We're so excited. We're gonna learn some new expressions, okay? Very good. Hello from Pakistan. Hello from uh, Vietnam, wow. Okay, so the first expression that we have is raring to go. Have you ever heard this before in English? Raring to go, okay? So if you are raring to go, this is a decided phrase, okay? Raring to go. Um, if you're raring to go, it means very eager, excited to begin something or go somewhere. Okay, you're very, very exciting, excited to start something or to go somewhere means you're raring to go, okay? We are dressed and raring to go, okay? So if you've got a party to go to, you wear your nice clothes, you get all dressed up. We are dressed and raring to go. We're so excited to go, okay? Very good. Oh, hello from Kansas City, very nice. And hello from Sri Lanka. Okay, the next one, after the project was approved, the team was raring to go. The team was raring to go. So this doesn't mean um, go to a place. This means begin something. They are excited to begin something. After the project was approved, the team was Raring to go. Okay, we are ready. We are excited to start. Very good. Next one. You may have heard this one before. It's a little bit long, but to eat, sleep, and breathe something. Okay, if you eat, sleep, and breathe something, it means you are extremely interested in that thing because it is very important to you. So basically what this um, expression means is that you are maybe thinking about that thing or doing that thing all the time when you're eating, when you're sleeping, when you're breathing. It's totally a part of your life, okay? So eating, sleeping, and breathing are things that you do to live. Those uh, You need to do those things in order to be alive. So the thing that you're interested is like what you need to do to be alive. It's totally part of how you live, okay? So example, number one, I eat, sleep, and breathe golf. So if you really, really love golf, you play golf all the time, you watch golf on TV, um, you're always practicing, you're buying new golf equipment. You could say, I eat, sleep, and breathe golf. Very good. Oh, hello from Minnesota. Wow, you're very close to my hometown, Wisconsin. <laughs> okay, next one. He is very successful because he eats, sleeps, and breathes his career, okay? So why is he so successful? Because he loves his career. He's excited to work. He really, really enjoys it. He eats, sleeps, and breathes his career or his job, okay? It's a part of him. Very good. Oh, hello from Nicaragua, very good. Okay, what is something that you eat, sleep, and breathe? Let me know in the comments. Uh, for me, maybe I eat, sleep, and breathe hmm, English. <laughs> I love teaching. 
I love teaching English in particular. So I'm doing that all the time. I'm always thinking of new lessons. So I eat, sleep, and breathe teaching, maybe. Okay, next one, fever pitch, fever pitch. Okay, so the meaning is a state of extreme excitement, extreme excitement. So when I hear a fever pitch, what I imagine, um, so if you know like a fever, oh, I have a fever, I'm so hot. So fever, like we can say um, uh, feverish is like very hot. So it could mean like excited, right? You're so excited. And then maybe pitch is, I always think of like a tent. It reaches like the maximum like this, a fever pitch. Okay. Oh, tight, tight win. Hello. It's okay if you're late. We just started. Uh, we're halfway through, but we just started. Okay. Ah, I like this one. I eat, sleep, and breathe learning English. Very good. I eat, sleep, and breathe teaching English. Okay. Very good. So, uh, fever pitch. A fever pitch is a state of extreme excitement. Maybe you're excited, excited, really, really excited. It's kind of like the peak, the peak of excitement. Okay. So, examples. Excitement in the stands had reached a fever pitch. So we often use the word reach with fever pitch. The excitement reached a fever pitch, okay? So excitement in the stands. So stands usually mean, um, we can say stands or bleachers the audience of an event, usually like a sporting event or something, um, those are the stands. The stands are where the audience sits. So excitement in the stands had reached a fever pitch. So maybe the game they're watching is very, very exciting. It's the peak of their excitement, okay? Uh, we could also say the political campaign was at a fever pitch. So we can also use was at or is at, was at a fever pitch, okay? The political campaign, um, maybe it starts off and it ramps up slow, well, not that slowly, but it ramps up and then it's at the max excitement, maybe just before an election, for example. The political campaign reached a fever pitch. Okay, the next one, um, on the edge of one's seat. Okay, on the edge of one's seat. Have you heard this expression before? It's very, very useful. Um, we use it a lot, I think. Um, so the meaning is very excited and giving one's full attention to something. So uh, if you have ever watched um, a very interesting movie, for example, a movie that has lots of twists and turns, a very entertaining movie, maybe you, you feel yourself getting closer to the screen. You get on the edge of your seat. Oh, what's going on? Um, or if you're at like a, a baseball game or soccer game, football game, you get closer and closer, as close as you can, and then you're on the edge of your seat because you're so excited, okay? So the example I have here is, the football game went into overtime. So uh, the football game, if the score is tied, if they have the same score, um, they have to go into overtime, which is like extra time. And everyone was on the edge of their seats. So we can change this to the plural. Everyone was on the edge of their seats. Okay. Very good. The next one, the movie kept me 
on the edge of my seat. The movie was so interesting. It kept my attention. It had my full attention. I was so excited. Okay, very good. Next one. This is kind of the opposite of excitement. I thought I would add this in here because it is really practical to use. So dial it back, dial it back. So um, if you uh, have like a, like a central heating system or cooling system at your house, um, sometimes it can be a dial like this. So if you dial it up, it's very, very hot or very, very cold. If you dial it back or dial it down, we can say either dial it back or dial it down, it loses the intensity. It becomes cooler or um, warmer depending on the season, okay? So, uh, oh, Aliawan is here, hello. The announcement of the presidential election kept me on the edge of my seat. Me too. That's a great example. Very good. Okay. Oh, I like this one too. Really quick. I eat, sleep, and breathe traveling. Very good. Okay. I am on the edge of your seat to attend your session. Oh, very good. So when we're talking about our own excitement, I am on the edge of my seat. Okay, nice job. All right, so uh, so dial it back, dial it back. Reduce the intensity of something, okay? So if you're really, really excited, maybe um, you start, your voice goes up in pitch, you get a little louder, you're very, very excited. Okay, okay, we understand you're excited. Dial it back, okay? So if you're in a situation where you shouldn't really show your excitement so much, we should dial it back, okay? So uh, I'll read my examples. I can see that you're excited, but I think you should dial it back a bit, okay? So dial it back just a little bit, okay? Very good. So. I can see that you're excited, but maybe this is not the time or the place to show your excitement. So I think you should dial it back a little bit, calm down, okay? Uh, this one is really important. This is what my, my father taught me <laughs> when I was growing up. When negotiating prices or anything, you should dial back your excitement so that they don't think you are desperate, okay? So here you can see that dial, we have dial it back, but we can um, uh, rearrange it, dial back your excitement, dial back something or dial something back, okay? So um, for example, my father always taught me like when you are house hunting, when you're house hunting, um, for example, you see a house that you really like. I want to buy this house. But if you show your excitement, wow, this is the perfect house for me. I need this house. Oh my gosh. Then um, your uh, the people who you are dealing with, they might overcharge you. They might overcharge you. You love this house. So I will maybe a thousand dollars extra. Okay, that is not good. So we should dial back our excitement. Like, oh, it's nice, but mm, I don't know. Okay, very good. So those were all of them. So I want you to practice writing your own sentences. So we have raring to go. That means you're very excited to go somewhere or start something. Um, we have to eat, sleep, and breathe something. This means that you um, are completely consumed with that thing. You love it so much. You're so interested in it that um, it's part of your life, okay? Fever pitch is the peak of your excitement. 
The highest point of excitement is a fever pitch. On the edge of one's seat is means uh, it means you're very interested in something. You're you're it keeps your attention. You're leaning in. Oh, what's going to happen next? Oh my gosh! And then dial it back or dial back something. Okay, so this means to reduce the intensity. Okay, so in this case, we're talking about excitement. Dial back your excitement. Calm down. Okay, very good. So if you can write some sentences in the comments, let's share some of them. All right. Ah, thank you for the suggestion. Please do a session on congratulations and other occasion wishes and greetings. Very good. Um, let me take a picture of that <laughs> so I can remember it. I'm terrible at remembering things. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay. Ah, my mom taught me too that I have to dial it back in front of a seller. Yes, that is really good advice. Dial it back. Um, act not that interested, not that excited when you're trying to buy something. Oh, hello from Guatemala. Okay. Next Saturday, I will join English speaking class, but I can dial it back for that day. Very good. Yes, so if you're very excited to join the English speaking class, maybe you can dial it back and calm down. <laughs> okay, very good. I hope you enjoy that. Excellent, excellent. Uh, let's see. Oh, hello, hello, welcome. Yeah, that always happens to me when I buy clothes. My mom always tells me to dial it back and don't be at a fever pitch. Very good. Yes, we shouldn't show our excitement that much when we're shopping, okay? Oh. After approval of the sports fixture, I was raring to go. Nice example. Very good. You're excited. Yay, let's do this. Okay. Oh, Brenda, when it's my son's turn to perform on the stage, I was on the edge of my seat. Great example. Yes. So especially if it's your own child, oh, I'm very proud and very excited. So you're on the edge of your seat. Your son is on stage. He has your full attention. Excellent. Okay. Very good. Maybe when bargaining, you should dial it back. So true. Ah, okay. I was in a fever pitch before the announcement. Maybe we would say, um, I was at a fever pitch or my my nerves or my excitement were at a fever pitch before the announcement. Very good. Ah, please do a session on speaking about the past, especially using would, have had, etc. Of course, I think I have some lessons on YouTube. So if you if you search like past on my YouTube page, I think they should come up. Or if you use like would or have, probably they, they will appear. But I will do some more in the future as well. Uh, we are raring to go to the graduation ceremony. Very good, yes, very excited to go. Oh, greetings from Guatemala, hello. Okay. Oh, yes, Ali, I remember your suggestion. I will be working on it very soon. Don't worry. Okay. Uh... Oh, I like this one. I eat, sleep, and breathe football. Very good. That means you really love football. Excellent. I want to eat, sleep, and breathe. Then maybe we don't need two here. I want to eat, sleep, and breathe 
English, or I want to eat, sleep, and breathe studying English. So maybe after this, a noun or a gerund would work. Okay. While the teacher was teaching, I dozed off for a split second. Very good. So doze off means sleeping briefly, a, a short sleep. And a split second is like a very quick time. I like that you use that, very good. I didn't know what she said, so I wish she would not call on me. Oh, very good, yes, I hope she doesn't call on me, don't call on me. And I reached a fever pitch, very good. I like your use of all of the, the recent words that we've learned, excellent. Um, I was on the edge of my seat before the announcement. Very good. So when we use, um, when I put here on the edge of one's seat, this one means like um, we can change this word to the person who is excited. So if you're talking about yourself, I was on the edge of my seat. He was on the edge of his seat, okay? Um, let's see. When I watched the movie, Me Before You, oh, I was on the edge of my seat. Very good, it sounds like an interesting movie. I eat, sleep, and breathe, thinking of new quizzes for my FB group members. Bree, do you like them either? Oh, yes, you are doing very well. I, I love seeing, um, posting the, the quizzes and like the, the comments in the Facebook group. So if you guys don't know, we have a Facebook group for members. So you guys can post quizzes or maybe if you have questions that I'm not able to answer because um, I'm uh, if I'm busy, you can post questions to that group and then other members can help you too. So um, it's free online English lessons. That's the Facebook group. Um, we also have the American English Club um, that is mostly like anything goes in there. Okay, we'll just do a few more, a few more. Ah, so our group name is Free Online English Lessons, I think. <laughs> I think. So, um, yes. Oops. You are welcome. Okay, free online English lessons. I think that's the group name. Ali, correct me if I'm wrong, but you can post questions, quizzes there, um, and then other members can um, help you too, and I also can. Okay. Uh, when my crush said that he loved me, when my crush said that he loved me, or when he told me that he loved me, I was on the edge of my seat and I said, I loved you too, okay? Oh, very good, very good. Romance is in the air, okay. Raring to go, is that a casual expression or more formal? So um, this is more informal, I would say. Um, you can use it in uh, certain different situations. Um, it's not formal, but it's not, that casual either, okay? Very good. Uh, let's see. Oh, you're so welcome. Okay, so let me bring back my face. Ah. <laughs> okay, thank you guys so much for watching today's lesson. I think my keyboard is about to die because I didn't charge. <laughs> I didn't charge it. Um, so if you guys want. I know um, the notifications have not been going out to everyone, so sometimes you'll miss. Ooh, sometimes you will miss a lesson if you don't get a notice notification. So maybe periodically check back to the Facebook page and the YouTube channel and see if there's anything new for you to watch. Um, thank you guys so so much. I'm working on a ton of lessons. Um, it's a it's been a pretty busy month, so I apologize for some inconsistency, but I hope that I will um, have lots of new and interesting lessons for you very, very soon. Okay, very good. 
Ah, really quick. Um, short of and run out of, are they the same? So um, if you have a shortage of something, it means you don't have enough. Run out means you are slowly um, losing something, right? Like my pen is running out of ink or my pen ran out of ink. So run out in the past tense, I ran out of something. That means there is nothing left. But if you're short on something or have a shortage of something, it means you have a little bit, but maybe not enough. Okay, so a little bit different depending on the context. Okay, so thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope that you can um, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel and like the Facebook page, follow me on TikTok. I, I promise I will post um, consistently. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. And I will see you very soon. Bye everyone. Thank you. Hello everyone. How is everybody today? <clears throat> okay. So, um, today is going to be our last lesson of the new book related idioms. So tomorrow will be a review lesson, okay? So I hope everybody will be ready for the review lesson. Hello. Hello, hello. How are you? Um, by the way, before I forget, um, if you're watching this live, you can turn on the little bell notification and then that way you'll be notified when I go live, okay? So you can join in on the live lessons. Hello, Anna. Hello, Alicia. Hello, Volmar. Hello, Omer. Kong, Ali. Hello, Abdo, Patrick, Justin. Hello. I hope everyone is having a great day. Hello, hello. Oh, I have been very, very good. Yes, I am watching the election. It's very, very close, very, very exciting. <laughs> I, oh, it's very, it's very tense in America right now. Hello, hello to Anne. Hello, Imran, hello, Tiana, hi. Hello, De Silvia. hello, May. Hello, hello. Okay, so we're gonna jump into the lesson. Um, just one more, uh, I'll say one more time for those of you just joining. If you hit the bell notification um, somewhere on your screen, um, you, you should be able to get notified when I go live, okay? Yes, I've been watching the news all day. I can't stop. <laughs> it's probably not a good thing. I stayed up very, very late last night, okay? So um, let's see, okay. So we're gonna jump into wow, this coloring. Oh my gosh, what the heck? Oh, I'll bring you closer so maybe it doesn't go all orangey. Okay, if anyone has any suggestions about how to keep the lighting a good, clean color, please let me know. It's driving me crazy. Okay. <laughs> so Anna said, uh, she drove around Lake Geneva today, but she didn't see anyone that looks like me, hopefully tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I think my mom looks exactly like me. So if you see her, say hi. <laughs> okay, hello from Malaysia, hello from Thailand, hello from Nepal. So, oh, Ali asked, what kind of job um, have you been doing in Japan? I'm an English teacher here. I'm an English teacher and I also have another YouTube channel about my life in Japan. Um, it's called Tokyo Bri Bri. So if you want to see my, my daily life or news updates about Japan, if you're interested, I have that channel also. Okay, so um, today we're going to learn two new book related idioms and then tomorrow is going to be a review. Okay, so we have these two. Okay, so these are actually opposites of each other. Oh, it's okay. If you missed um, yesterday's lesson, don't worry. You can always go back and watch it. No problem. Hello from Kurdistan, Bangladesh. Hello from India. Okay, so we're going to learn these two. An open book 
and a closed book. An open book and a closed book. So um, you can see that uh, we have open and closed here. Those words are opposites, right? So an open book is a person or a subject that is easy to understand or easy to know, okay? So if a person is an open book, that means um, that they are, they, they share everything about their lives, right? They share everything, okay? However, someone who is a closed book maybe is very secretive or they don't tell about their own life. And same about subjects. If you're talking about a subject or something, if something is an open book, you know, it's easy to understand. It's easy to, to get to know. A closed book, if something is a closed book, it means it's very difficult to, to get to know, okay? Oh, so somebody was asking to share um, the, the link to my YouTube channels uh, in the chat. So I will um, right at the end of this lesson, I think. Okay. Okay. So I, I'll share the links um, towards the end after I, I finish explaining. Thank you for asking. Okay. So an open book and a closed book. So let's look a little bit closer at these words. I think they're pretty, pretty easy. Um, and then we can answer some exercises. Okay. So here I have it all written out for you. So an open book, a person or thing that is easy to learn about and understand. Okay. Yes, if you say you're an open book, it means, you know, you are very open about things. You, you are very freely talk about things, okay? So remember, it can, we can talk about a person as an open book or a thing as an open book, okay? Let's see. Then a closed book, a closed book, a person thing about which no, or one knows nothing, okay? A person or thing about which one knows nothing. So if I say he is a closed book, that means uh, I don't know anything about him. He doesn't tell me anything. He's a very secretive or he's very private, okay? Ah, okay, okay, so let's see. A piece of cake and an open book, are they the same? Um, no, they're not the same. So actually, piece uh, is the wrong piece here. Uh, the piece that you wrote is like love and peace, but the piece for a piece of cake is like a slice, a piece. Um, a piece of cake means something is very, very easy. Very, very easy, so like no problem. Um, an open book, however, is um, something that is easy to learn about. It's a little bit different. So like, I wouldn't say, for example, um, I wouldn't say that test, that test was a piece of cake. That sentence is okay. But I wouldn't say that test was an open book. It's a little bit, I wouldn't learn about a test, right? So sometimes the use is a little bit different. But you know, they're very, they're kind of similar with, they're easy to learn about and understand, okay? Good, good question, okay? Ah, okay, this one. I don't like an open book test. I'd prefer a closed book test. Yes, so we also use open book and closed book for types of tests, yes? So an open book test means you can look inside your book, right? Closed book test means you have to do from your memory. Okay. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. So um, he's an open book, he's a closed book, okay? Or this subject, this subject is an open book. This subject is a closed book. I guess they're kind of similar to a piece of cake for an open book. If you're talking about a subject, right? A subject, but 
maybe it's a little bit different in how we use a piece of cake and an open book, okay? All right, I hope that was understandable. Hello from Bangladesh, hello from Madagascar. Okay, oh, Tuan is very, very quick, very good. So we'll try to do number one together. Oh, hello, Sandy. I feel like it's been a long time, I don't know. Number one, okay, my life is, <laughs> ask me anything. My life is, <laughs> ask me anything. Yes, very good. Okay, so Tuan, very good. Gerardo, Anna. Okay, very, very good. I see a bunch of correct answers. Yes, Darwin, okay. So the first one I think is easy. My life is an open book. So my life is easy for you to know because I will tell you anything. Ask me anything, I will tell you. My life is an open book, okay? So I wouldn't say my life is a piece of cake. That just means life is easy for me. But my life is an open book. I will share anything with you, okay? Very, very good. My life is an open book. Ask me anything. Can you see that? Okay, let's try number two. I'm afraid that physics will always be <laughs> for me. I'm afraid that physics will always be <laughs> for me. Okay, so maybe here a good hint is I'm afraid. So um, I'm sorry, I think physics will always be maybe challenging, difficult for me. Oh, very good. Anna, Tuan, Davaska, very good. Ali, Santi, Chit, very good. Darwin, May, Patel. Okay, I'm afraid that physics will always be a closed book for me. So I will know nothing about physics. It's kind of too difficult. Um, so it'll always be a closed book. I will never understand physics, okay? Is it understandable? Are you understanding, Mong? So remember that an open book means easily get to know or easily understand. Closed book means you don't know anything about someone or something. Okay, let's try number three. He's a very kind, but also mysterious and somewhat of. <laughs> He's very kind, but also mysterious and somewhat of. Okay, I see uh, Tuan, very good. Uh, let's see. Anna, very good. Do you have a YouTube channel? Yes, I do. My YouTube channel is um, Breeze Practical English, same as my Facebook page, and I also have a Japanese one too, Tokyo Bri Bri. I'll put the links uh, in the in the chat in a little bit. Okay, Devaska, very good. Darwin, very good. Gerardo, Abdo, Thaining, Patel. Okay. He's very kind, but also mysterious and somewhat of a closed book. Very good, everybody. Somewhat of a closed book. So somewhat means a little bit. So he's very kind, but also mysterious. So I don't know much and somewhat of a closed book. Okay, he doesn't. Um, he, he doesn't tell much about himself, right? Ah, mysterious. What does mysterious mean? So mysterious means um, that you don't really know much about someone or something. Mysterious. So like um, if we talk about um, maybe how people, uh, oh, for example, a magician. A magician. So if somebody does magic, 
and they don't tell you their secrets, they're somewhat mysterious, right? Kind of secretive, mysterious, okay? Number four, this is the last one. So here we're talking about contracts. This contract, oh, I can't talk. This contract is anything but something. So let's look at this sentence, okay? This contract is anything but. So it means it's not. Anything but is anything but. So this contract is maybe not. This means not. This contract is not. So contracts are usually um, between two parties, right? Or two people. So um, they have to keep it private, right? So this contract is anything but. Oh, very good. I see Anna. Uh, A1, Devaska, Patel, very good. Oh, sorry, I can't read your name. Patrick, okay, very good, everybody. This contract is anything but an open book, okay? So I don't know if this is a new expression for you, but if we say something is anything but something, means something is not something, okay? So this contract is anything but an open book. So that means it is a closed book. You can't know anything about it. It's very private, private. So I would say synonyms um, for like an open book and a closed book, maybe a synonym would be public, private, okay? Public and private. I think those are good synonyms that describe them well. Okay, does everyone understand? So remember, an open book is a person or thing that is easy to learn about and understand. A closed book is a person or thing about which one knows nothing. Okay, so number one, my life is an open book. Ask me anything. I will tell you. I will, I will answer any questions you have. Number two, I'm afraid that physics will always be a closed book for me. I just don't know anything about it. I don't know. Okay, number three, he's very kind, but also mysterious and somewhat of a closed book, okay? Number four, this contract is anything but an open book. So it is not an open book, it is very private, okay? Very good. Okay, so I saw some questions that I can answer. Um, and if you have any other questions, oh, I'll send the link um, for the YouTube channel. Uh, let's see, I'll do that first before I forget. Okay, I hope that nothing starts, uh, nothing starts playing. Okay. So I'll send the link, okay? Here it is. Ah. Okay, I'm going to look through the questions. So if you have a question, I saw, ah, okay. Where can I use somewhat, somewhat? Where can I use somewhat? So somewhat just means um, a little or a little bit. So uh, it's somewhat cold today. I'm somewhat hungry. Uh, he is somewhat handsome. <laughs> okay, it just means a little bit, a little. So, um, uh, or kind of. So when you want to say a little or kind of, you could say somewhat, okay? Very good. Okay, so. Uh, let's see. Okay, so Devaska asked a very interesting question. Um, is it understandable? 
Have you understood? Do you understand? Are you understanding? Are they the same? So I would say, is it understandable or do you understand are the most common that I would use. Um, have you understood? Have you understood? Mm, maybe it's okay. But the last one, are you understanding? So we would not use, are you understanding? Okay. So um, understand is a stative verb. Okay. A stative verb. So we wouldn't use understanding. Are you understanding? Do you understand? Have you understood? Okay. Good, good question. Uh, may you explain the difference between somehow and somewhat? Yes, actually, I made a video about it already um, on the YouTube channel. So let me go and see. Uh, yes, I found, I can send the link for you guys. So um, if you are interested in that lesson, I'll put it here, I'll put it in the chat. So I just shared the link for the um, somehow, somewhat, somewhere uh, lesson. But basically, somewhat means a little, but somehow means in, in some way, okay? So um, I got lost, but I somehow made it back to my house. I don't really know how I made it back, but somehow I made it back. In some way, I made it back. Um, somewhat, remember, is a little. I'm somewhat hungry. I'm a little hungry. I'm somewhat uh, thirsty, okay? It's somewhat cold. It's somewhat hot. But somehow, I don't really know how, but somehow I did something, okay? Let's see. Um, An open book, did you have the same way to say this? Uh, okay. Ah, what is an open-ended question and a closed-ended question? Um, I don't know if we say closed-ended question that much, but an open-ended question means that there might not be a concrete answer. So maybe there are several answers or we don't really have an answer to the question. So an open-ended question is something that is, um, you know, still, still open for maybe analysis or still open to new ideas or new answers, an open-ended question, okay? Or um, sometimes a book, a book will end um, and the ending will be, open-ended, right? The ending was open-ended. So that means that um, there is no clear ending to the story, right? There's no clear ending to the question, okay? Oh, let's see, animate a good one. Uh, he makes jokes all the time. When you talk to him, you might feel it's easy to understand him, but it's not like that. He is anything but an open book. Very good, very good. It sounds like it's something from a, a story or something. Very interesting. Perfect example. Okay. Uh, let's see, let's see. Ah, okay, this is, okay, I, I should make this clear. So when I eat lunch, can I say, I want somewhat rice? Um, you could say, I somewhat want rice. It means, uh, I don't know what I want. I somewhat want rice. I want rice. I want, I, I kind of, I kind of want rice. But if you want to say the portion size, how much rice, um, you could say, I want a little rice. Okay, so we don't use somewhat for like sizes or portions. Okay, just to make that clear. Okay, so uh, Imran says, I am new here. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Hello, Santi from Indonesia. Okay, so, okay. 
So um, I have to go soon, but if you have some questions, remember that I um, am an open book. I am an open book, so I am always free to answer your questions. Um, sometimes I get a lot of um, notifications, so it's kind of hard to find your questions, but I will try my best to answer them. Um, and if you have any suggestions for other lessons, you can write them in the comments as well. I'm always looking for new ideas. Okay. So, um, oh, really quick, one more review. Um, an open book versus closed book. Uh, is there another way to say these? So I would say an open book, a good synonym for open book is like public, public information or a public person closed book, maybe private, a private person or a private contract. Um, however, uh, that's not always, um, public and private are not always uh, the same, right? So an open book can be about a subject. Um, like if you, if you love, uh, if you are really good at English, English is an open book for me. So it's very easy for me to like understand and um you know get information about english or for example my example was physics will always be a closed book it'll always be kind of difficult okay all right so oh thank you so much thank you anna thank you um uh tuan hello from brazil okay so i have to go now um but let's see uh Maybe I can answer one more. Hello from Sri Lanka. Okay, um, this is gonna be the last one that I answer, how to use the word thrill. So um, thrill could be very exciting, exciting. So the roller coasting was thrilling or what a thrill. We can say it like, um, like that, what a thrill. Um, so very exciting, okay? Maybe you know Michael Jackson's thriller, <laughs> thriller song. Um, it could be exciting or mm, maybe exciting is the best synonym to use, I think. All right. So thank you, everybody. Um, I'm going to put the link to the YouTube channel in case you want to subscribe. I'll do that one more time. Um, so the Facebook page is uh just my name breeze practical english so if you want to uh, like the facebook page you can or if you want to um subscribe to the youtube channel there's the link again to subscribe and thank you so much i post uh lessons all the time every week so uh thank you guys so much for watching thank you for sharing my lesson with your friends i really appreciate it Okay, thank you so much. And I will see you guys tomorrow. We're having a review lesson. Okay, thank you so much. Bye everyone, thank you. Hello students, I think I'm live. How are you? Let me check my mic. Yeah, my mic is working just fine. Okay, so how is everyone today? Um, let's see. Hello, hello, welcome. So, um, yeah, I'm going live a little bit later than usual again. I'm so sorry. This week has been crazy busy. I've been so busy this week and tomorrow I have to go to the hospital again. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to try... I'm gonna try and go live uh, earlier tomorrow since I have a doctor's appointment. Hello, Pancho Rodriguez. Hello, Grammar Miat. Hello, welcome. If you guys haven't yet subscribed to the YouTube channel, I would really, really appreciate it. Um, I would like to get to 20,000 subscribers very, very soon. So I would really appreciate it. Oh, Devashka, hello. Hitate Sint, hello. Oh, hello, welcome, welcome. So um, you can also follow me on Facebook, like my Facebook page, follow me. If you turn on notifications on both YouTube and 
Facebook. Um, you'll be able to know when I go live. I also have a TikTok now, so you can follow me on TikTok. The, um, the link for TikTok will always be in my YouTube description, so you can find me there too. Okay, hello, um, Aminu Ado Rab Rabiu. Hello, hello. Hello from India. Hello from Syria. Hello from Sri Lanka. Welcome everyone. Hello from El Salvador. Very good. Okay, so let's start. Today we are going to have a little test, a little test on indirect questions, okay? So I'm pretty sure we had a lesson on um, making indirect questions um, quite a while ago. So I'm going to see how much you remember. Let's see if we need to brush up our skills a little bit. Let's try, okay. Oh, US, welcome. Cambodia, Sudan, very good. Okay, so we're gonna jump into the lesson. I'm gonna share my screen with you. Okay, there we go. Indirect questions. It's going to be a little bit of a quiz. Very good. So, good job. Hello from Myanmar. Okay, indirect questions. So we're gonna have a few questions and I want you to pick the correct answer, okay? Hello from Palestine, hello, hello. Okay, so question number one. I, I These might be tricky, but let's try. <clears throat> Could you tell me, so this is an indirect question, right? Could you tell me, blah, blah, blah. So we have, could you tell me where the bank is? Could you tell me where is the bank? Could you tell me where does the bank? Hmm. So maybe one of these is obviously wrong, okay? But, uh, one, two of them are a little bit tricky, I think, right? Oh, okay, I see some answers. Brian said A, Baker said B, Aaron said A. Uh, some people are, uh, okay, very good. We've got a bunch of answers. Excellent, you guys are so good. I see lots of correct answers. So the answer to question number one is, could you tell me where the bank is? Very good. So if we were to use a direct question, if we were to use a direct question, it would be, where is the bank? Uh, where is the bank? That is a direct question. But when we make it an indirect question, could you tell me where the bank is. We're gonna put this is after bank. Okay, so it's not the same as a direct question. We're gonna switch it around. This is is gonna go over here at the end. Okay, so is or are, they're gonna go after um, the, in this case, bank. Okay, very good. Let's try question number two. I want to know, how are you? I want to know, how are you? I want to know how you are. Hmm, which one is correct for question number two? A, B, or C? You can write it in the comments. Let's see who can get it right. Oh, very good. Okay, I see some answers. Oh, wonderful. Wow, I see a lot of correct answers. You guys are excellent, excellent. I want to know the answer to question number two is how you are. I want to know how you are. Very good, it will be C. So a direct question again, remember is how are you? So when we make it an indirect question, we're gonna change this position. So R is going to go after you. I want to know how you are. Very good. Oh, everybody got it right. Wonderful. You guys are so good. Okay, question number three. 
can you tell me this medicine? This one is a little tricky. Can you tell me how often do I take this medicine? Can you tell me how often should I take this medicine? Can you tell me how often I should take this medicine? Oh my gosh, how difficult. Okay, is this one difficult? Do you think so? Can you tell me how often do I take this medicine? Can you tell me how often should I take this medicine? Can you tell me how often I should take this medicine? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I see some answers. You guys are doing very well. I see lots of C's and B's, okay? Good, good, good. Oh, Tatet Win is here. Hello. Okay, very good, very good. So the answer to question three is C, how often I should take. Okay, so remember again, if we're going to ask a direct question, uh, how often should I take this medicine? How often should I take this medicine? But can you tell me how often I should take this medicine? Very good. And uh, how often do I take this medicine? Sounds like um, uh, if you say just how often do I take this medicine? Um, you could ask that also, but uh, we wouldn't we wouldn't say that as an indirect question. Very good. Okay, I see most of you got it right. So very very good. Okay, number four. Do you know if has the movie started yet? Do you know if the movie has started yet? Do you know, has the movie started yet? Hmm, question number four, A, B, or C. Go ahead and write your answer in the comments. Let's see your answers. Oh, good morning from Sudan, hello. Okay. Ooh, I see a mix. So I see people saying B, some people saying C. B, V, C, C, okay. Do you know? So we can look at this one. We can look at this one. Do you know if has the movie started is definitely incorrect, right? We wouldn't say if has, okay? Then we have these two, B or C, B or C. Let's take a look which one is correct. The correct answer is B. So do you know if the movie has started yet? Do you know if the movie has started yet? Very good. If we are going to say um, a direct question, a direct question would be, has the movie started yet? That would be a direct question. Has the movie started yet? But Indirect question, we are going to move this has da, 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 after movie. Do you know if the movie has started yet? Very good, very good. Okay, question number five. Let's give it a shot. Question number five. Do you know how did she do it? Do you know how she did it? Do you know she did it how? Okay, question number five. Maybe this one will be a little bit easier, I hope. Question number five, there is an obvious incorrect answer, okay? Let's see, Devon said A. Oh no, Soppy has bad internet connection. Oh no, I hope you can, you can watch it. Okay, I see Nimali said B, Harry said B. Uh, Devashka says B, Dan said A. Okay, do you know, so I, I see a lot of A's or B's. Okay, so do you know how she did it? The correct answer is B. For those of you who said B, very, very good. Okay. Uh, oh, somebody asked about the YouTube channel, yes. You can subscribe to me on YouTube. That would be very, very helpful. 
Okay, so uh, let's see. Why is B correct? Well, if we look at A, how did she do it? How did she do it? That would be a direct question. How did she do it? So when we're making an indirect question, do you know how she did it? So we're going to cut this do, right? We do not need do, okay? Do or does. We don't need it for our indirect question. So do you know how she did it? Okay, very good. So let's go to the next one, question six. Hopefully it's getting easier. Can you tell me where Kelly lives? Can you tell me where does Kelly live? Can you tell me where does Kelly lives? Okay, A, B, C, there is one obviously wrong, wrong one. So let's see, question number six, Brian says B, Devashka said A, very good, Meme said C, okay, Devon said B. Okay, we have lots of A's or B's, a couple C's, very good. So I will say, uh, if you answered with C for question number six, um, can you tell me where does Kelly lives? So we have does, so we would not put an S on live, okay? Uh, where does Kelly lives? This one is totally incorrect, okay? So I would say A or B are the, the choices that are most confusing for people. So let's take a look at the correct answer. Dun. Okay, the correct, the correct answer is A. Can you tell me where Kelly lives? This is the correct answer, okay? So uh, remember that when we are using indirect questions, some, sometimes in the direct question, where does Kelly live? Um, how did she do that? Um, we're going to cut out this does or do, okay? Where does Kelly live? That is a direct question. Where does Kelly live? So when we turn it into an indirect question, can you tell me where Kelly lives? Perfect. Can you tell me where Kelly lives? Can you tell me where Kelly lives? Very good. Okay. So congrats, you finished. Very good. There were six questions in total. How many questions did you get correct? So um, you can tell me in the comments how many you got correct. Okay, so five to six correct. Great job, very, very good. Zero to four correct. Nice try. Please review and come back to try and get a better score. Very good. Okay, so I see, oh, I got them. Very good, very good. Okay, six, very good, excellent, perfect score. Five out of six, very good. Oops, hello, oopsies. Uh, Brian got four to six, very good. So I would recommend maybe reviewing a little bit and then uh, coming back and retaking this a little bit later. Six, perfect, six, perfect. Three, pretty good. Maybe review a little bit and then you can see uh, if your score improves, excellent. Six answers correct, wow, very good. Okay, you guys did excellent. All four, you're at just the cutoff. Okay, so if you got four, you did very well. Um, just go back and brush up, and I'm sure you can get six out of six if you take it one more time. Very good, everybody. Awesome. Okay, so um, I'm going to uh, call it a day for this live stream. Um, I will be back again, hopefully tomorrow. Like I said, I have a doctor's appointment, so I'm not sure when I'll be able to post, but I definitely will. 
Um, let's see. Oh, two months ago, I tested my English level. I was intermediate level. Yesterday, I tried it, but my result is as same as the past. I felt upset. Oh, don't worry. The hardest thing is to um, go from intermediate to advanced. So that is where you'll you'll see it's really hard to um, improve quickly, but you can do it. Don't worry. Um, it really just takes uh, a lot of practice. I know you're a very dedicated student. Um, yeah. Very good. So um, I have to end the lesson now, but I know a lot of you guys want to improve um, your English. A lot of you are intermediate, so you want to go to that advanced level. Um, I will try and do my best to help you. So let me think of something I can do to help you improve, okay? And I will try and uh, do that as soon as I can. But I know um, improving from intermediate to advanced is like, you, you feel like it's a very slow improvement. You feel like you're not making progress, but I'm sure you're actually making progress. You just have to challenge yourself a little bit more, but you can do it. Okay, I believe in you guys. Okay, so um, by the way, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you could please subscribe to the YouTube channel, please uh, like me on Facebook, share this video with your friends. It really, really helps. Okay. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you um, uh, in a little bit later today on YouTube. There will be another new lesson. Okay. So thank you guys so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye. Oh, hello. 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 How is everybody doing? Um, I hope you can hear me all right. Ooh, let me just move some things around. Okay, so um, today uh, we are going to learn um, some new words and they all have to do with spending money, spending money, okay? So we're going to be talking about money today. And um, if you didn't know, um, from today, all of December, I'm going to be posting new lessons every single day here on the YouTube channel, okay? So please subscribe and um, please turn on your notifications. So sometimes I'll be going live and sometimes I'll be posting um, just regular videos. So um, yeah, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when those lessons are out. Okay, so yes, new lessons every single day, but today we're going to be talking specifically about money and shopping, okay? So I have three <clears throat> new words or expressions for you. So the first one, the first word is splurge splurge and um if you don't uh watch the facebook uh facebook live streams um the word splurge came up just yesterday uh in our our lesson so splurge splurge what does it mean to splurge so if you watched that lesson you might already know what it means so Splurge means to spend money um, kind of freely, like on unnecessary things, right? So for example, um, uh, let's see, uh, I usually save my money, but sometimes I splurge on a good pair of shoes. I splurge on a good pair of shoes. That means I kind of spend freely. Um, I don't care about the cost that much. I just spend the money to get something nice. Okay, to splurge, to splurge. Um, it can also be a noun. So for example, 
um, Christmas, Christmas in the US is a time when people spend a lot of money. So we could say a Christmas splurge, like a something splurge. Um, but a lot of the times we use it as a verb, like to splurge on a fancy dinner, to splurge on some new clothes, okay? So is there anything that you splurge on? What do you splurge on? Um, please write it in the comments. So it could either be um, you splurge on um, food, on clothing, or on like study materials. Do you splurge on um, like books? It could be anything, okay? Splurge, to splurge, okay? The next one we have is shop around, shop around. So what does it mean to shop around, to shop around? So if you shop around, you are going to um, different stores, could be physically or online, and you are comparing prices, okay? So um, I recently bought a new refrigerator, but uh, before I decided which refrigerator I was going to buy, I went to many stores, I did research online, and I found um, the best refrigerator at the best price. So um, the best quality at the cheapest price. So I shopped around before buying my refrigerator. Okay, does that make sense? So to shop around means um, to go and find the best price for an item, okay? And then we have run up, run up. So run up is a phrasal verb with many different meanings and today we're just gonna focus on one meaning, okay? We're gonna focus on the meaning um, when it comes to debt or bills, okay? So when we say run up, it means um, you do things and it creates, uh, um, it adds to your uh, debt or to your bill, okay? Does that make sense? So it probably doesn't make sense. Let me give you a better explanation. Um, okay, so let's say that I turned on all of the lights in my house. I turned on all of the lights and I left them on for a week. So by doing that action of turning on all of my lights and keeping them on for a week, I would probably run up a, a, an expensive um, electricity bill, okay? I would run up my electricity bill. So putting the lights on adds up, boom, 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 boom. So it runs up a high bill, okay? Runs up an expensive bill. So we usually use run up when talking about debt or when talking about bills. So run up um, a student loan debt run up my phone bill, okay? So you're adding things to your debt that makes it higher and higher and higher, okay? So you're gonna have something expensive in the end. So I hope um, you do things um, to not run up your debt, not to run up your bills, okay? So for example, um, uh, I always turn off my lights during the day as to not run up an expensive electric bill, okay? Very good, so let's look at the definitions. It's probably easier than my explanation. Okay, let's take a look, okay? So, does everyone see that all right? Okay, splurge, splurge spending money freely and maybe like excessively and um, you don't really you don't really care about the price it's okay to spend a little bit more okay so splurge on coffee maybe you bought expensive coffee splurge on english lessons maybe you think 
um, studying English in class is very important. So you spend a little bit more on taking um, some good English lessons, okay? Shop around, shop around, to shop around, okay? So to shop around means to look for the most suitable item or service, oops, there it is, service, for the lowest price, for the lowest price. So you go around to many shops and try to find um, the best item or best service for the best price, the lowest price, okay? This is a very smart way to not to run up a shopping bill, okay? Not run up your credit card. So run up, what does run up mean? Um, you do things that cause you to owe a large amount of money. So your actions run up a large bill or you, uh, uh, you get a large debt, okay? So maybe if, uh, if you don't shop around, you might end up running up a huge credit card bill, okay? So you use your credit card here, you buy some clothes here, you buy some shoes here, you tend to splurge, you don't shop around, just charging your credit card, you will eventually run up a large bill, okay? I hope that is understandable. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments, okay? So uh, today is very simple. We're just gonna have a quick, quick lesson. So we have just three. We're gonna use each one of these one time, okay? So let's see, number one. He made too many international calls and mm -hmm, a large phone bill. Hmm, what do you think is the correct answer here? He made too many international calls. So if you make many international calls, um, you might make your phone bill rather large, right? So it is quite expensive to uh, call internationally if you don't use um, specific services, right? So he made too many international calls and a large phone bill. What do you think? Okay, I'll give you a second and then I'm gonna write down the answer. Okay. The correct answer is, da, 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 da. and we're gonna put it in the correct tense also. Remember, we want the correct tenses, okay? So, da, 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 da. the correct words, the correct answer, I should say, is ran up. He made too many international calls and ran up a large phone bill. He ran up a large phone bill. Very good. Okay. How about number two? Let's take a look at number two. Okay. Uh, let's see. Before making a big purchase, before making a big purchase, it is important to mm -hmm, first. So what are we going to do first before we make a big purchase? So if you don't know, to purchase something means to buy something. So we can say make a purchase, okay? Before making a big purchase, that means before buying something very expensive. A big purchase is something expensive. So uh, like a refrigerator or a house, or a new computer, okay? Does everybody have the answer? Okay, before making a big purchase, it is important to, we're gonna say, shop around. Shop around. Okay, first. So, before making a big purchase, before spending a lot of money, it is important to shop around first. Okay, so you're gonna go, you're gonna do your research, 
You're going to look at different prices at different stores. You're going to look at different products and you're going to find the best product for you at the lowest cost. Shop around. Very good. Very good. Okay. Now this is the last one and it should be obvious because we have just one word left. Okay. So number three, I love cooking. Okay. I love cooking at home, but sometimes I like to on a fancy dinner at a nice restaurant. This says restaurant. It's very small. I love cooking at home, but sometimes I like to on a fancy dinner at a nice restaurant. Okay. Oops, there was a light blocking uh, the vocabulary words. Okay, so does everybody know the answer? You should. Okay, so the correct answer is da, 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 splurge, splurge, splurge. It sounds like a very funny word, right? Splurge. It doesn't sound <laughs> like a very beautiful word. <laughs> okay. I love cooking at home, but sometimes I like to splurge on a fancy dinner at a nice restaurant. Okay, so sometimes I like to spend a little bit more money um, and go out for a nice dinner. Okay, so I'm going to read this one more time, so please listen. And if you can, um, repeat out loud. Um, remember that speaking is the best way to improve and the best way to remember vocabulary. We need to use them in order to, to remember them, okay? So number one, listen, and then try to repeat if you can. Number one, okay? He made too many international calls and ran up a large phone bill. Okay, I'm going to say it one more time a little bit quickly, all right? He made too many international calls and ran up a large phone bill. Okay, were you able to repeat it out loud? If not, that is okay. Um, just come back to this lesson and, and try to repeat, okay? Very good. Let's go on to number two, okay? I'll read it a little bit slowly and then I'll read it quickly, okay? Before making a big purchase, it is important to shop around first. Okay, I'm gonna say it a little bit quickly now. Before making a big purchase, it is important to shop around first. Okay, very good. All right, let's try number three, okay? I love cooking at home, but sometimes I like to splurge on a fancy dinner at a nice restaurant. Okay, so I'm gonna say it a little bit quickly, try to listen, try to repeat, okay? I love cooking at home, but sometimes I like to splurge on a fancy dinner at a nice restaurant. Okay, very good. I hope you are able to at least attempt, at least try to repeat, okay? So um, they are kind of long sentences. So if you can't um, repeat very naturally, maybe try and read them out loud a few times, get used to saying these words, get used to saying these sentences, and then come back and try to repeat after me. Okay, everyone did a very, very good job. Um, that is awesome. So I will be back for a new lesson um, every day this month. So please subscribe and please turn on notifications. Um, and if you could share this video with um, your friends who are also studying English and that way we can grow our community. Okay, thank you everyone so much for watching and um, I hope you enjoy uh, all of the lessons this month. It's very exciting and 
it is quite a challenge for me <laughs> to um, upload new lessons every day. So um, I hope that you enjoy them. Okay, so uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you tomorrow for another lesson. Thank you so much. Bye everyone, thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome back to Bree's Practical English. I'm Bree and today I'm going to teach you the difference between been and being. But first, if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. If you subscribe and turn on notifications, you will know when the newest lesson is uploaded. Remember everyone, stay to the end of this video to get your homework. You can write the answers to your homework in the comments below. Okay, let's start the lesson. I was asked on my Facebook page by a student, what is the difference between been and being? They're very similar, aren't they? By the way, if you have a question or would like me to make a video on a certain topic, you can comment it down below or you can join my Facebook page and ask a question there. I read all of my comments, so I'll be sure to see yours. Okay, so a student asked me on Facebook, what is the difference between being and been? So let's look at what being and been are. What are they? Well, they are both participles. They are both participles of to be. Let's look at being first. Being is the present participle of to be. This means we can use being with any form of be. So this includes am, is, was, and were. When we use being, we use it to mean that something is continuing or ongoing, not finished yet. I'll give you some examples. The child is being bullied. The child is being bullied. This means that the action of bullying is continuing. It's ongoing. It's still happening. The child is being bullied. Okay, let's look at another example. She is being nosy. She is being nosy. It means that she is continuing to be nosy. She is maybe asking people about their private business. She is being nosy right now, still continuing to be nosy. Okay? Being can also be used as a gerund. If you don't know what a gerund is, it's when a verb acts like a noun. I'll give you an example. He loves being a police officer. He loves being a police officer. So being as a gerund means existing, existing as something. It's a little bit strange to say he loves existing as a police officer, but that is what it means. Instead of saying existing, we say being. He loves being a police officer. Another example, stop being so clumsy. Stop being so clumsy. In this case, stop existing as a clumsy person. Stop existing as a clumsy person. So again, saying existing here is a little bit strange. 
Stop being so clumsy. This is more natural. Do you think you have being mastered now? It is a present participle of to be. It is used with all forms of be. Am, is, was, were. Okay? It means something is continuing, ongoing, not yet finished. Or it can mean existing, as in a gerund. He loves being a police officer. Now let's look at been. Like I said before, been is a participle of to be, but it is a past participle of to be. So when we use been, we want to talk about something that's already finished, already finished, done. With been, we use it with all forms of have. This includes has, had, will have, and having. Let me give you an example. Let's look at our last two examples, but change them to been. The child has been bullied. The child has been bullied. The bullying has stopped. It's finished. But the child has been bullied in the past. The child has this experience. She has been nosy. She has been nosy. She has been nosy before. The main difference between been and being is what they follow. Been always follows a form of have. I have been to Paris. She has been to Paris. However, being never follows have. We can't say I have being to Paris. This is incorrect. So if you remember these two key points, you'll be able to remember the difference between been and being a lot more easily. Okay, I'm going to give you a short quiz. I'll ask a question and you can decide if you should use been or being. Okay, let's try. The first question is, he is hospitalized. He is hospitalized. Should we say he is being hospitalized or he is been hospitalized? Okay, do you have your answer? The correct answer is being. Because we are using is, not has, he is being hospitalized. Now he is being hospitalized. Let's try another one. I have working all day. I have working all day. Do you use being or been? Okay, the correct answer is been. I have been working all day. Remember, been always follows have. Being can never follow have. I'll give you one more question. He loves single. He loves single. What do you think? Being or been? All right. The correct answer is being. He loves being single. Being here is a gerund. Remember, being can also be used as a gerund. 
He loves existing as a single person. He loves being single. How did you do on that short quiz? I hope you got all of the answers right. If you didn't, don't worry. I have some homework questions for you. You can answer them in the comments down below and I'll check them for you. The answers to the homework questions will be in the description box. I hope this video was helpful and I hope you now know the difference between been and being. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and if you'd like, you can like my Facebook page where I can answer some more of your questions. I'll see you in our next lesson. Bye! Hello students! Oh my gosh, it's been a little bit. Sorry to keep you waiting. Sorry to not have um, a new live lesson in a, in, a, in a few days. So sorry about that. I've been really, really busy recently. So I hope you can understand, but I'm back. I'm ready to have some um, good lessons with you guys. Okay, so um, thank you so much for joining today's lesson. I'm really excited to have you here. And we're gonna be talking about emotions and feelings today, emotions and feelings. Hello, Jalil from Philippines, so nice to see you. Oh my gosh. Oh, Gerardo, hello, MD, Hisar, uh, Jahangir, hello, Ali Ahmed, hello. How, are, how is everybody? Hello, Jose. Hello, Kong. Hello, Rab, Rabu, Umar. Hello, hello. Oh, hello from Mexico. Hi, hello from Madagascar, Bangladesh. Okay. Hello, Haku, nice to have you. Hello from East Africa. Hello, Sum Sumlut, Sumlut. Sorry if I can't pronounce your name, I'm so sorry. Hello from Myanmar, hello, hello. Okay, so everyone, I am so happy to see you all here today. Um, thank you for joining me. Hello, David from China, hello from Egypt. Um, okay, so like I was saying, um, I was a little bit busy. Um, uh, the last few days, so I wasn't able to do any new lessons, but I'm back. So we're going to have a lesson today. So thank you so much for joining. Hello, Hirang. Hello, hello. Okay, so um, let's see. I have um, three new words that I want to teach you, and these words are going to help you um, describe your feelings, describe your emotions, okay? Very nice. So I'm going to show you, I have, um, I'm not going to use the whiteboard today. I'm going to use um, my share screen. So, okay. Let me know if you can see my screen, okay? Can you read this? Is it big enough for you? Is it big enough? Please let me know in the chat if it's big enough for you. Hello. Hello from Sudan. Hello from Libya. Hello from Thailand. Okay, so I think um, you guys can see the screen. So it says feelings and emotions here. Um, hold on one second. Let me get this so I can see both of my screens at the same time. Okay, so feelings and emotions. So I think um, some of these words are going to be new for you. Okay, so let's go through them together. 
So the first word, I have the meaning and an example right away for you. The first word is pumped, pumped. Have you guys heard this word before? I'm pumped. Are you pumped? Are you pumped for today's lesson? So, oh, I'm glad you can see it. Thank you. Oh, okay, good. So pumped, pumped means filled with energetic excitement and enthusiasm. Okay, we are really, really excited. Okay, so um, if you can think of a balloon, if you have a balloon, like a balloon, um, you pump, you pump a balloon full of air. But for, um, for humans, for people, we are pumped, we are filled with excitement, like we could pop like a balloon. We are pumped, okay? So this is a casual word. This is um, an informal word, but you will hear a lot of native speakers talking like this, okay? Ah, I see. Yeah, you've heard it in a song. Yeah, I'm not sure of that song, but yeah, um, pumped just means very, very excited, excited. Okay, so the example we have here is, I'm pumped for the tennis match. I'm pumped for the tennis match. So this means I am so, so excited for the tennis match, okay? So I'm pumped, I'm excited. All right, does everyone understand pumped? Okay. Hello, Jalil. Hello. Hello, Matana. Okay, so we are learning pumped, pumped, filled with excitement. Okay, let's look at the next word. So I have three words for you today. This is the first one. The next one is stumped. Stumped. Have you heard this word before? I'm stumped. He's stumped. You're stumped. We're all stumped. Okay. So the meaning of stumped is confused or puzzled. So oh, I don't understand. I'm so confused. Um, usually we use stumped when we're trying to think of the answer to something. Oh, I can't figure out this question. I'm stumped. Okay. Hello from Jordan. Oh, very good. I am pumped. I am pumped for the new job. Awesome. I'm pumped for my new job. I hope you're pumped. Very good. Okay. So we have an example here. Even the teachers were stumped by the difficult math problem. Even the teachers were stumped by the difficult math problem, okay? So stumped means confused, puzzled. So even the teachers who should, should know the, the answers to most of the questions were confused, they were puzzled, they were stumped. They were stumped by the difficult math problem, okay? Very good. Let's go to the last word that we're learning today. The last one is irk. Now this doesn't even look like English, right? <laughs> it's a very strange word, irk, I-R-K, only three letters, irk. So what does irk mean? What does irk mean? Irk means to irritate or annoy, irritate or annoy. So we use it in the same way. Something annoys me. Something irks me. Okay. So let's see. Uh, the example here is it irks me when people eat with their mouths open. It irks me when people eat with their mouths open. Okay. So uh, that means that it annoys me when people eat with their mouths open. Can you think of something that irks you, that annoys you, that irritates you? 
<laughs> oh, this is this is a good example. I'm stumped by the explanation today. You're stumped, but I hope I hope it's understandable. Ah, it's like an Arabic word. Interesting. Do you have a similar word or it looks like a similar word? Okay. Very, very good. So irk. Irk means irritate or annoy. It irks me when people eat with their mouths open. Okay. So do you guys remember everything? We have irk, stumped, and pumped. Pumped means excited. I'm so, so pumped. I'm so, so excited. Stumped means I'm so confused. I, I don't understand. And irk means irritate or annoy, okay? So let's try to do, to do some questions and you can see how they're used in sentences a little bit more, okay? So we have five sentences, five questions. Um, let's try to do number one together, okay? So number one, it, hmm, me, when I find spelling errors, hmm, what do you think? Oh, this is a good, good, good example. I'm, I'm stumped to go on vacation. Maybe you would be pumped to go on vacation. You'd be excited. I am pumped for this Spanish exam. Oh, interesting. So you're very excited for the test. Okay. Very good. So number one. It, mm, me, when I find spelling errors. Who can answer number one? Ooh, Ariana, very good. Oh, Devaska's in the chat, hello. Uh, Josette, Suhana, very good. Okay, Ariana Hitet, very good. Okay, so the answer to number one, it, irks me when I find spelling errors. So it really annoys me. It kind of frustrates me. It irks me when I find spelling errors. I don't like it, okay? So this person doesn't like when they find spelling errors. It annoys them, it irritates them, it irks them, okay? Let's try number two. He was hmm, to find out he'd passed the test. Oh, okay. So this is a positive word. So which one is positive? He was so happy, so excited to find out he'd passed the test. Who can get number two? Okay. Oh, Pio, very good. Uh, very nice. Okay. Oh, I see a lot of them. Okay. MD, good job. Suhana. Okay, Jose, very good, very good. Oh, I see a lot of correct answers. Tet, Devaska, very good. Okay. He was pumped. He was pumped to find out he'd passed the test. He was very excited. Okay, let's try number three. I don't know the answer. I'm something. So which one means, oh, I don't understand. I'm confused. I don't know the answer. I'm something, okay? Ah, uh, thank you for being pumped for my lesson. <laughs> okay. Oh, number three, I saw, um, saw you, got it, very good. Okay, Ariana, good job. So how we have, very good. Oh, awesome, Jose, Janba, okay, awesome. So I don't know the answer, I'm, oops, I'm stumped, I'm stumped. I, I don't understand, I'm not sure, I'm confused. Okay, I don't know the answer, I'm stumped. Good job, everybody. Okay, we only have two more. So number four, there are two answers here, okay? So it, hmm, him, when he gets, hmm, 
on easy questions. It hm him when he gets hm on easy questions. Let's see who can get it. Ooh, very good. Oh, Joshua, very good. Ricardo, awesome. Okay, okay, very good. Sayu, good job. Okay, I see a lot of good answers. Wonderful. So we'll do the first one. So it irks him. So it frustrates him. It annoys him. Okay, so something annoys him. It irks him when he gets hmm on easy questions. Okay, so the correct answer is stumped. Okay, so it irks him when he gets stumped on easy questions. This means that it frustrates him when he gets an easy question that confuses him. Maybe he, he's thinking too much or he gets confused, even though it's an easy question, right? Okay. And the last one, the very, very last one, I'm so mm for my next English class. I'm so mm for my next English class. Okay. What do you think the answer to number five is? Oh, very good, Nandar, very good. George, very good, awesome. Ariana, good job. I'm so pumped for my next English class. Okay, so I'll read them one more time. Number one, it irks me when I find spelling errors. So it frustrates me, okay? Number two, he was pumped to find out he'd passed the test. He was very, very excited. Number three, I don't know the answer. I'm stumped. I'm very confused. Number four, it irks him when he gets stumped on easy questions. So it annoys him when he gets confused on easy questions, even though they're easy, right? And the last one, I'm so pumped for my next English class. I'm so excited. Okay, very, very good. So um, let's see. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Can you all see me now? <laughs> hello, hello. Okay. So um, let me make my screen a little bit bigger. Okay. So uh, if you want to make your own examples, I can quickly um, uh, correct them for you, okay? Let's see. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, so does anyone have any uh, question or you wanna make a sentence? Let's see. Ah, okay. Can you give a sentence example for the word irk? in past tense, very good. So yeah, you can just um, add ed for irk. You can say, um, I was irked, I was irked by the way he talked. For example, I was irked by the way he talked. Um, irked just means annoyed. So we use it in the same way. I was annoyed, he annoyed me. Um, I was irked, he irked me, that irked me, okay? You can just add ed. Can you explain more about irk? Good question, okay. So irk just means like annoy, irritate, frustrate. Um, so when something bothers you, when something bothers you, it irks you, it irks you, okay? So, um, for example, uh, uh, it irks me when I get a question wrong, or um, it irked me how he talked about someone, okay? It annoyed me. It, I didn't like it. Uh, oh, let's see. Um, Devaska, what is the difference between I'm stumped and I stumped? So this is a good question. So when you say I'm stumped, it means that you do
don't know something, you're confused. But if you say, I stumped, you, the next word should be someone. I stumped someone on a question, okay? So if, if I gave you a quiz and you were my student, um, but you didn't know the answer, I could say, I stumped Devaska on the quiz. I confused you, okay? But I'm stumped means that I am confused. Okay. Oh, this is a good one, Miguel. I'm pumped when I'm going to speak with a native English speaker. Yes, you can say, I'm pumped. I'm pumped to speak with a native English speaker. Very good. Okay. Let's see. Ah, okay, stumped, yeah. Can you explain a bit of stumped? So stumped means confused confused, or if you know the word puzzled. So maybe you have a question or a problem and you're trying to figure it out, but you can't get an answer. That means you are stumped. Oh, I can't figure it out. I can't understand something. Okay, I'm stumped. Okay, very, very good. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, Jose, I am pumped that you are my new teacher. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm so glad. Okay, uh, let's see. Ooh, I am pumped when the exam is near. Ah, oh, are you a very good student? Do you like exams? For me, I get very nervous when the exam is near. When I have an exam coming up, I get very nervous, but you get pumped. That's pretty good. Okay. Very, very good. Oh yeah, this is a good one. Can uh, I can say tricky too. Yeah, if, if a question, so a question can be tricky. Um, and you can be stumped by a tricky question. Yes, the question is tricky. Your feeling is that you are stumped. Okay, very, very good. Okay, so um, thank you guys for watching this lesson. We've been going for 20 minutes already. Wow. Okay, so um, I'm going to do another lesson tomorrow. Um, Facebook and probably YouTube. So both. Okay. So I will see you guys for tomorrow's lesson. And of course you can leave your, um, comments, uh, in, uh, the chat and I will try and answer everyone's questions. Um, if I can, okay. It just depends on my time. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you tomorrow. Okay, I hope you're pumped for tomorrow's lesson. I hope I didn't stump you with uh, today's words and uh, I hope I didn't irk any of you. <laughs> okay, thank you so much and see you guys next time. Hi guys, welcome back to another lesson. Again, thank you for joining me today. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and I hope that you are ready for a new lesson. So, <clears throat> we can just jump into it. Um, I'm going to be teaching you another idiom today. So, are you ready? Dun, da, da, da. Under the weather, under the weather. Okay, let's say it together one time. Ready? Under the weather. Under the weather. Okay, have you heard under the weather before? What do you think? Do you know the meaning of under the weather? So this one it might be tricky if you've never heard of it before. You might be thinking, what does that mean? Like, is it a rainy day or something under the weather? But actually, this idiom has a very, very simple meaning, okay? This means I'm sick 
or I don't feel well. I, I'm not like my usual self. I'm under the weather, under the weather. So um, I have some examples ready for you. Just put that there. Okay, get my big board. Okay. <clears throat> so here we have, I'll try to move over here a little bit. Okay. So the meaning is very simple. Sick. I'm sick. I'm under the weather. Okay, and um, we don't really use this idiom by itself. I know some of the ones that I've taught you so far, you can just um, say them as they are, but this one you need to put it into a sentence usually. Okay, <clears throat> so we use it the same way as sick, and you'll notice that um, we often use the words like feel, like I feel under the weather, I feel sick. Okay, so that is a good one to keep in mind. So we'll read the first one. Let me get my marker. Okay, sorry if you can't read my handwriting. Um, Jenny is feeling a bit under the weather, so she isn't coming. So maybe there is an event. However, Jenny, maybe Jenny was supposed to go to the event. But Jenny is feeling a bit, so a bit means a little. She's feeling a bit under the weather, so she isn't coming. She's feeling a little bit sick, so she isn't coming. Okay, easy, right? So the next one, number two. I was feeling under the weather, so I stayed home from work. I was feeling under the weather, so I stayed home from work. It was feeling under the weather. So here again, we're using the word feeling. I was feeling under the weather. Okay, let's look at the very last one. He must have been pretty under the weather to have to cancel, uh, to have canceled our plan. Sorry, for me, the, it's backwards, so it's kind of hard to read. Okay, let's read that one one more time. He must have been pretty under the weather to have canceled our plan. So here I didn't use the word feeling, but he must have been pretty under the weather. So very not feeling good, very sick, okay? Let's go through these one more time. I'll read them at a natural speed, so try and catch them, okay? Jenny is feeling a bit under the weather, so she isn't coming. I was feeling under the weather, so I stayed home from work. He must have been pretty under the weather to have canceled our plan. Okay, do you understand how to use under the weather now? It's very simple, I think. I think idioms um, in English are, are very useful. Instead of saying a big whole sentence, you can just, you know, say it in one phrase, right? So let's go over pronunciation one more time because I know this is tricky. I think this one is fairly easy. Under the weather, under the weather, under the weather. I know for um, some of my students, the TH can be a difficult sound and um, W is a difficult sound for some people. Um, if you can leave in the comments, what, what in English is difficult for you to pronounce? Is there anything? Maybe it's the accent or just a letter. Okay. So, under the weather. Under the weather. I was feeling under the weather. Sorry, I can't come. I'm under the weather. Okay. It's just used the same way as we would use the word sick. Okay, under the weather. Very good. Thank you guys for joining this lesson. I really appreciate it. Um, don't forget uh, to go over and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you wanna see longer videos. <clears throat> and I'll be putting out, um, I think the next one I have going out is about slang. I don't know if it's up already, 
But if it's not, it'll be up very soon. Okay, so thank you again. And um, leave a comment. Uh, let me know what is difficult for you to pronounce in English. And um, if there's any other idioms you want me to talk about, you can let me know. Or if you want to learn grammar, you can just write it in the comments, okay? And I will read all of your comments, so don't worry. Thank you guys so much. Okay, I will see you in the next lesson. Bye. Hello, everyone. I hope you're all having a great day. So we're going to be doing an advanced reading comprehension lesson today on finance. Um, but before we get into today's lesson, if you haven't yet and you would like to, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. That helps me out so much. You can also like me on Facebook. You can turn on notifications both on YouTube and Facebook, and hopefully you should get a notification when I go live and when I post videos and things like that. Um, you can also like me on TikTok. Follow me on TikTok. Um, yeah. All right. Hello, Ali. Hello, Moez. Hello, Oliver. Hello, Brenda. Hello, Nadim. Hello, Nivors, Mohammed. Hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. Chriso, hello. Okay. So, oh, hello from Baghdad. Wow. Hi. So, uh, let me just quickly do this. Okay. So, um, we are going to be doing an advanced reading comprehension lesson on finance. So I don't know how relevant it is for um, your work or anything, but I think the words that we can learn in this article are going to be helpful. Okay, very good. So let's look at the article, okay? This is from um, CNN World News, um, and this is about JP Morgan. So, <clears throat> excuse me, do you guys know what JP Morgan is? Hello, hello. So JP Morgan is um, a very, very large bank, JP Morgan, okay? It's one of the, the biggest banks, um, I think probably in the world. Um, yes. Okay, so uh, the title says, hold on, let me bring it up really quick. Okay, the title says, First year analysts at JP Morgan will now make $100,000. Oh my gosh. So this is the title. This is the title of the article on CNN. So first year analysts. So an analyst is a job and first year analyst means it is their first year. Okay. So probably they are fresh out of college, fresh out of university. It's their first year working. And at JP Morgan, they will now make $100,000. So we can also refer to this as a six-figure salary, a six-figure salary. So six figures means six numbers. So three zeros, two zeros, and a one, right? So total, this is six numbers. So they will make a six-figure salary. Wow. Can you imagine that? That is crazy, right? Very high salary. Oh, Ted Tetwin, hello. Welcome. Okay. So first year analyst at JP Morgan will now make $100,000. All right. Let's look at the article. Okay, so inflation has arrived on Wall Street and it's bringing smiles to the faces of junior bankers in the form of much fatter paychecks. JP Morgan Chase, and in parentheses JPM, is raising the salary of first year analysts to $100,000, up from $85,000, a person familiar with the matter told CNN Business. 
The pay hike, which takes effect July 1st, means some millennials and G Gen Zers will be making six figure salaries fresh out of college. The hikes will make JP Morgan the most lucrative big bank for junior, junior analysts, a shrewd move amid an ongoing war for talent between Wall Street and the Silicon Valley, where many tech firms offer greater flexibility for remote work. Okay, so I've just read um, the sentence, but if you could tell me how much you could understand, let's see how much you can understand. What percentage, 85%, 100%? Let's look at the vocabulary. Okay, so first we have inflation. Inflation. Inflation means a general increase in prices. Okay, here is an example sentence. Higher inflation will likely lead to a rise in the cost of raw materials. Okay, so inflation means that the price will increase, okay? Very good. Oh, somebody asked, what's the difference between figure out and find out? I have a lesson on that on YouTube, so I hope you check it out, okay? Um, oh, here's a good question. Could you pronounce analysts again? So one person is an analyst. One person is an analyst. Multiple people are analysts, okay? Very good. So that is the meaning of inflation, okay? The next one, Wall Street. Does everyone know what Wall Street is? So <clears throat> Wall Street is a street located in the lower Manhattan section of New York City. Wall Street is used as an umbrella term to describe the financial markets and the companies that trade publicly on exchanges throughout the US. Long, long, long explanation, but Wall Street is a street in New York um, where lots of um, financial markets are, uh, are, okay? So lots of companies that trade um, publicly are on this street, okay? So an example here is trading on Wall Street has halted. Trading on Wall Street has stopped, okay? Stock market, yes, very good. Having to do with trading and stocks. Um, Ted Tetwin said transfer money. So transferring money you can do like um, between individual people, but um, Wall Street is specifically like having to do with the stock market. So like um, uh, where big businesses can make money, right? Okay. Next one, fat paycheck, fat paycheck. So a fat paycheck is an informal way to refer to a large amount of income. So sometimes you'll hear um, fat paycheck, fat wallet, um, fat bank account. So fat means like very wide, right? Like people can be fat or something. But if you have fat paycheck, fat, fat bank account, fat um, salary, fat something, this means you have a lot of it. It's very informal, um, but it means you have a lot of money, okay? So I received a fat paycheck after a day of hard work. Ah, okay. This is good. What does umbrella term mean? All right, let me go back really quick. Let me go back. So uh, this says Wall Street is used as an umbrella term to describe the financial markets and companies that trade publicly. So. An umbrella term is, um, so if you can imagine an umbrella, right? So you can put a few things under the umbrella. So Wall Street is the general term, 
umbrella term to describe financial markets and companies. Okay, so it doesn't refer to just one company or one market. It means all of them. Okay, it's a general term. Good question. All right. So we talked about fat paycheck, a lot of money. Do you guys get a fat paycheck from your work? I hope so. Okay, the next one is a pay hike. Pay hike. So um, everyone knows what pay means you get money. Hike, um, if you can think of hiking, if you go up a mountain, um, a hike means going up, going up. So uh, a substantial, so a very big increase in wages. Wages is another word for salary. Okay, so a pay hike is a big increase in your salary. Okay, so the example is the company approved a pay hike for their employees. So the company improved, uh, approved a um, bigger salary for their employees. Okay, very good. So next one. Ah, okay, this one. So here we have millennials. Millennials. Do you guys know what a millennial is? So a millennial is um, anyone who was born between around 1981 to 1996. So let me know if you are a millennial. I am a millennial. <laughs> I'm a millennial. Um, my brothers and sisters are millennials. Um, very good. But I think uh, the previous generation was the baby boomer generation, but I think they also have another word for it, baby boomers. I was born in 1993. Okay, so you're also a millennial like me, Mickey. <laughs> okay, so example, how do millennials compare to previous generations? <laughs> you ain't a millennial, you were born in 1993. <laughs> Oh, I'm a baby born in 2001. Oh, Tete win. Okay. So, um, ah, okay. We have a few different generations here. So, uh, millennials maybe were the first generation to, um, well, we kind of, some of us grew up with limited technology. Like we had, um, we had TVs, we had radios. And then as we got older, we had like cell phones, the internet. We were kind of the first internet generation, right? Millennials. Okay. The next one is Gen Z. So Tet Tetwin is a Gen Z, a Gen, or we sometimes say a Gen Zer, a Gen Zer. Okay. Oh, Daniel is a millennial too. Okay. So Gen Z is people who were born between the mid 1990s and the early 2010s. Okay, so these are just names of generations. They're kind of arbitrary, meaning there's no real rule or there's nothing really like significant. They just pick some time and they call this a, a generation, right? So Gen Z is from mid mid or late 1990s and the early 2010s, okay? So where do millennials end and Gen Z begin? Hmm, we don't know. Ah, Daniel, so it's kind of, there's some overlap with like millennials and Gen Zs. But if you were born, you said you were born in 92, so I would think you are a millennial. So Gen Z is like mid, so it means middle, 1990s, so probably 1995, 1996, or late 90s, okay? But there is, like, it's kind of hard to distinguish, right? Where do the millennials end and where does Gen Z begin, okay? Oh, the next one, lucrative, lucrative. Okay, the meaning is producing a great deal of profit. So, if something is lucrative, it means you can make a lot of money. It's very profitable. So an example would be, 
What is a lucrative business to start? Could you tell me in the comments, what do you think is a lucrative business to start? Um, for example, if you start a home cleaning service, if it's your own company, that could be a lucrative business. Or if you're able to um, fix something, if you can fix cars and you start your own business, that could be a lucrative business. So write in the comments what you think would be a lucrative business, okay? Ah, so Ted Ted Win said, today in Myanmar, Gen Zers lead to fight the military coup and get democracy. Yeah, so I think um, the usually like always the the youngest generation are the ones that initiate change, right? Okay, very good. I think this might be the last one. Let me uh, let's let's try this one. This is shrewd. Oh, it wasn't the last one. Okay, so this word is shrewd. Shrewd kind of a strange word shrewd <laughs> ah this is a good one i feel like uber eats is a lucrative business yes very good i think so too any kind of delivery service is a lucrative business okay ah making masks are lucrative businesses yes that is a lucrative business ah Tricky word, shrewd, yes. So shrewd means smart or clever, okay? Smart or clever, so, um, or like cunning, shrewd, okay? So it means um, if someone is shrewd, they are quite clever, quite smart. Um, so I have an example here. It was shrewd of you to make such a good investment. So that was really smart of you to make such a good investment. So somebody is shrewd or um, it was shrewd of someone, okay? Shrewd. Next one, amid, amid, okay? So amid simply means in the middle of, in the middle of something. So here's my example. He presented a solution amid a crisis. He presented a solution in the middle of a crisis. Ah, interesting, interesting. Investing in cryptocurrencies can be lucrative. Excellent, that's true, okay? Very good. So amid means in the middle of, okay? So uh, that was all of the vocabulary. Uh, yes, really quick. Uh, we can also use amidst too, right? Yes, both of them are acceptable. Ad amid is a little bit more common, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so we're going to read it one more time and I will explain it again as we go so you can really understand it, okay? So we have, inflation has arrived on Wall Street. So now we know that Wall Street is in New York, it's an actual street, and it's the umbrella term, it's the general term for um, like trading stocks and it's like the stock market, right? Um, so inflation means Prices are going up. Prices are going up. Okay. So uh, usually inflation is a bad thing, right? So if, if our country is going through inflation, it means um, maybe you used to buy, buy bread for $1.50, but now it costs $1.75. The price goes up. But here, Inflation has arrived on Wall Street and it's bringing smiles to the faces of junior bankers. So junior bankers are very happy about this inflation because it is in the form of much fatter paychecks. 
So inflation is coming in the form of fatter paychecks, so higher salary. Okay, so the inflation is not about um, like prices for like material things, but here it is their salary is being inflated. So they are very, very happy, right? So JP Morgan Chase, or shortened to JPM, is raising the salary of first year analysts to $100,000, up from $85,000. A person familiar with the matter told CNN Business. So here, a person familiar with the matter. So somebody who knows about this um, increase in salary told CNN this information, okay? So they're going to raise their salary to $100,000. It used to be $85,000, but now it's going up, okay? It's being inflated. All right. So the next part is the pay hike which takes effect July 1st means some millennials and Gen Zers will be making six-figure salaries fresh out of college. Okay, so uh, the pay hike, which is a pay increase, uh, takes effect on July 1st, and that means that some millennials and Gen Zers, so some of these generation kids will be making six figure salaries fresh out of college. So I said in the beginning that a six figure salary means that you have six numbers in your salary. Six figure means six numbers. So here, this is a, we would say a five figure salary. This is a six figure salary. Okay. Um, so people born between like, uh, maybe 1980s and 2010s, whoever is just finishing college will maybe make this amount of money. So when we say fresh out of something, it means just out of. So we just graduating, fresh out of college, just graduating, okay? Uh, the hikes, so this is referring to the pay hikes, pay increases, will make JP Morgan the most lucrative, so most profitable big bank for junior analysts. So if you are a junior analyst, if that's the job that you studied for, if that's the job you want, JP Morgan is the most lucrative job you could get. So it is the best, highest paying job you could get. So this is a shrewd move. So this is a very clever, a smart move amid, so in the middle of an ongoing war for talent between Wall Street and Silicon Valley, where many tech firms offer greater flexibility for remote work. So we know what Wall Street is. So Silicon Valley is the place that has, you know, Google, Facebook, all of those big tech, tech firms, okay? Um, so tech firms generally offer better flexibility for remote work. So maybe you can work from home, you can go on vacation and work. So JP Morgan decided to be very smart, very shrewd, and they increased the salary, okay? So this is maybe an ongoing war, continuous war for smart people between Wall Street and Silicon Valley, okay? Very good. So I know this was a difficult one. I know that it was kind of uh, a lot of new vocabulary, but I hope that now you understand at least 90%. If you understand 90%, I think that's really good. If you understand 100%, well, that is fantastic. Okay, very good. Ah, could you explain all uses of modal verbs? Sure, I will try and make a lesson on that when I can. Okay, yes, today's lesson is tricky. It is an advanced 
advanced reading lesson. So lots of difficult words. Oh, Mikika, 95%. You can understand 95%. That is very good. Okay. Oh, hello from Sudan. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching, uh, but thank you for sticking around. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you could, uh, please uh, like this video, share it with a friend who's also learning English. And um, let's see, uh, just like and subscribe. That would always be helpful. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys very, very soon for our next lesson. Take care. Bye everyone. Okay. Hi everyone. Hi students. Are you guys ready for another idiom lesson today? I know I'm ready. Okay. So um, as people come in here, I'll start the lesson. Let's see. Okay. I had to make it full screen. Now I can see everything. How are you guys today? I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful week. Yesterday, um, we did some, what did we do? I answered your questions and then I had another lesson with three idioms, but today we're going to learn one idiom. Oh, hello from Bangladesh. Hi. Thanks for joining. Are you guys ready to learn? Oh, okay. Can you please comment on my YouTube channel? Comment on the newest one and I'll be able to see it. I didn't see any comment from you. Okay. Thank you. So let's see. We're going to learn a new idiom today. Da, 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 da. This one is cut somebody some slack. Cut somebody some slack. So this might be a new idiom for you, but this is a very useful one that um, I just used yesterday. So I thought it would be a good one to introduce to you guys. Does anyone know the meaning? Cut somebody some slack. Hello. Oh, where are you from? I am from um, America, USA. Hello from Ecuador. Hi, Kevin. Hello, hello. Does anybody know? Cut somebody some slack. Does anybody know the meaning? So um, to cut somebody some slack means don't be so critical. Don't be so critical. Okay. So um, it's kind of a little bit difficult to understand. Do you know the word slack? Do you know the word slack? So I'll show you. So for example, if you have a cable, so if the cable is very tight, it's like this, right? But if you loosen it up, if you loosen up the cable, it has some slack. We call this part slack where it's not so tight, this is slack. So if you cut somebody some slack, you're giving them a little bit of wiggle room. You're, you're not being so tight and serious and strict. You're giving them a little bit of space. You're, you're being a little bit looser with them. Okay, does that make sense? So to cut somebody some slack, cut somebody some slack means um, not being so strict with them, um, being a little bit more kinder, gentler, not being so, um, I guess not being so strict. So not being so critical. Okay. Uh, Quarry, I already comment on your YouTube channel. Um, so can you let me know which video you commented on? That would be really helpful. Okay. So cut somebody some slack. Let's look at the examples, okay? So we have our examples here. So the meaning is don't be so critical. So we always hope that people will cut us some slack, right? We don't want people to be too critical of us, okay? So um, 
Number one, let's look at number one. He's new. Let's cut him some slack. He's new. Let's cut him some slack. So um, this could be, you know, he's new. So he's new at the office. He's new on the team. Um, this could mean anything, right? So depending on your situation, he's new. Let's not be so critical. Let's cut him some slack. So he's new, so he's still learning. We should be a little bit more flexible with him, okay? Number two, my boss, and this is in the negative, my boss never cuts me, not some, we're gonna change this to any. My boss never cuts me any slack. So this is in the negative. My boss never cuts me any slack. So this means my boss is always critical of me. My boss is always critical of me. So this is a negative, never cuts me any slack. So never is not critical. So always critical. Have you ever had a critical boss before? I have. <laughs> my boss never used to cut me any slack. Okay. Oh, Noor, hi. Thanks for joining us. She has some awesome YouTube videos for English too. Okay. And let's look at number three. Cut me some slack, will you? I'm trying my best. Cut me some slack, will you? I'm trying my best. So this one, um, we can say this just on, on its own. Cut me some slack. Or you can say, cut me some slack, will you? So also, when we talk really quickly, this you becomes ya, ya. Cut me some slack, will ya? Have you ever heard that before? Cut me some slack, will ya? I'm trying my best. So be a little less critical of me. I'm trying my best, okay? So cut somebody some slack. So that somebody we can change to um, cut me some slack, cut her some slack, cut yourself some slack. So we can change that somebody, okay? So I'm gonna read them one more time. I'm gonna read them a little bit faster, okay? So please listen. He's new, let's cut him some slack. Could you catch that? It was kind of fast. He's new, let's cut him some slack. Cut him, cut him. Cut them some slack. So remember when we link these words, this T almost sounds like a D and this H kind of disappears. Cut him, cut him. Let's cut him some slack. Let's cut him some slack, okay? My boss never cuts me any slack. My boss never cuts me any slack. So this one is in the negative. So we change some to any. My boss never cuts me any slack. And number three, Cut me some slack, will ya? I'm trying my best. Cut me some slack, will ya? I'm trying my best. So will ya, this you becomes ya. Cut me, uh, cut me some slack, will ya? Will ya? Will ya? Okay, so that is my American pronunciation. Very good. Do you guys have any questions? I saw one. Uh, can you give me more examples about slack, miss? So um, Slack, I think um, if you're just joining us, Slack is like if you have a cord or a rope or something and it's very tight, this is just tight, right? But if you have some Slack, this is Slack. So you have some extra room, you have some flexibility, right? So cut me some Slack means give me some extra, extra, wiggle room, extra flexibility, okay? So um, it means don't be so critical. So um, we often use this like um, if your parents are telling you to do something and they say, hurry up, you're not fast enough. Oh, come on, dad, cut me some slack, I'm trying. So don't be so critical, I'm trying. Or your boss might say, Hey, uh, you're not you're not uh, working good enough. Work better. 
can say, hey boss, cut me some slack. Please cut me some slack. So don't be so critical, please. Okay? Very good. I hope you guys understand the lesson. Oh, hello from Afghanistan. Oh, thank you for watching every day. I appreciate it. Very good. So um, please leave in the comments your um, sentence. Try to make a sentence with cut somebody some slack. I'll put it up here again. Cut somebody some slack, okay? So if you can make a sentence and put it in the comments, that would be awesome. Oh, very good. I'm glad you guys can understand. Okay, yeah, if you have a question, you can type it in the comments. I'll try to answer any questions that you have. So remember, we can change somebody to cut me, cut him, cut her, cut them, some slack, okay? Hello from Pakistan, hi. Wow, we have people from all over the world. It's quite amazing, right? Is this a good time for a lesson, by the way? Because uh, for me, it's around lunchtime right now. It is 12.51. So I don't know if this is a great time. Oh, okay, so your question is, what time do you teach us? So um, I'm trying to figure out a schedule because um, I do do some other lessons as my job. So in between those, I like to have a lesson on here. So the time is kind of different every day, but it's around the afternoon for me. I know everybody is in different time zones. So um, if you can tell me what time is best for a lesson, I'll try to uh, do lessons that time. Oh, hello from Sri Lanka, hello. So do you think it's better if I make a schedule Oh, very good. The lesson is hard. Please cut me some slack. Yes, perfect. Very good. Awesome. Okay, so please let me know what time that you would prefer a lesson. If you would like it earlier than this, or at this time or later, please leave that in the comments too. And I will do my best. Please cut me some slack. I'm doing my best. <laughs> okay. Oh, you prefer this time, okay. Oh, very good. After um, COVID-19, the workers need cut some slack to recover their potential. So very good. You could say um, the, the workers need to be cut some slack. Ooh, it's nine in the morning for you, wow. So around this time is good for you guys, right? Okay, I will keep that in mind. So please, um, write your sentence using cut somebody some slack in the comments and I'll check them. And uh, I will see you for another lesson uh, tomorrow, okay? Thank you guys for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye. Hi, everyone. Hello, welcome to our lesson. Thank you for joining. I hope everyone is doing well today. I did a, a different lesson today on Facebook already. So um, if you're not and you wanna see those lessons, you can go find my Facebook page. It's the same name as here. So if you just search for my name, Breeze Practical English in on Facebook, um, you'll be able to find it. Okay, so um, today I wanted to go over um, two essential um, phrases for the office or for business. And um, if you are not using English for business, but just for general daily life, these are also very, very important words to know. So I have two of them for you today. We have, I'll block the sun. We have catch up on something and catch up with someone, okay? 
So catch up on something, catch up with someone. So the difference is obviously the on or the with and something or someone, okay? So you probably have heard catch up in general. Um, catch up means like to get up to speed on something. So that's generally the same meaning as catch up on and catch up with. Um, but just know that we use catch up on something. Catch up with someone okay so I, I sometimes hear my students um, saying like oh I, I need to catch up with my email that is incorrect you don't catch up with your email you catch up on your email and you don't catch up on your friend you catch up with your friend okay so um, let's look at uh, my bigger whiteboard for a second. Okay. Can you see this? Is it understandable? Okay. I think they're pretty easy, but it's good to review anyway. So catch up on something to do something that you have not been able to do recently. So for example, if I have been very, very busy recently, and I haven't been able to watch my favorite TV show. I could say, I really want to catch up on my favorite TV show. So that is, a, that is an example that you can use in everyday life, not necessarily in business, but catch up on my favorite TV show. Okay, so my favorite TV show is something, right? Okay, let's look here. Catch up with someone. So get updates or exchange information, right? So if you haven't seen your friend in a very long time, you could say, I'd love to catch up with Tom, okay? Or I really need to catch up with you, all right? So, um, should be pretty simple because uh, it just depends on what we're talking about, which one we're gonna use, okay? But try and remember which one is correct for which situation. They're easily confusing, I know. Like, people can confuse them all the time. So, um, please write your answers in the chat or in the comments, okay? So, we have four questions, four questions. I think they're pretty easy, but if you have any questions, let me know. I'll try to answer them, okay? So, okay. So number one, number one, I missed the meeting, but I'll, <laughs> Kevin, I missed the meeting, but I'll, Kevin. Okay, so are we going to catch up on Kevin or catch up with Kevin? Which one do you think is correct? What is the correct answer? Okay, you can write it down, write it in the comments. Okay, and I'll write the answer. I missed the meeting, but I'll catch up with okay so we catch up with someone so who kevin i missed the meeting but i'll catch up with kevin kevin will give me the updates kevin will tell me what i missed okay very very useful right very, very easy. Okay, number two. I was out of the office all day and need to mm -hmm -hmm, emails. I was out of the office all day and need to emails. What goes here? 
What do you think? Catch up on and catch up with. Okay? Da -da -da. All right, the correct answer is, oh, I erased part of it, sorry. <laughs> Uh, I was out of the office all day and need to catch up on emails. Catch up on emails. So, emails is a something, right? It's not a someone. Even though you might be replying to someone, emails is your, uh, is a thing, right? So, it's a task you need to um, do because you haven't been able to do it. So catch up on emails, emails. Okay. Very, very good. Number three, let's see. Can you get it before I give you the answer? I haven't seen Alice lately. Oops. I don't think you can see that. I haven't seen Alice lately. I'd love to <laughs> her. I haven't seen Alice lately. I'd love to her. Okay, so this one I think you can use in your everyday life, right? This doesn't necessarily have to be business, but it's very, very practical um, in the office, right? I haven't seen Alice lately. I'd love to her. So big hint is her. So that is someone. So we're going to use I'd love to catch up with her. I love to catch up with her. Okay, very good. And number four, the last one, the last one. Have you all of your work? Have you all of your work? Okay, this one might be a little bit tricky. Um, we have have at the beginning. Have you all of your work? Okay, so um, in this sentence, which one are we going to use? Catch up on or catch up with? And I'll give you a hint that we need to change the tense. We need to change the tense. We have have here. Okay, does anyone know the correct answer? Do you know the correct answer? Okay, so I'm going to put it down. Have you, we're not gonna say catch, because we have have you. Have you caught? up on all of your work. Have you caught up on all of your work? So, work, right? That is something, something. So, have you caught up on all of your work? Means, have you um, completed all of your work? Are you um, up to speed? Are you all caught up? Okay, so you don't need to catch up anymore. You've already caught up. Okay, so um, we can use these in like different tenses, just so you know, okay? So for example, he's catching up with Kevin. Uh, Kevin uh, is all caught up on emails, okay? So remember that you, you can and need to change the tenses sometimes, okay? So just remember, catch up on something. So to do something that you have not been able to do recently, okay? You need to um, catch up, all right? Catch up with means get updates um, or exchange information. And this is to catch up with someone. So somebody you haven't seen or you haven't, um, you need to get information from them, right? So number one, I missed the meeting, but I'll catch up with Kevin. I missed, the, I missed the meeting, but I'll catch up with Kevin. Kevin will give me the information. Number two, I was out of the office all day and need to catch up on emails. I need to catch up on emails. 
So I'm a little bit behind. Uh, I have a lot of unread emails. I need to reply to them. Hey, number three, I haven't seen Alice lately. I'd love to catch up with her. I haven't seen Alice lately. I'd love to catch up with her. I'd love to know how she is, what's going on. So she could be your coworker or she could be your friend, right? And the last one, number four, have you caught up on all of your work? Have you caught up on all of your work? Is everything completed? You're not behind on your work? Everything is done? Okay, have you caught up? All right, I hope this was understandable. Okay, so just get used to saying it, um, like I say in a lot of my lessons. Um, if you want to be able to say this naturally and um, without hesitation, it just takes practice, right? So practice making your own sentences. Um, of course, writing is very good, but don't forget to say your sentences out loud. So I see a lot of my students writing in the comments their examples, which is very, very good. But please remember to say them out loud and that way you're going to remember them much, much easier, okay? So catch up on something, catch up with someone, all right? Okay, so thank you everyone. Ooh, I'll block the sun, okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Um, I will have new lessons out very, very soon. And um, actually, I think I should just announce it here. Um, I think, let me, let me block the sun. I think um, what I'm going to do is in December, I'm going to try, I'm going to try and upload on YouTube every day, every day. So every day a lesson will be uploaded. Okay, let me know what you think. And um, I'm, I, I think I can do it. Yeah, I think I can do it. So let me know what you think and let me know if you have any lesson suggestions also. I'm very open to um, teaching you what you want to learn, okay? So I get a lot of requests, but if you have some, um, leave them in the comments, and I always check my comments, so I will definitely see them here. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in our next lesson, all right? Learn the 100 most common English phrases. For more English courses and PDFs, please visit breezeenglishstudio.com. Could you give me a hand? Could you give me a hand? Could you give me a hand? What do you know? What do you know? What do you know? Give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. Hold your horses. Hold your horses. Hold your horses. What time is it? What time is it? What time is it? Give me a break. Give me a break. Give me a break. What's your problem? What's your problem? What's your problem? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? How are things? How are things? How are things? I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. 
Just let me know. Just let me know. Just let me know. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? I'm way ahead of you. I'm way ahead of you. I'm way ahead of you. How's the weather? How's the weather? How's the weather? How are you? How are you? How are you? I'm heading out. I'm heading out. I'm heading out. Are you thirsty? Are you thirsty? Are you thirsty? I need some help. I need some help. I need some help. Do you need a hand? Do you need a hand? Do you need a hand? Let's not argue. Let's not argue. Let's not argue. You have a good point. You have a good point. You have a good point. Maybe another time. Maybe another time. Maybe another time. My head is killing me. My head is killing me. My head is killing me. I'll shoot you a text. I'll shoot you a text. I'll shoot you a text. Do you have Wi-Fi here? Do you have Wi-Fi here? Do you have Wi-Fi here? Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? That's great news. That's great news. That's great news. I've never thought of that. I've never thought of that. I've never thought of that. How much is it? How much is it? How much is it? I'll take this one. I'll take this one. I'll Take this one. I'd like to order, please. I'd like to order, please. I'd like to order, please. No pain, no gain. No pain, no gain. No pain, no gain. Thanks for the feedback. Thanks for the feedback. 
Thanks for the feedback. He's up to no good. He's up to no good. He's up to no good. You won't change my mind. You won't change my mind. You won't change my mind. Good for you. Good for you. Good for you. Way to go. Way to go. Way to go. You're on fire. You're on fire. You're on fire. I'm home. I'm home. I'm home. Are you busy? Are you busy? Are you busy? I can't be bothered. I can't be bothered. I can't be bothered. Could I borrow a pen? Could I borrow a pen? Could I borrow a pen? That's outrageous. That's outrageous. That's outrageous. Home sweet home. Home sweet home. Home sweet home. Take it from me. Take it from me. Take it from me. That's unheard of. That's unheard of. That's unheard of. May I use the bathroom? May I use the bathroom? May I use the bathroom? Turn off the light. Turn off the light. Turn off the light. Who are you looking for? Who are you looking for? Who are you looking for? It's my turn. It's my turn. It's my turn. It's your turn next. It's your turn next. It's your turn next. Don't freak out. Don't freak out. Don't freak out. We don't have time. We don't have time. We don't have time. I used to study every day. I used to study every day. I used to study every day. I got used to it. I got used to it. I got used to it. We'll miss the bus. We'll miss the bus. We'll 
Miss the bus. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Pass the salt, please. Pass the salt, please. Pass the salt, please. You can trust me. You can trust me. You can trust me. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'd like to buy a ticket. I'd like to buy a ticket. I'd like to buy a ticket. I made a reservation. I made a reservation. I made a reservation. I booked a table for us. I booked a table for us. I booked a table for us. Here's your invitation. Here's your invitation. Here's your invitation. Get some sleep. Get some sleep. Get some sleep. I need my beauty sleep. I need my beauty sleep. I need my beauty sleep. I should apologize. I should apologize. I should apologize. I'm running late. I'm running late. I'm running late. That's no excuse. That's no excuse. That's no excuse. I'm sorry for the trouble. I'm sorry for the trouble. I'm sorry for the trouble. Go on ahead. Go on ahead. Go on ahead. I'll catch up. I'll catch up. I'll catch up. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. I've had enough. I've had enough. I've had enough. I'm starving. I'm starving. I'm Starving. Dinner was delicious. Dinner was delicious. Dinner was delicious. Here's a midnight snack. Here's a midnight snack. Here's a midnight snack. Cheer up. Cheer up. Cheer up. Turn the volume down. Turn the volume down. Turn the volume down. Turn it up. Turn it up. 
turn it up. Could you repeat that? Could you repeat that? Could you repeat that? That's news to me. That's news to me. That's news to me. How was your day? How was your day? How was your day? That stinks. That stinks. That stinks. There's no going back. There's no going back. There's no going back. Could you do me a favor? Could you do me a favor? Could you do me a favor? I've tried everything. I've tried everything. I've tried everything. Where have you been? Where have you been? Where have you been? That was unexpected. That was unexpected. That was unexpected. Let's go together. Let's go together. Let's go together. Think it over. Think it over. Think it over. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself. Have a blast. Have a blast. Have a blast. It'll be over soon. It'll be over soon. It'll be over soon. Don't be jealous. Don't be jealous. Don't be jealous. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Time heals all wounds. Time heals all wounds. Time heals all wounds. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Okay, I think we're live. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another lesson. Thanks again for joining me today. Um, today, I wanted to do a new vocab word for you guys. So, I don't know if you've heard this word before, maybe some of you have, but today's word is, da, 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 da. get my marker, exaggerate, exaggerate. So, do you know the word exaggerate? Let's look at it again. Exaggerate. It looks like it's hard to um, pronounce because there's an X, there's two G's. It's kind of a mess, but it's 
exaggerate, exaggerate. Okay. So do you know what exaggerate means? Um, exaggerate means to say that something is bigger or better or worse than it actually is. Okay, so you're saying that something is bigger, better, or worse than reality. Okay, so I think my um, camera is changing the colors a lot, so sorry about that. But, okay, so I'll get, um, I have some examples as always. Okay, we have our vocab words here. Um, so, uh, exaggerate, meaning is to say something is bigger, better, or worse than uh, it really is, okay? So, we have examples. I have three examples for you today. So, I'm going to use my red marker to underline some. So, number one, let's look at it. He exaggerated how much pain he felt. He exaggerated how much pain he felt. So maybe in reality, he was not in so much pain. Maybe he felt a little bit of pain, but he exaggerated it. He said, oh, I'm in so much pain. It really, really hurts. Oh my God. So he said it was worse than it was. He said he was in more pain than he actually was. He exaggerated. Okay, let's look at number two. She was exaggerating, was exaggerating, when she spoke about her job experience. She was exaggerating when she spoke about her job experience. So maybe in this situation, somebody goes to an interview and they, um, for example, they worked at a convenience store, but at the interview, they say they were a team leader. Okay, so that's kind of exaggerating. Your job or role was kind of small, but you make it bigger or better than you actually were. Okay, so she was exaggerating. She was exaggerating. Then um, number three, the news exaggerated the damage caused by the flood. The news exaggerated the damage caused by the flood. So um, maybe this happens often on the news, right? They want to have an interesting story. So sometimes they exaggerate. They say that the damage is worse or more than it actually is. Okay, maybe the flood didn't damage so much. Maybe the flood was um, not as bad as people thought, but the news exaggerated. The flooding was terrible. It, was, it caused so much damage. Okay, so the news exaggerated. All right, do you got it? Okay, so um, I'm going to read these three one more time at a really quick natural speed. Okay, so number one, he exaggerated how much pain he felt. He exaggerated how much pain he felt. Number two, she was exaggerating when she spoke about her job experience. She was exaggerating when she spoke about her job experience. And last one, number three, the news exaggerated the damage caused by the flood. The news exaggerated the damage caused by the flood. Okay, very good. So, <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, let's look at the actual word one more time. So exaggerate, to exaggerate. So remember, it means that you're saying that something is 
bigger, better, worse, more than it actually is. So a lot of people do um, do this. A lot of people exaggerate when they tell stories. So um, if I wanted to say, I went fishing and I caught um, the hugest fish. I caught the biggest fish I've ever seen. That might be an exaggeration. Maybe my fish was big, but not that big. Okay, exaggerate, exaggerate. All right. Um, I want you to leave in the comments an exaggeration. So I want you to tell um, a sentence, like a story um, in the comments and exaggerate, okay? So you can use the word exaggerate. So um, I exaggerated when I said that I had the best meal of my life, okay? I exaggerated, okay? Try to use this in the verb form, okay? So thank you guys so much for watching this lesson. I know it was a quick one, but I thought this was a good vocab word for you guys to study. So study it and leave your um, uh, comments and I'll be sure to check them, okay? Thank you guys so much for joining me. I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye. Hello everyone, welcome to our lesson today. Thank you for dropping by. Um, today we're going to look at rude versus polite English. So I'm going to highlight some things that some students might say that are a little bit rude. So we're going to try and correct those so um, nobody misunderstands you, right? We, we often want to sound polite. Okay, very good. So um, before we jump into the lesson, uh, if I could just remind you, um, please subscribe to me on YouTube. You can like and follow me on Facebook and you can turn on um, notifications there as well. And um, you can also follow me on TikTok. Yes, all of the places. Okay, so Good morning. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Um, thank you for joining today. We're just about to start. So while we let, uh, let some people in the chat, hello from Iraq. Yes, um, don't forget to shout out your country. Let me know where you're watching from. Uh, and maybe let me know how long you've been studying English. Hello, good morning. Okay, so it looks like we have quite a bit of people in here. So we can go ahead and start the lesson. So I'm going to share my screen. Yes, okay, we can see it. Rude versus polite English. Okay, so let's take a look. Okay, so here is a note to uh, begin. So in some situations, well, in many situations, I should say, short replies can be seen as rude. Okay, so if you're having a conversation with someone in English and you answer their questions with like one word, one word answers uh, are typically seen as rude. It gives off the feeling that you don't want to talk, you don't want to have a conversation. So some people will think, ah, Maybe I should just stop talking because you don't want to talk to me. Um, so just remember, even though uh, short answers are sometimes really convenient, um, especially when we're talking with our friends, but in different situations, it could be seen as rude. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Also, don't just listen. Try to ask questions too. So... Um, I know, I know that when you're learning a, another language, that when you're having a conversation with someone, you're already thinking of what you're going to answer, or you're, you're really trying to concentrate on what the other person is saying. Um, however, that can be uh, seen as a little bit rude if you don't 
also ask questions. So if someone says, how are you? And you say, good. And you don't ask how they are, it can be seen as rude. But I know for a lot of people, they're just really trying to concentrate on what the other person is saying. Um, so it's a little difficult, but I would challenge you to try and ask some questions also. Okay, keep uh, make it seem like you are engaged in the conversation. Very good. Okay, so we're going to look at some specific words that a lot of um, students say that we can probably make a little bit more polite sounding. Okay, so the first one, go away, go away. Oh, I didn't mean to go there yet. So if you say go away to someone, it is very strong. It is a very, very strong way to say, um, you know, I want to be alone, go away. So in English, uh, usually if we're fighting with someone or we're very, very upset, we might say, go away. So you might see that in some like TV dramas when they're fighting with people, go away. However, in real life, that would be extremely rude to say to someone. So does anyone know what we could say instead of go away? Does anyone have any idea? I know I just showed it on my screen. I have one example for you. So we could say, could you give me a minute? Could you give me a minute? Now this is much more polite than go away. Go away is quite rude. <laughs> I like this one, Teta Win. Go away, coronavirus. Yes, we don't need to be polite to virus. <laughs> okay, so if you want to be polite, maybe go away. I might say that to like my little sister or my little brother when we were when we were kids, right? Go away. I'm I'm playing with my toys. Now, if I'm talking with a coworker or someone in my uh, professional life, I would say, could you give me a minute? Could you give me a minute? So could you is a very, very um, polite way to ask something. And then give me a minute. I, I need some time by myself. Could you give me a minute? Very good. Okay. So next one, very similar to go away. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Okay. Oh, I like this one. Could you give me some time? Very good. Could you give me some time? Could you give me a minute? Could you give me a second? Very good. All of them are acceptable and much more polite than go away. Okay. So leave me alone. This is again quite rude, pretty rude. <laughs> leave me alone. So another way we could say it in a little bit more politer way, polite way. Uh, I'd prefer to be alone right now. I'd prefer to be alone right now. So this is polite, but it still gets your point across. Um, you want the other person to leave or go away and you want to be alone. I'd prefer to be alone right now. Totally acceptable, much better than leave me alone or go away. Okay. Ah, this is a good one. Please, I need some time. Excellent. That is also a very good one. Okay. So let's see. Let's see. Uh, very good. Leave me alone, guys. Leave me alone would be a little bit rude. Maybe if you're friends with someone, it could be okay. The next one is no. So in some situations, of course, just saying no is okay. But for example, if you're at work, your boss asks you to do something or asks you something, a coworker asks you something, a client asks you something, a teacher asks you something, if you just say no, it could be seen as very rude, okay? So uh, instead of saying no, we could say, I'm afraid I can't. 
I'm afraid I can't. So here, this afraid does not mean scared. It does not mean scared. So this afraid means sorry. I know English is very strange, right? I'm afraid I can't. So this is the same as saying, I'm sorry I can't. Okay. Another way we could say no is, I'm afraid, I'm sorry, I'm afraid it's not possible. Okay. I'm afraid it's not possible. Very good. Okay. Another one. I'm terribly sorry, but I won't be available. Okay. I'm terribly sorry, but I won't be available. So here we have three ways to say no. Maybe it depends on the situation, which one um, you would like to use. Um, I'm afraid I can't. I'm afraid it's not possible. I'm terribly sorry, but I won't be available. Okay. Ah, I'm afraid I can't get it. Very good. I'm afraid I can't get it. Okay. So anytime you want to be polite and you want to decline something, you could always say, I'm afraid I can't. I'm afraid it's not possible. I'm afraid I won't be available. Using I'm afraid before your negative sentence um, will just make it sound very polite. Okay. Oh, this is a good one. I'm afraid it's not suitable. Well done. Well done. So, uh, afraid meaning. So, afraid here means sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. So, it's a very polite way. Oh, hello. So, it's a very polite way to say sorry and reject something. Okay, moving on. Ooh, wait. Wait. So wait is a very easy word. We can just say wait. But in some cases, just wait is going to be too direct. So if we're talking with a boss, a client, a teacher, your friend, maybe okay, wait. But if we're talking to someone and we want to be very polite, instead of just saying wait, one word, maybe it's better to say something like, could you hold on a moment, please? Could you hold on a moment, please? Could you wait a moment, please? Could you hold on? Hold on means wait. So could you hold on a moment, please? Very good. Okay. Excellent, excellent. Another one word, move. <laughs> so for example, if you are watching um, the fireworks, but you can't see because there is a tall man standing in front of you. If you are very angry or, um, you know, very irritated, you might say move, but it is very, very rude. So instead, we would say, excuse me, Excuse me. That's all you need to say, really. So if you say, excuse me, to someone standing in front of you, usually they will understand and they will move out of your way. Okay. So uh, just saying move by itself could be seen as very rude and it might start a fight with someone. So I would avoid using move by itself. Um, I don't think there, even, even to my friend, I would never say move. That's kind of if you're fighting, you might say that. Okay. So be, be very careful with this one word. Um, I've, I've heard some students say it when they mean like, could you please move out of the way? Move. Um, so remember like when you say it as one word, it almost sounds like a command wait, move. So, um, you know, it's how we talk to dogs also. <laughs> like if you have a pet dog, you'd say sit, stay, shake. It is a command. So if you treat a person like that, if you talk to a human being like that, they might think it's very rude. Okay. So when in doubt, use a longer sentence. Very good. Oh, yes, this is a good one. 
hang on, please. Very good. Hang on, please. So hang on, hold on. They mean the same as wait. Oh, this is a very good one. Could you give me a minute, please? Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Ah, uh, move is polite or rude. So move would be very rude. I would avoid using the word move by itself. Okay, good job. Next, let's look at conversations. So remember at the beginning, I told you um, that when you're having a conversation with someone, try to ask questions back to them to make it um, look like you are enjoying the conversation, okay? Very good. Ah, uh, by saying, excuse me, the speaker, him or herself moves away. Isn't it like that? Um, it could be for either. So excuse me, I'm trying to pass through you. But if you tap someone on the shoulder, if you're trying to watch something, you tap someone on the shoulder, excuse me, they would get they would understand that uh, you want to see so they would probably move um, if they didn't understand you could just say excuse me could you please move over could you please move over but usually just saying excuse me uh, would be enough okay very good so in conversation so this happens to me a lot since I, I am an English teacher. I, I often ask this question to my students. What did you do over the weekend? So I want to know what my students did on the weekend. Did you go to the park? Did you go to a restaurant? Did you watch a movie? But sometimes, especially recently, um, they're stuck inside the house, so they didn't do anything. However, when they answer my question, what did you do over the weekend? They answer, nothing. Oh my goodness. Okay, so nothing could be a correct answer. What did you do over the weekend? Nothing. Okay. But it does sound a little cold. It sounds a little cold, like you're not interested in the conversation. You want to move on. So you gave me a short answer, and um, it's a one-word answer. So remember, one-word answers in English can sometimes sound rude, okay? So instead of nothing, boop, <laughs> I would recommend saying something like this. Not much. How was your weekend? Okay, so if you really did nothing interesting, um, if, you did, if you really did nothing interesting on the weekend, um, you could say not much. How was your weekend? So don't forget to ask the other person be engaged in the conversation. Somebody asked you, so you can ask another question, okay? Um, if you did something specific on the weekend, you can say that also, okay? Uh, yes, we can also say on the weekend. So I used over the weekend. So what did you do over the weekend? We can also say, what did you do on the weekend? Both are okay, all right? So next one, then, okay, how about this question? What do you want to eat for lunch? Okay, so you are with your, your colleague or you're with your boss or you're with your friend. What do you want to eat for lunch? So this answer is common among my students. Let's see what it is. Don't. Oh my goodness, I don't care. Mm -mm. So if you say, I don't care, it means you're not interested in something. If I ask you, what do you want to eat for lunch? I don't care. Oh, okay, so uh, do you not want to eat lunch with me? It sounds very strong. It sounds like you're not interested. So I would recommend not using I don't care, okay? 
I don't care is a little bit strong. So instead, I would recommend, I'm not picky. I'm not picky. What would you like to eat? So remember asking another question back. What would you like to eat? So if you really think anything is okay, if you think anything is okay, I could eat anything. Um, you could say, I'm not picky or anything is fine. Or if you have something specific that you want to eat, ooh, I'd like some Italian food, or I'd like some Japanese food. What would you like to eat? So remember, no matter what you say here, it'd be good to confirm with the other person if they have something in particular that they would want to, okay? Uh, oh, <laughs> I'm a vegetarian. So you could say that I'm a vegetarian. So I would like um, maybe to go get some veggie burgers or something like that. Hey, I want to eat pizza for lunch. Very good. Okay. I want to eat spicy noodles. Oh, those are good. I like those too. I love spicy noodles. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, oh, thank you. As you like instead of I don't care. Yeah, you could say um, uh, whatever you would like to eat would be fine with me. As you like would be okay. Many things would be better instead of I don't care. Good job. Ah, picky meaning. Good question. So what is the meaning of picky? So picky means um, if you are picky, it means that you don't like many types of food. So a picky eater, maybe they don't like, maybe they don't like corn, they don't like beef, they don't like uh, lettuce, <laughs> they don't like many things. If you are not a picky eater, that means everything is okay. You could eat anything, okay? So are you a picky eater or are you not a picky eater? Could you please leave it in the comments? Ah, <laughs> I am picky, I see. I think I am not a picky person, so I am very easy to go to lunch with, okay? Very good, so, okay. Next one. Ooh, what movie should we watch? Okay, so you're with your friend or you're with um, someone else you know, and they ask you, what movie should we watch? Oh, very good, not picky. Excellent, excellent. Yes, picky equals choosy, that's right, very good. Okay, so you're with a friend, you're with a uh, somebody that you like, <laughs> not your enemy, right? What movie should we watch? So lots of people might say, dun, 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 whatever. Oh no, I've heard some of my students saying whatever. Um, whatever in English, don't, don't say whatever. So whatever is very similar to I don't care. I don't care, whatever. So be careful when using this word. Sometimes it is appropriate, but as a one word answer, it can seem quite rude, okay? So instead of saying whatever, we can say some other things, right? Oh, yes, whatever you want, very good. If you say whatever, whatever you want, that could be a much, much better sentence. So whatever you want, that's a good sentence. One word answer, whatever, no, okay? So I chose this sentence. I'm fine with anything. So if you really mean whatever, anything is fine, you could say I'm fine with anything or anything is fine, what would you like to watch, okay? Uh, if you have a specific type of movie that you want to watch, I see uh, <laughs> horror in the comments. What, what movie should we watch? Mm, something horror could be a good answer. 
I also like horror movies. <laughs> okay. So, or if you have a specific title, you could say that, or I'm fine with anything. What would you like to watch? That is a very nice answer, right? Very good. Okay. So that was the last one. Uh, what kind of movies do you guys want to watch? Leave it in the comments. I see some. Um, oh, I love scary movies. Wow, we should all watch a horror movie sometime. We should watch a funny movie. Very good. Ah, something adventurous. You like the, the adventure genre. Ah, we should watch action movies. Also pretty good. Okay. Is this correct? I like whatever is available. Yes. So you could say, um, uh, I'm fine to watch whatever is available. I like whatever is available. Very good. Action movie. Nice. Ah, uh, yeah. Can I use everything is fine for food? Everything is fine. Anything is fine. Usually I would say anything is fine because uh, it means something out of everything, right? Um, usually we would say anything. Anything is fine. Okay. Uh, let's see. Ah, normally I watch English movies and Korean series. Very good. I also watch many Korean series. Okay. Oh, thank you very much, Ruth. I'm glad you enjoyed the lesson. Something funny. Yeah, funny movies are really good too. Oh. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you for watching. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, let's see. I'm fine with anything, but I prefer action movies. Good sentence. Very, very good. Very natural, very polite. Excellent sentence. Cartoon, because I think I'm a child, even though I'm 20. Nice one, nice one. Cartoons are still good. Okay. I'm okay, whatever it is. How about you? Very nice. Okay, good job, everyone. Well done. So um, let's see. Uh, thank you for joining the lesson today. Uh, if possible, uh, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'm going to be posting a lot more over there. And um, if you turn on notifications, you'll also be able to uh, see when I post new lessons, when I go live. I'm posting a lot of short lessons also. Um, you can follow me on uh, Facebook and you can turn on notifications. That way you'll know when I go live. And I'm also on TikTok. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, when is the next session? So I will be posting a YouTube uh, lesson again tonight. Um, and then the next live lesson, next live lesson. So it's a little tricky since it's been a holiday. Um, I, I live in Japan and it's a holiday right now, um, a week long holiday actually. So I think the next time is going to be Monday. Let's say Monday for the next live lesson, okay? Monday, I will see you on Monday. Uh, I'm sorry that sometimes my schedule has been a little hectic recently, um, but hopefully it will be okay soon. <laughs> okay. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I will see you in our next lesson very, very soon. Bye everyone. Hi everyone. How are you? Um, I just did a lesson over on YouTube, so um, I think it's processing now. So once it's up, I hope you guys can go and watch it. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Um, if you haven't already, please go over and subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the Facebook page, like this video, and share it with your friends. 
That's always a big, big help. Hello, Viola. Hello, uh, Reginald. Did I say that right? I'm so sorry. Oh, a bunch of people here. Hello. Hi, everyone. Um, so just so you know, I did a, a YouTube live lesson. So if you guys haven't subscribed to the YouTube uh, channel yet, uh, please do so so that you know when I go live. Um, also, uh, yeah, if you could like the Facebook page and share it with your friends, that also helps me out a bunch. Okay, oops, oops, oops. Here, I'll post a link to the, there we go, to the YouTube channel, okay? So you can subscribe. Hi, everyone. I'm doing very, very well. Hello, Jalil from the Philippines. It's always nice to see um, your familiar faces in here. Thank you. Wow, we have a lot of people in here already. Hello from Istanbul. I'm very, very good. Hello from Brazil, Afghanistan. Wow. Bangladesh. Hello, hello. Okay. So, um, yeah, I was really busy yesterday. So, um, I, uh, I, I couldn't make a lesson yesterday, but I, I promised I would do uh, a longer lesson today. Oh, so today's lesson was actually requested by Ali. So Ali Awan, thank you for suggesting this lesson. Um, we are going to uh, do a vocab lesson today, vocabulary lesson of confusing vocabulary words. So, um, okay. Thank you so much to Ali for suggesting this video. If you have any lesson suggestions or you have some questions, feel free to uh, comment them and uh, I'll try and make a lesson about them, okay? Very good. So, oh, hello from Myanmar. Sumyat, nice to see you here. Okay. So, um, oops. Okay, let me get the, all right. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so we have a very uh, uh, interesting lesson today. So we have these three words that can be really, really confusing. Very, very confusing. So we have a sure. So the pronunciation is a sure, a sure, a sure. The second word you see there is Insure, insure. And the last word has the exact same pronunciation, insure. Okay? So we have assure, insure, insure. Okay? So let's take a look. So these are very, very confusing words, um, but I'm going to break them down for you. So I hope they are not confusing anymore. Okay? So we have assure versus insure versus insure, a vocabulary lesson. So let's look at assure first, assure, okay? So the meaning is to tell someone something positively to remove any doubts, okay? So um, when we assure someone, um, we are telling them something to, to make their doubts go away. We want to dispel any doubts. We want to remove their doubts, okay? So let's look at these examples, right? Um, okay, example number one. He assured me that he would take care of my house while I was on vacation. So he assured me. So he told me, Please don't worry. Uh, I'll take care of your house. There's no need to worry. There's no need to have any doubts. I will take care of your house. Trust me. Okay? So he spoke positively and uh, he removed my doubts. So maybe I was worried. Uh, who is going to take care of my house while I'm gone? Um, but he removed any doubts. He promised that he would take care of my house. Okay. Hello, Ted Tedwin. Nice to see you over here too. Okay. So uh, number two, we often see this uh, in sentences in English. Rest assured. Rest assured. 
rest assured that you'll have no problem finding the hotel. So when we say rest assured, it means um, don't worry, don't worry. So please rest with no worries. Um, you'll have no problem finding the hotel. So basically when we assure someone, um, we're saying, don't worry, okay? Ah, <laughs> Ali Hassan. Wow, I considered that the video was suggested by me, LOL. Uh, you have the same name, Ali, very good. Okay, yeah, very. there's uh, maybe some similar names, right? Okay, so everyone understand assure so far? Let's go to the next one, insure insure with an e okay so when we insure it means that we make certain that something will happen so insure with an e is kind of like a guarantee guarantee so uh here are two common examples where you will see the word insure insure your privacy by creating a strong password. So uh, maybe guarantee, guarantee is a good word to put here. You can guarantee your privacy by creating a strong password or you can ensure your privacy, okay? The second example, number two, our company ensures the best results for our clients. So our company insures, guarantees, guarantees the best results for our clients. So uh, you can see uh, the difference with assure. Uh, let me go back. Oops, how can I go back? Oh no, uh, I went back too far. Okay, assure. So he assured me. So we assure someone. He assured me. Rest assured that you'll, okay? Here, insure, insure your privacy, not a person. Our company insures the best results, best results, okay? So we insure something. We assure someone, okay? Very, very confusing, right? All right. Oh, hello from Afghanistan and Sri Lanka. Oh, I must ensure that accurate records be kept. Very, very good example. Yes, this is a perfect example. So you have to guarantee that accurate records are kept. Very good. Okay. Oh, hello from, whoa. Hello, Mohammed. Nice to have you here. Okay. So then uh, let's see the next one. Insure. So insure has the same pronunciation as insure, same pronunciation, different spelling, different meaning, okay? So insure with an I means to cover something with an insurance policy. So it's an easy way to remember this one, insure with an I, because it's the same uh, first part of the word insurance, insurance. So an insurance policy is um, uh, usually you get insurance on something that is valuable, right? Insurance, okay? So uh, examples. I heard that people who work with their hands, their hands, can get them insured. <gasps> Did you guys know that? I heard that on a TV show. So like, um, so for example, a hand model, uh, their hand is their whole job. So they can insure, they can get insurance on their hands. It's very, very interesting. Okay. Uh, number two, you can insure your watch through a jewelry insurance policy. So basically to insure something, you need an insurance policy. Okay. So like, uh, like health insurance or um, house insurance, car insurance, you need to purchase this insurance policy to insure something, okay? 
So does everyone understand the differences between these three very, very confusing words? Okay. Very good. So, uh, okay, let's, let's try um, some questions. <gasps> okay, we can use assure, insure, or insure. So, and here we might have to change the tense. So pay attention to the tenses, okay? So number one, we, hmm, our security by installing cameras around the property. We, hmm, our security by installing cameras around the property. So we assure our security, we insure or we insure. Which do you think? Oh, Aliwan, insure. Oh, very good. Okay. Oh, Tetet Win, insure. Good job. Hiwa Ali, very good. Josh Josh. Okay, so everybody, very, very good. Insure. So the correct answer is <gasps> insured. So we insured our security by installing cameras around the property. So you could also, uh, I put it in the past tense that you already have done it, but um, you could use it in the present tense also. We ensure our security by installing cameras. So it sounds like you're always installing cameras, right? Um, but both are uh, grammatically correct, okay? Very, very good. Let's try number two. I something you that this is the best offer you will find i assure you i insure you or i insure you that this is the best offer you will find hmm number two. Oh, very good ali good job uh chaiti ali hassan good job tete win good job hashim very good Okay, awesome. So the correct answer is, dun, I assure you. So we're assuring someone, right? Assure someone. So don't worry, um, please trust me. I promise uh, that this is the best offer you will find, okay? So you assure someone to make them have no doubts no doubts okay let's try number three i would like to mm -hmm, my car i would like to assure my car insure my car or insure my car hmm i would like to number three oh very good chaiti very good uh let's see Oh, Alion, so fast. Very good. Reginald, very good. Kong, good job. Josh, Josh, okay. Nyan, very good, everyone. Wow, you guys are so smart. I would like to insure my car. So that means you want to take out an insurance policy on your car. So um, I saw a question uh, in the chat, what is an insurance policy? So um, insurance policy uh, means that you pay money usually every month. And um, for example, if you are going to insure your car, you would pay car insurance every month. But if you got into an accident, and your car was damaged, you could get uh, insurance money back. So you're paying, paying to insure your car. Oh no, I got into an accident. The insurance company will give you some money to cover the cost of the damage, okay? So let's try number four. Studying hard something that you will do well on the exam. So be careful of the tense. We have you'll, you'll, you will. So the exam is still in the future. 
So studying hard, assure, ensure, ensure that you'll do well on the exam. Okay, what do you think for number four? Oh, very good, everybody. Just make sure uh, you pay attention to the tense. Oh, Hiwali, very good. Okay, be careful of the tense. Very good. Okay, so studying hard, studying hard ensures, ensures that you will do well on the exam. So uh, doing this, studying hard, guarantees, guarantees that you'll do well, ensures that you'll do well on the exam. Okay, be careful of this tense though. All right, very, very good. Okay, and we'll do the last one. Last one, we have two answers here. He, mm -hmm, me, that my house is, mm -hmm. <laughs> so he, something, me, so we have a person here, that's a big hint, that my house is something, okay? You can give me both answers. Oh, Aliawan assures, insured, okay. Let's see. So he assured me, or he assures me, both are correct. He assured me, he assures me that my house is insured. My house is insured. Very good. Oh, excellent, excellent job, everyone. Okay, good job. So that was the uh, last question. So I will, oops, I don't wanna remove my face. Oh, okay, there I am. All right, so was this, a little difficult or is it understandable? Everyone is okay? I see, I saw a lot of correct answers. You guys are really, really good. You guys are quick learners. So these words are very, very confusing. Sometimes even native speakers get them mixed up because uh, they sound the same. They're all, they all mean kind of to guarantee something. So, uh, but the, the difference is just how we use them and in what situation we use them. Okay, oh, oh no. Hello, I missed the lesson. Oh, don't worry, um, you can always watch it again. We did um, the difference between assured, insured, and insured. Okay, so it's a very useful lesson. It was requested by Ali, Ali Awan, so, um, Thank you for requesting that lesson. If you guys have any other lesson requests, remember you can always just write them in the comments. I try to check everybody's comments. Um, so yeah, if you can make some example sentences, we can uh, look at them. Uh, let's see. Uh, I assured, so maybe you need a space there. I assured him that traveling to Pakistan was safe. Very good, that is the correct use of assure, excellent. Okay. I insure money by locking in the box. Ah, so I would say um, I insure that my money is safe, my money is safe by locking it in a box. Very good, very good. But yeah, you can um, guarantee that money is uh, going to be safe. You can ensure that money is going to be safe, okay? Very good. So like um, the bank, the bank will also uh, insure. So uh, if, you, if you put your money in the bank, they ensure that you can uh, take it out anytime, right? They guarantee uh, that they're not going to lose your money, right? Okay. Very good. Oh, let's see. I ensure you that teacher Bree is one of the best teachers. Oh, thank you so much. So for uh, insure, Insure means you're guaranteeing something will happen. So I would say, I assure you with an A, I assure you that
that teacher Bree is one of the best teachers. So that sounds like you are um, you are erasing all doubts, right? Very good. Okay. My teacher assured me to unabashed about speaking English. Ah, okay, very good. So my teacher assured me um, assured me to be unabashed. So unabashed is an adjective. So I will be unabashed, okay, about speaking English. Very, very good. Wow, I got 100% uh, result in the quiz. Very good. I'm so glad I could help you. Good job. Okay. Very, very good. All right. So, um, oh, is this true? This is interesting. Muslim women use hijab to insure their hair. Ah, so, so insure with an I is um, for insurance. Like you take out an insurance policy. So maybe about um, Muslim women's hair, maybe they are insuring. Let's see, insure make certain that something will happen or guarantee. So maybe um, ensure their hair will uh, maybe stay hidden or uh, kept nicely, something like that. Guarantee something, okay? I, I accidentally removed myself, <laughs> okay? Uh, I love my car. I always try to insure it not to be accidents. So remember that insure with an I means you are uh, taking out like an insurance policy. So you're paying insurance. So if you are, you want to insure that you don't get into accidents, you would use the E, E insure. So the E, Insure means you are you're guaranteeing that something will or won't happen. So uh, I ensure that I don't get into accidents. I ensure my car does not get into accidents. So I guarantee, I make sure, I make certain. If you say insure, you are covering something with an insurance policy. So you could say, uh, uh, I insured my car. I insured my car. It means you're paying uh, insurance. Okay. A little bit tricky, right? Okay. Very, very good. Ah, okay. Good job. Oh, ah, maybe I can remove this one. Okay. He assured me to look after my cat while I was away on my business tour. Very good. So he assured me he assured me he would look after my cat. Very nice. Moreover, he ensured my he ensured safety of my house. Very good. So he guaranteed safety of my house, and I need not insure my house anymore. Very good. That is a very good uh, paragraph. Excellent. Excellent work. Okay. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. All right. So. Um, uh, I think, oh, I have to get going. I have to uh, go to uh, my other lesson. But thank you guys so much for watching this lesson. Oh my gosh, we've been live for 25 minutes. So um, if you can, please suggest any other lesson topics that you would like. Um, and uh, as always, please subscribe, share, share this lesson with your friends. Um, it's so fun to talk with all of you every day like this. I hope uh, I'm helping you. Um, and yeah, I will be back tomorrow with another lesson on YouTube and another lesson on Facebook. Two lessons. Okay. Thank you so much. And I will see you guys next time. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Hello everyone, welcome to today's lesson. So before we get into the lesson, please, if you can uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, I think we are almost at 10,000 uh, students on YouTube. So thank you so much for that. Um, you can also uh, like this video, share it with someone who's also 
learning English. And yeah, it helps grow our community so that we can all help each other when we have questions. Okay, so let's get into today's lesson. So right off the bat, um, we're gonna get into it. We have uh, will do versus will be doing. Hmm. So we have um, future tense here, uh, future simple. So you will do something, right? Um, but we're going to focus on will be doing. So will plus be plus a verb with ing. Okay, so this was actually a question from one of my students on Facebook. So thank you so much for uh, asking this question. So um, when do we use will be doing? So uh, you might not hear it that often, but we do use it. And uh, I actually used it recently on a post on Facebook, and that's where this question came from. So um, I'll get the, the big whiteboard for us so that you can see a little bit more clearly, okay? Uh, okay, so we have will plus be plus ing verb, okay? Um, we're going to call this the future progressive future progressive. Okay, so we are talking about the future with this one. Okay, so we can use this tense when a long and continuing, continuing action is interrupted by a short future action. So a long continuing action is interrupted by a short future action. Okay, we'll get into that in a little bit. We also use this tense a lot when we talk about time, for example, 10 p.m., okay? We'll also get into that. Then lastly, uh, we can also use it with two long actions that are happening at the same time. Two long actions that are happening at the same time, okay? And uh, today we're gonna focus on will plus B plus ing. Um, we can also say going to plus B plus ing verb. Uh, not much of a difference, but uh, will be is a little bit easier to say because it's not so long. Uh, we could say going to be doing. That is also correct. But if you want to talk really quickly, usually we use the contraction of will. I'll be doing, she'll be doing, we'll be doing, okay? All right, let's get into some examples so that you can better understand uh, this future progressive tense, okay? So looking at number one, uh, when you get home, I'll be sleeping. When you get home, I'll be sleeping. So here you can see we use the word when. So we're gonna use uh, future progressive a lot with when, when we're talking about a long continuing uh, action that is interrupted by a shorter action. So we often use when in this case. When you get home, I'll be sleeping. So sleeping is the longer action, sleeping, sleeping, sleeping. And the shorter action is someone getting home. So getting home is, uh, you know, very short, right? It just happens and then it's done. But this person will be sleeping, 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 and then you'll come home sleeping, 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 okay? So number two, you can see uh, I've reversed it a little bit. So first we have, she will be studying. She will be studying when the game starts. She will be studying when the game starts. So both of these actions are in the future, but we know that at the same time, or at some time, she'll be studying, 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 and sometime during her studying, the game will start, okay? So when, uh, it's a little bit tricky to use this tense because we have to know of two future actions. Um, so sometimes it's a little bit hard to guess what's going to happen in the future, but sometimes we know. 
Okay, so these two are examples of a longer action being interrupted by a shorter action. Number three, talking about, talking about uh, using time, using time. Okay, so the question somebody asks is, what will you be doing at five o'clock? So you can see we have a time here. So we can also use will be plus ing. Or we could say, what are you going to be doing at five o'clock? What will you be doing at five o'clock? What are you going to be doing at five o'clock? Okay, then the answer, I will be driving home. Oh, at five o'clock, at five o'clock, I'll be driving home. So in here, in this uh, answer, they don't mention the time because the time was just mentioned, but you could put it in parentheses, right? At five o'clock, I will be driving home, or I will be driving home at five o'clock, okay? Number four, number four, while you eat, he'll be cleaning the garage. While you eat, he'll be cleaning the garage. So these are two future actions. They are both going to be happening at the same time and they are both longer actions. So while you eat, he'll be cleaning the garage. Okay, so at the same time. Number five, number five. Let's take a look at this one. Can you guys come to the party? So this is very casual. Can you guys come to the party? Uh, sorry, she'll be preparing for her exams. She'll be preparing for her exams and I'll be visiting my grandma. She'll be preparing for her exams and I'll be visiting my grandma. So we have two, two in this sentence, right? She'll be preparing. I'll be visiting. Okay. So uh, we can combine this with and, and right here. Um, it means that these two long actions are happening at the same time as the party. So sorry, we can't come while the party is happening. While the party is happening, she'll be preparing for her exams and I'll be visiting my grandma. Okay. Is it understandable? Um, so if you haven't uh, gotten used to using these in uh, your English conversation, that's okay. It's a little bit hard to use, but it's good to know when to use it because native speakers do use it from time to time. So just let's recap really quickly. Uh, we can use will plus be plus ing verb, or we could say going to plus be plus ing verb. They are the same, okay? Uh, we're gonna call this the future progressive. So we use the future pro progressive when a long continuing action is interrupted by a shorter action, shorter future action, okay? We're always talking about the future for these. Then uh, we can also use it with time, 10 p.m., eight o'clock, in 10 minutes, okay? Uh, also, it can be used with two long actions that are happening at the same time. So I'll read these sentences one more time. Try and listen. If you can, you can try and repeat it out loud. That is also a very good way to uh, remember how to use these grammars, okay? So when we uh, practice grammar like this, I really think it is important to repeat it out loud and then your, your mouth and your brain will make the connection and it will become a little bit more easy for you, okay? So number one, number one, when you get home, I'll be sleeping. When you get home, I'll be sleeping. Number two, she will be studying when the game starts. She'll be studying when the game starts. Number three, what will you be doing at five o'clock? What will you be doing at five o'clock? I'll be driving home. I'll be driving home. 
Number four, while you eat, he'll be cleaning the garage. While you eat, he'll be cleaning the garage. And last one, number five, can you guys come to the party? Can you guys come to the party? Sorry, she'll be preparing for her exams and I'll be visiting my grandma. Sorry, she'll be preparing for her exams and I'll be visiting my grandma. Okay, I hope it was easy. I hope it was understandable. Uh, try to make some sentences in the comments uh, just to get some practice in. And if you have any questions, you can also leave them in the comments. I will try and answer them. I will do my best. Okay, so uh, thank you all for watching today's lesson. Uh, and yes, please subscribe, like this video, share it. And I'll be back tomorrow with a brand new lesson for you guys. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time. Hi, everyone. I hope you're having a great day. How is everyone doing today? Is everyone having a good week so far? Um, what day is it today? Today is Wednesday. Wednesday, we call Wednesday hump day. We call Wednesday hump day because it's like a camel's hump. If you think of the week, like a camel's hump, um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So we're at the peak. We're at the hump of the week. Hello, Satar. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Um, and by the way, if you want to share this live stream with your friends or um, with anyone you know who is learning English, that helps us out a lot. It helps us grow our community here. Hello, Roz. Hello, Ma Mahit. Hello. Hello, Arif. How are you? Hello, uh, Ser Sergio. Sergio. Hello, uh, Ma. Hello, hello. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. And again, thank you so much for sharing this live stream. I appreciate it. Oh, Jalil, hello, watching from the Philippines. Oh, okay. So uh, right off the bat, um, Jalil asked um, how to pronounce the word Wednesday correctly. Wednesday. So it looks like actually... Um, when we spell Wednesday, I'll put it on the screen. Uh, hold on one second. Hello from Myanmar. Hi. So we actually write Wednesday like this. So it looks like Wednesday, day, Wednesday, day. But uh, at least I pronounce it Wednesday, Wednesday. Wednesday. So I kind of take the D sound out Wednesday. Okay. I think that's pretty standard in um, other countries as well, like in the UK. Wednesday. 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 Okay. Very good. Hello. Hello. Okay. So, um, Oh, no problem, Arif. Um, I'll leave the live stream up. So if you can't stay for the whole live stream now, you can always watch it later. No problem. So um, if you have any questions, please write them in the chat and I will try and answer them for you. But let's get into our lesson for today. Okay. Hello from Thailand and Bangladesh. Hi. Okay. So Today, we're going to learn these two new adjectives for describing personalities. So all week, we are describing personalities, okay? Describing people. So we have two words here. We have moody, moody, and we have the word vain, vain, okay? Oh, very good. Okay, so we have moody and vain. And I don't know if you have heard these words before or not, 
moody and vain. Does anyone know these words? Okay. Oh, hello, Jorge. Hello. So moody, moody. Um, if you know the word mood, mood. So mood is how you're feeling. We can be in a good mood or we can be in a bad mood, right? So what kind of mood are you in, all right? I'm in a good mood, I'm happy, I'm in a bad mood, I'm upset, I'm angry, okay? So moody, moody means that someone's mood changes and it's kind of unpredictable. So um, one minute someone is happy, the next minute they're sad or the next minute they're angry, right? So moody, moody. So uh, being a moody can be caused by a few different things, right? So um, if someone is feeling moody or if someone is being moody, um, it could be caused by hormones, hormones. It could be caused by things that are going on in their life. So, or chemical, chemical, um, balances in the body, right? So moody, moody. Oh, this is very good. So what is the difference between moody and sensitive? Okay, so in this case, um, moody is usually a negative word. If someone is being moody, we don't know how they are feeling, right? We don't know if they're going to be happy to see us or they're going to be angry or they're going to be sad. Their mood changes quickly and unpredictably. Sensitive, sensitive could be kind of a positive word and sensitive sounds like um, more about um, maybe if they see um, if they see a sad movie, they might also feel sad because they're sensitive. Or if someone says something mean to them, maybe they'll take it personally because they're sensitive. Sensitive is more, could, have, could be kind of negative depending on the situation, but it also could be a positive thing, sensitive. However, moody is generally negative. Okay, good question. Okay. Yes, very good. Moody is an adjective, yes. Okay, hello from El Salvador, hello. Oh yes, this is a good one. Moody and mood swings, are they the same? Okay, so um, moody and uh, mood swings, yes. So moody is an adjective to describe somebody, um, a moody person, right? Um, mood swings, we say we have mood swings or somebody has mood swings, right? So they're happy and then they swing over to sad. They're sad and they swing over to angry, right? Those are mood swings. So a moody person might have mood swings. Very good, okay? Uh, in Spanish, we say bipolar. Yes, in English, we also have the word bipolar. Um, bipolar is actually um, diagnosed by a doctor. So in slang, some people might call a moody person bipolar, but generally now I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't use it to describe a moody person. It's more of a diagnosis by a doctor. So um, in America, if you say someone is bipolar, um, without you know diagnosing them, you're not a doctor. So it might sound a little bit uh, meaner than moody, okay? Just be careful. Okay. Sensitive means uh, easily hurt, I guess. Yes, very good. So a sensitive person could be hurt easily. A moody person might um, you know, suddenly get angry or suddenly be happy or suddenly be sad. Okay. Understand? Okay. Oh, very good. Okay. So the next word is vain, vain. And uh, this vein, we have, you know, we have veins in our arms. Um, it's different. <laughs> Same pronunciation, but different. So this vein means that 
um, you love yourself or you think very highly of your appearance, your looks, or you think um, uh, you're very good at something, your skill is very high, you're the best of the best, that is vain, vain, okay? So both of these words are kind of negative ways to describe people, right? Um, moody, vain. You don't really want to be described as vain or moody, okay? Does everybody understand these so far? Is it okay? All right, so we're going to look at our questions. Oops, 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 oops. Okay, so, and I wrote them out here too, okay? So we have... Let's see, moody, emotional, unpredictable mood changes, unpredictable. Okay. Oh, this is a, before we get into this, this is a very good question, actually. Sometimes vain means useless. Yes. If we say you do something in vain, it could mean you did something, um, uh, that was useless, okay? So for example, um, she tried to she tried to open the package in vain. So her her trying to open the package was useless, right? She tried to open the package in vain, but she wasn't able to open it. okay? Very good. And one more. Um, how about vain and conceited, conceited. Yes, um, vain and conceited are pretty much uh, synonyms for each other. Yes, okay, you think very highly of yourself. Okay, so if we look here, I'll say it one more time. Oops, okay, so moody, moody is emotional and unpredictable mood changes. So this unpredictable part is the key for understanding moody, right? unpredictable, okay? You you don't know if they're going to be happy or sad or angry or scared maybe, <laughs> okay? And vain, having a high opinion of one's looks, abilities, or worth. So you think, um, if you are vain, you think very highly of yourself. You have a high opinion of yourself, okay? So usually we should be um, humble, right? We want to be humble. We want to be, um, uh, maybe we want to celebrate other people instead of just ourselves, right? So it's a negative word. Okay. Hello. So let's do number one together. Okay. So number one, he's always looking in the mirror. He's so something. He's always looking in the mirror. He's so, hmm. So if someone is always looking in the mirror, maybe they like to see their own face, right? They like to look at themselves. Do you think it's a moody person or a vain person? He's always looking in the mirror. He's so, oh, very good. I see vain, vain. Oh, Archaea photology. Is that how you say your name? <laughs> Very good. Vain. Okay. He's always looking in the mirror. He's so vain. There's a song in America. You're so vain. You probably think this song is about you, don't you? Okay. Very good. Yes, we should be humble, not vain. Okay. Number two. She's very something lately. She's very something lately. One minute she's happy and the next she's upset. So upset could mean she's a little bit angry, right? She's very lately. One minute she's happy and the next she's upset. Oh, watching from Nepal, hello. Oh, very good, number two. Okay, yes. So Devas Devasika and uh, Georgi, Jorge, Jorge. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name. 
Yusuf, okay, very good. She's very moody lately. She's very moody lately. So lately means recently. One minute she's happy and the next she's upset. Oh, she's moody. Very good. Okay, so number three, she thinks she's the best. She thinks she's the best because she's something. But in reality, she's not that good. She thinks she's the best because she's, but in reality, she's not that good. Okay. Oh, very good. Number two is moody. What do you think number three is? Ah, do you pronounce your name George? George, let me know if that's correct. Okay. Oh, very good. Vain, vain. I see some moody. So this is a key. Uh, let's see. Vain, vain, vain. Okay. She thinks she's the best. She thinks she's the best. So if somebody thinks they're the best, that's a, that's a key one because she's something. Okay. So she thinks she's the best because she's vain. Very good. Because she's vain. But in reality, she's not that good. Okay. So people who are vain, oh, I'm the best, right? But sometimes it's not actually true. It's just in their head, right? Very good. Very good. And let's do the last one together. When someone is, hmm, you never know how they will react. When someone is, you never know how they will react. Okay. Oh, very good, Lena. Okay. So we don't know how somebody will react. Will they be happy to see us? Will they be upset? Will they be angry? Moody. Very good, Mohammed. Very good, Yosef. Very good, Ariana. Omar. Good job. Uh, Gulam. Titang. Very good. So when someone is moody, you never know how they will react. Very good. Very good, Mohammed. Very good. Okay. Yes. Very good. Okay, so I'll read them really quick. Oh, I only have five more minutes. Okay, so number one, please listen. He's always looking in the mirror. He's so vain. Number two, she's very moody lately. One minute she's happy and the next she's upset. Number three, she thinks she's the best because she's vain. But in reality, she's not that good. Number four, when someone is moody, you never know how they will react. Okay, very good, everyone. Okay, so, oh, hello from Philippines. So um, I have five minutes, so I can answer some questions really quick for five minutes. Okay. Oh, watching from the UK, wow, awesome. Okay, so I thought I saw one, uh, let's see. Changes of good moods can be called moody. Okay, so um, I think you are asking like if someone is sad or upset and then their mood changes to being happy, um, it could be considered moody, right? So it's kind of changing from one mood to the next. But um, if someone is moody, it's unpredictable, right? Oh, suddenly you're happy. Suddenly you're upset. So it doesn't matter if they become if they become happy or if they become upset. It could be considered moody. Good question. Okay. Oh, uh, I think I will use this word from today onwards because I never used previous this word. Ah, so you've never used these words previously. Yes. If you can um, use them, it will, I think it will make your English sound um, more fluent, right? Because you have a bigger vocabulary for describing people. Okay. Oh, hello from Ecuador and Sri Lanka and Malaysia. Wow. Very nice. Oh, thank you so much, George. Okay. 
Oh, from Myanmar. Hello. Watching from the Philippines. Awesome. Okay. So uh, if I answered everyone's questions, I hope you guys uh, understood today's lesson. Remember, we will have a review lesson on Friday. So please um, study, watch the other live streams, and um, we will see you again for tomorrow's lesson. Okay. Um, let's see. Could you say the time when you will teach the lesson? So it is kind of difficult for me to schedule because um, my, my work schedule is quite busy, but let me see for tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. Hmm. Tomorrow, maybe around, um, maybe around this time again tomorrow, I hope. Um, let's say around this time tomorrow, I think I can uh, do another live mm -hmm. lesson. Okay. Oh, hello from Thailand and Pakistan. Awesome. Okay. Very good. So thank you guys so much for watching this lesson. Please share it with your friends who are also learning English. I appreciate it. Um, and you can always subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, there are some exclusive lessons over on the YouTube channel that you can watch. Um, so yeah, I will see you for tomorrow's lesson. Thank you all so much. Um, good luck with your studying and I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much. See you tomorrow. Bye. Okay. Hi everyone. I hope you're having a fantastic day. So, um, today I wanted to do another word of the day. Um, this one is also a advanced vocabulary word, but I think this one is kind of easy to use, so it's not that difficult. So if you can include it in your, um, in your conversation, I think you'll sound a lot more um, fluent. And the word today is, can you see this one? Confidant, confidant not confident, confidant, confidant. So if we look at the spelling, sorry for my bad handwriting, C-O-N-F-I-D-A-N-T, confidant. So what does confidant mean? And what part of speech is it? So this one is a noun. Confidant is a noun. And uh, it describes a person entrusted with secrets. So um, someone who you can tell your secrets to, we would call that person your confidant. So a little bit more um, trusted than a, just, just an average friend. A confidant is someone you really, really trust with your secrets. Okay, so I have some examples. Let's take a look. So can you see these? So a confidant is a noun, a person entrusted with secrets. So someone who is going to listen to your secrets and keep them. They're not going to tell everyone about your secrets, right? So let's look at the first example. My sister is my closest confidant. My sister is my closest confidant. So if you have a sister, like I do, if you can tell her your secrets, and she's not going to tell anyone your secrets, you could say she is your closest confidant. Okay, let's look at the next example. He was known as an entrusted confidant of Prince Harry. He was known as an entrusted confidant of Prince Harry. Okay, let's just take a look at these. So uh, in this second example, you can imagine Prince Harry might not be able to trust many people because he is a prince, or for example, the president, a prime minister, 
people in government offices, maybe they can't trust so many people. So the people that they trust would be called their confidants, confidant. Okay, I'm gonna read them one more time. My sister is my closest confidant. He was known as an entrusted confidant of Prince Harry. Okay, do you got these? All right. So, um, I want you to write in the comments uh, a sentence and please tell me who your confidant is. So, who do you trust the most? Who do you trust with your deepest, darkest secrets? I think for me, my best friend and my sister are my closest confidants. How about you guys? Please leave it in the comments down below, okay? And uh, if you guys want to see longer English lessons, please go over to my YouTube channel. I have longer lessons there. I try to update every week with long lessons. Um, you can subscribe, and then if you subscribe, you'll know when new lessons are uploaded. Okay, I'll try to post another word of the day either tomorrow or in the next few days. Okay, have a great week. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hello, students. How are you today? How is everyone? Um, before we get into the lesson, I just have to ask you, um, if you haven't yet and you would like to, um, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, if you turn on the notifications, you'll be able to know when I go live and when I post new videos. And of course, if you uh, like me on Facebook and turn on your notifications, you'll be able to see when I go live and when I post new lessons over there too. So uh, thank you everyone for joining me today. Hello, can you hear me all right? Hello, hello, welcome. Okay, hello from Somalia, welcome. So I hope this is a good time for you. I don't have a lot of time today, so it's going to be um, a pretty quick lesson, about 15, 20 minutes, okay? All right, hello from Afghanistan. Hello, hello, good morning, everyone. Tetewin, hello. Uh, dork and dimwit, are they the same? Uh, dork is... Um, maybe a dork is more of a nerd. So like if someone is, you know, really smart, I'll put it up on the screen. So a dork is more like um, a geek or a nerd. So maybe somebody who's really smart or not, not popular um, would be a dork. A dimwit is um, someone who is not smart very dumb. So both of them are insults. Um, a little bit of a different meaning though. Okay. Oops. Hello from Romania. Hello. Hello. Okay. How are you guys? All right. Let's jump into the lesson. So today we're going to look at the difference between ago and before. Before and ago. What is the difference between these words? Um, so let's take a look um, at some differences, okay? So here we have ago and before, all right? So this is gonna be an English grammar lesson. Um, maybe it's a pretty easy one. We, we often use ago and before when talking about the past, so um, but a lot of my students um, tend to make mistakes. So they don't know when to use ago. They don't know when to use before. Um, a lot of my students have made the mistake of using before when they should use ago. Okay. So let's take a look at ago first. Um, okay. Let's go over here. So. 
A go is an adverb. A go is an adverb, okay? So uh, a go means back in time from the present. So we're, we're thinking about the present right now and counting back in time. We're, we're here right now and we're going back maybe, um, we can go back in time a few minutes, a few hours, days, weeks, months, years, decades, centuries, okay? Um, then ago, the grammar here, ago is used with the past tense and a time expression, okay? So when we use the past, test, past tense and a time expression, you probably want to use ago, okay? So let's take a look at some examples. I have three examples here. I worked here three years ago. So worked is in the past tense and we have a time expression. Here it is three years. I worked here three years ago. So counting back from night right now, minus three years, I worked here three years ago. We visited Italy six months ago. Okay, we visited Italy six months ago. So visited is in the past tense. And then our time expression is six months, six months ago. So six months earlier, okay? Uh, and our last example, he got to our house an hour ago. So uh, if you don't know, got to or get to means arrive, arrive. So um, in American English, instead of saying arrive, we pretty much always say in casual conversation, get to or got to. So he got to our house an hour ago. He arrived at our house an hour ago. So got to, got is in the past tense. Our time expression is an hour, an hour ago. Okay, so let's take a look at before, before. Uh, before is a little tricky because it, we, it can be an adverb, a preposition, or a conjunction. Wow, so remember that ago is an adverb. Before can be three different things, an adverb, a preposition, or a conjunction, okay? Uh, so it can mean uh, earlier, until, or talking about in the past. So we'll get into some examples in just a second, but just know that it, it can be used in three different ways. It can actually be used in, in four ways if we talk about in, fr in front. So I stood before a crowd, so in front of. Um, I didn't include that one, but... Um, just know that that is a, a, a meaning also, okay? Before is used with the past perfect tense or the present tense, okay? So let's look at some examples. Um, remember that ago is used with the past tense and a time expression, oops. Before is used with the past perfect or the present tense, depending on the meaning. Okay, so look at these examples. Let's see. Always wash your hands before you eat. So here we're using the present. Always wash your hands before you eat. Okay, the next one. She said she had never been there before. She said she had never been there before. So here we're using the past perfect, past perfect, okay? Uh, and then this one, it was an hour before the pizza arrived. It was an hour before the pizza arrived, okay? Very good. So um, maybe they ordered the pizza and it took one hour. So here it would mean until until it was a, it was an hour until the pizza arrived it was an hour before the pizza arrived okay so those can be a little bit tricky um but we would never use a go 
in any of these sentences, okay? Is it understandable so far? Very good. Oh, this is a good one. Please think twice before you answer the question. Very good. Please think twice before you answer the question. Very good. Okay. Oh, this is a good example. I read the story, How Much Land Does a Man Need? Written by Leo Tolstoy three months ago. Very good. Three months ago. Excellent. Excellent examples. Okay. Let's look at some questions, okay? So we have six questions we're going to use ago or before. So number one, should be pretty easy, right? I've never been here. Hmm. I've never been here ago. I've never been here before. Which one do you think is correct? Okay. Oh, very good, everyone. I see some great answers. Yes. So the correct answer for number one is before. I've never been here before. Very good. Let's try number two. I went to the U.S. 10 years something. I went to the U.S. 10 years something. Okay. Oh, very good. Oh, I see. Ali got it. Taraf. Uh, LG. Very good. Guadalupe. Very good. So 10 years ago. So here we have the past tense and a time uh, 10 years ago, time expression. Okay, number three. Don't forget to close the windows. Mm -hmm. You leave. Oh, very good. I see. Excellent, excellent. Everybody's got it. Don't forget to close the windows before you leave. Before you leave. Okay, so you will leave, but earlier than that, Please close the windows. Very good, very good. Number four, that happened a few years something. Hmm, number four. Oh, very good. I see LG got number four done. Excellent, excellent. Yes, Pancho, okay. Very good. So. That happened a few years ago, ago. Okay, so happened is in the past tense and our time expression is a few years. So a few years ago, very good. Number five, he arrived 10 minutes. What do you think? 10 minutes ago or 10 minutes before? Okay, very good. So number five, the correct answer, write it in the comments. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, he arrived 10 minutes ago. Very good, very good. He arrived 10 minutes ago. And number six, let's see. It was two days, hmm? A decision was made. It was two days. A decision was made. Oh, very good, very good. I thought this one might be a little tricky. It was two days before a decision was made. So this before means until. It was two days until a decision was made. It was two days before a decision was made. Excellent, you guys did so, so well. Awesome, okay. So uh, I hope that it was understandable. I hope um, you have a better idea of when to use ago and when to use before. You guys are so good, very good. Uh, let's see, I'm just checking the comments. I saw some questions, but uh, 
Teacher Bree often says that, have you ever seen that before when she teaches new words, doesn't it? Oh, very good, yes. So maybe I would correct it. Teacher Bree often says, maybe often asks because it's a question instead of says. Teacher Bree often asks, have you ever seen that before when she teaches new words? Very good, very good. Okay, so uh, let's see. Brie, will you come up with a new lesson on YouTube at 9 p.m. JST? Yes, for sure today, um, 9 p.m. on the dot, okay? Unfortunately, I got fired one month ago. Oh no, is that true? I hope not. Okay. Very good. Oh, I visited Iran two years ago. Good example. Very good. Oh, I got three answers. Oh, that's pretty good. Well done. You can always go back and um, re-watch the lessons. Maybe write down the examples too. The examples will help you better understand um, when to use um, ago or before, okay? Uh, let's see. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, unfortunately, I have a very busy schedule today. So um, I won't be doing the Pomodoro study session today, unfortunately, but there will be another um, English lesson uh, on YouTube today. So please check it out. Um, and uh, I will be back um, around 9 p.m. on YouTube and there will be another uh, Facebook Live lesson um, tomorrow. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you very, very soon. Bye everyone. Hello everyone, welcome to our review lesson. So all week we studied phrasal verbs that contained the word talk. So now we are going to review all eight phrasal verbs that we learned. So I hope you're ready, I hope you studied, I hope you reviewed the last lesson. Oh, hello Anna, thank you for joining me. So we're just starting. So I'm sorry I'm a little bit late today. I was a little bit busy, but we're gonna start the review lesson. So we'll just jump into it. So we learned eight, we learned eight phrasal verbs this week with talk. Do you remember all of them? There was quite a lot. So we have talk into, talk out of, talk down to, talk over, talk it over talk back, talk at, and talk up. Okay. Oh, hello. Ooh, Armenia, very nice. Afghanistan, hello. Okay, so I'm glad you guys are all here. Hello, Chit. Is that how you pronounce your name? Okay, so um, we learned these eight phrasal verbs. So I'm just gonna quickly review them and then we can go to your review test, kind of like a test. Hello, Omar. Hello, Yavi, Javi from Mexico. Oh, you sound like a native speaker. I am, I'm from America. Okay, so we're gonna go over these. So the first one is talk into. So if you remember, talk into means that you, um, use your words to convince someone to do something or that um, something is a good idea. So he talked me into going to the movie. He talked me into going to the movie, okay? So he convinced me to go by using his words. Oh, hello from El Salvador. Okay, talk out of is the opposite of talk into. Talk out of means that you use your words to convince someone or persuade someone not to do something or that something is a bad idea. So 
Um, I talked him out of spending all of his money. <clears throat> I talked him out of spending all of his money. Spending all of his money would be a bad idea. So I talked him out of it. I convinced him not to do that. Oh, Botswana, hello. Okay. Then we have number three, talk down to. Talk down to. So if you remember in the previous lesson, talk down to means like, I think I am up here. I am better than other people. So I talk down hmm, like that. So if you talk down to someone, you think that you are above them and the other person is not as important or not as intelligent as you are. Okay, so this is usually a negative thing to talk down to someone. Okay, we don't want to talk down to people. <clears throat> so I think my voice is a, a little bit strange today. So sorry about that. I think I'm getting a cold. Okay, <clears throat> let's fix it. Okay, number four. Okay, number four and number five are easy to mix up, aren't they? So number four is talk over. So talk over, I should put someone here. Talk over someone. Okay, to talk over someone. This means that somebody is talking, but then you start talking over them. So uh, they're not done talking and you don't wait. So you start talking while they're talking. This is uh, pretty, pretty rude, but sometimes, um, so like if you do it to a teacher or your parents, um, it would be pretty rude, I think, to talk over your teacher. Yeah, I don't know, my voice is a little bit strange. I think I have a cold. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so uh, to talk over someone, like a teacher, it would be pretty rude, but sometimes, um, when friends are talking and they get really excited, maybe they start talking over each other. They're talking at the same time, okay? So it's kind of hard to hear um, when people are talking over each other, right? It's kind of hard to understand what people are saying. Then number five is very different. So not, let's see, can you see that? Okay, so number four is talk over someone. Number five is to talk it over. So you need this it somewhere. Talk it over. So that means to discuss something before making a decision, um, before uh, you know deciding on something. You wanna talk it over first, okay? Oh, hello. Yeah, I think I shouldn't drink. I had some cold uh, tea this morning. I should have had hot tea, I think. I need hot tea with lemon, maybe. Okay, are you understanding so far? Is it is it understandable? To talk it over, to talk over something means um, to discuss, to discuss it one more time, okay? Number six, this is also something that we shouldn't do. Talk back. So talk back means to reply rudely, rudely to someone. So, you know, if your teacher says, um, please do your homework. And if you reply, hey, you do your own homework to your teacher, you talked back to your teacher. So usually when um, a teacher or a parent is giving some kind of instruction, sometimes a child might be, um, really angry and reply rudely, and then they would um, talk back to their teacher or their parent. That is not a good thing. Uh, yes, ginger tea, lemon and honey. I will have it right after this lesson. Thank you. Okay, so number seven. So this is also a pretty rude one, to talk at someone, to talk at someone. Usually we talk to someone, that means having a conversation. But talk at someone means you are not listening to what they're saying. You don't let them talk. You just keep talking, talking, talking. 
So if you talk at someone, people might think it's a little bit rude or um, it's, it's not very friendly, right? Okay, uh, so um, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Ve, Vahe, Vahi <laughs> um, asked a very good question. What's the difference between talk over and talk back? So to talk over someone means that you're talking at the same time. And actually, um, you could put talk over something too. So like um, if I have the TV on and it's very noisy, I might try to yell over the TV so that you can hear me over the TV. That would be talking over the TV. But to talk over someone means that you are talking at the same time. Then to talk back to someone means to reply rudely. So if someone says, uh, if your parent says, hey, clean your room, and then you tell um, your parent, no way, I don't want to clean my room. Why don't you clean it? That would be talking back. So replying rudely. Oh, I'm glad you could catch the, the live lesson. Thank you for joining us. OK. Um, and then uh, if we go to the last one, number eight, talk up, talk up. To talk someone up or to talk up something means that you are um, saying positive things in order to convince someone to do something. OK. OK, so to talk up. So, for example, um, let's see if I said, oh, my friend is really pretty and she's really smart. You should date her. That means I'm saying positive things about my friend because I want you to date her. So I'm trying to convince you by saying positive things, okay? So talking up someone is saying positive things about someone or something, okay? So uh, let's see, talk over and talk it over. Okay, I'll clarify one more time. Uh, talk over and talk it over. Talk over someone means um, talking at the same time. And talking something over means discussing something, OK? Trying to um, uh, talk about something with someone um, before making a decision. Talk something over, OK? So these are the eight that we studied. And I'm going to get into our exercises, OK? So I hope you're ready. So I'll put this over here. OK. so. We have eight phrasal verbs, so we have eight questions, okay? And I wrote all of the phrasal verbs at the top. I don't know if you can see them that well, okay? So let's try with, I'll sit like this, okay? So number one, number one, can you see? He, the proposal so that his clients would agree Okay, he, the proposal so that his clients would agree. Which one do you think it is? So we have eight options up here. He, the proposal so that his clients would agree. So this, this sounds like he is talking positively about the proposal. So he's, he's saying good things about the proposal to convince someone to accept. Okay, so talk into. So, oh, okay, so we have two answers so far. Some people are saying talk into and some people are saying talk up. So talk into and talk up are very similar. So when we use talk into, we're going to talk into, we're gonna talk someone into doing something. So if I had uh, over here, um, he, he said good things about the proposal to talk his clients into agreeing, that would be correct. Talk them into doing. But over here, we have the proposal here. 
So the correct answer is he talked up the proposal. So he's saying positive things about the proposal in order to get the client to agree. Okay, I know it's a little bit confusing. So talked up is the correct answer. Talked up. Oops, I need another marker. Okay, talked up. Okay, so he talked up the proposal. We wouldn't say he talked into the proposal. So it's a little bit of a, uh, a grammar problem there. Okay, so uh, let's try number two. Okay, when you each other, I can't hear what you're saying. It's very small handwriting, sorry. I'll put it a little bit closer. When you each other, I can't hear what you're saying. Oh, very good. Okay, I see Anna says talk over. Anybody else? Okay, so the correct answer is talk over. When you talk over each other, I can't hear what you're saying. Very good. When you talk over, talk over. Very nice. Oh, hello from Pakistan. Hello. So when you talk over each other, I can't hear what you're saying. Very good. Okay. I see some people are going on to the next one. So let's see. Number three. Thank you for, oh, this is a separable one. Thank you for me going. It was fun. So it was fun. So we know it was in the past. Oh, very good. Very good. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. We have the correct, we have the correct answer, but remember it is past tense. It was fun. Okay. Thank you for talking me into is the correct verb tense. Talking me into going. Yes. Thank you for talking me into going. It was fun. So here we would not say talk me into. Thank you for talking me into going. Very good. Oh, hello from Sudan. Very nice. Okay. Oop, we're halfway through number four. Okay. So all you do is people and never let them speak. All you do is people and never let them speak. So never let them speak is a big key here. Oh, very good, Hafez. Very good, Anna. Yes. All you do is talk at people. Very good. All you do is talk at people. I hope the lighting is okay. It keeps changing in here. So all you do is talk at people and never let them speak. Very good. Okay. So some people are going on to the next one. Number five. Oh, I see um, Cobra said talk down to for number four. Um, talk down to would be okay. Like all you do is talk down to people and never let them speak. But maybe this is a good key, never letting them speak. That's talking at, talking at. So when you talk at someone, you don't let them speak. Okay. Number five. I thought it was a bad idea, so I, him, it. Hmm, what do you think? Oh, Hafez, very good. Okay, I thought it was a bad idea, so I, him, it. Oh, very good, Anna. Okay, good answers. So I talked him out of it. I talked him out of it. Oh no, my marker is dying. Uh-oh, I've run out of ink again. Hold on one moment. I think I have to change the color. We can't do red anymore. All right, we'll do, 
We'll do blue. Blue is a good one. Okay. I talked him out of it. Okay. That's cleaner, I think. I thought it was a bad idea, so I talked him out of it. Very good. Um, Yahe, Vahe, Vahe, Vahi uh, asked, what is the difference between talk at and talk up? So talk at means you are just talking at someone. You're not letting them talk. Talk up someone is saying positive things. Like she's so beautiful, she's so smart. Positive things, okay? Very good. So let's try number six, okay? Very good, number six. You're not my boss, don't me. You're not my boss, don't me. So a boss maybe is above. So if a boss is talking to someone, maybe it's kind of this way, right? Boss is up here talking to me. So I'm saying, you're not my boss, don't. Oh, very good, very good, Anna. Very good, Hafez. Don't talk down to me. Don't talk down to me. You're not my boss. Don't talk down to me. Very good. Okay. Number seven. We have only two more. Awesome. So I'd like to with you before deciding. I'd like to with you before deciding. So this means um, you want to discuss something before making a decision. Oh, very good, Hafez. Very good, Anna. Awesome. So the correct answer is, I'd like to talk it over with you before deciding. Good job. Talk it over. Awesome. Okay. So we're going to do the last one, number eight. Children shouldn't to their parents. Children shouldn't to their parents. So there's only one that we haven't used so far. Okay. Oh, very good. Very good, Hafez. Very good, Anna again. Awesome. So the correct answer is children shouldn't talk back to their parents. Children shouldn't talk back to their parents. That is naughty. Very good. Um, the reason why it is not talk over means um, we would say children shouldn't talk over their parents with no two. But we have a two here. So children shouldn't talk back to their parents. So that is something you should watch out for. Very good. Awesome. So I saw one question. Um, what is the difference between talk down and talk over? So, so just to be clear, talking over someone means that you are talking at the same time. So, um, if person A is talking, 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 and suddenly person B talks over them, maybe in a louder voice, it's at the same time, two people are talking and then, um, talk Talk down to someone means that you are from a higher position. Maybe you are a parent or a teacher or a boss, and you are saying, um, you know, I am more important, you are not so important, right? Talking down to someone in a negative way. Okay, very good. So you got all the answers correct. So I'm going to put it up one more time so that you guys can see it. I hope you can see it okay. All right, good job. So thank you very much. That was the last lesson for this week. So um, I will be uh, I will be going live on the YouTube channel this weekend. Oh, thank you. I will have some tea. I've been sick for a, a little while, so I will have some tea right after this lesson, and hopefully, I will feel better. But um, yes, oh, I've got another lesson from now, so I've got to go. But um, this weekend, I will be doing 
um, a live lesson on the YouTube channel. So I'll post it on Facebook channel as well. So please check that out if you can. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel also. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. You guys are such good participants. All right, I will see you this weekend for another lesson on the YouTube channel. Okay, bye guys. Hello everyone. Welcome to this very impromptu English lesson. Hello, um, Muhammad Atas from Turkey. Hello, 7.45 here. Wow, is that the morning, I guess? Is it 7.45 in the morning? Um, it's about 1.45 in the afternoon here. I'm in Japan, so it's in the afternoon. Um, let's see. Okay, so um, I decided uh, to do this lesson. You guys seem to be liking um, the, the live lessons with um, like current event uh, topics. So what we're going to do today is, um, uh, oh, hello, Mustafa, hi. Um, we're going to do, um, we're going to look at uh, Twitter's statement and we're gonna look at the vocabulary. Um, so you might've heard that uh, Donald Trump's uh, Twitter was suspended. So Twitter actually uh, kind of deleted Donald Trump from uh, Twitter. So we're going to look at Twitter's statement and we are going to um, break down the vocabulary, maybe some grammar, and just use it as um, kind of a learning tool, okay? Oh, hello, uh, Isaias Garcia. Hello, Nanda. Nice to have you here. Devashka, hello. Bizarre, Asad, hello. How is everyone doing today? Thank you for joining me on a Sunday. Okay, so we're gonna jump into the lesson. We're going to look at just um, uh, just uh, uh, what Twitter's statement was, and we're going to uh, look at the vocabulary. Okay. So you can see, <laughs> you can see uh, this. Um, this was Donald Trump's Twitter, right? So you can see there's no more profile picture, no more banner, and it says account suspended. Twitter suspends accounts that violate the Twitter rules. So can everyone see this all right? Um, let me check. Are you able to see? Uh, please, could you talk with native speed ratio? Yeah, um, I will 